manipulating things, you need space to do that in. So anyway, uh, what's funny, by the way, is that all happened after the fucking super chat of about deleting save files. Just like, that's some, got some connections there. A little bit of um, cinematic parallels, you might say. With, I'm just gonna carry on playing Dolphin, okay? Let's just hope it don't freeze again. But if we do, hopefully it recovers again. Yeah, it's good. It's good logic to have. Just hopefully everything works out. Logic. Um, EFAB pop star never stop, never stop, and when. You know, like the the idea of you got EFAB movies, EFAB minis, EFAB pop star with karaoke for EFAB. Is that is that the question there? Because I just don't think this is viable. Unless something else is being referenced here, and I'm just unaware of it. Four volume. That's better. Oh my god, there's studs everywhere in the Death Star. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like there's money in All the right. walls. Is it? A bit of a weird construction, but I'm not going to say it's impossible for that to be efficient. Money in the walls. You know, it's a distant future, maybe they just they had some weird ideas. Well, maybe maybe that's what makes money so valuable. It's just such an excellent building material for Death yeah, Stars. People mm. pay good money to get money. Uh, watched Mulholland Drive for the first time four days ago. My third eye has now been awoken. I was once broke, but now I am woke. First Lynch film I've watched. Yeah, they're, um... They're, uh, they're, they're, they're a roller coaster ride, those movies. All of his stuff, I guess. How can I get True Jedi when I'm playing as Lando Calrissian? Because. Um, yes. And, like, it's going to upset me when playing the Skywalker Saga and it says True Jedi when I'm playing as Rey. It's like, what? <laughs> it's just unlocked from the beginning. <laughs> you start off and you're always in True Jedi mode. All the unlocks are already done. Yeah, you've already unlocked everything. Man, there's some serious fun that going on here right now. Just uh, hide under a table, I guess. Nah. No? Mm -mm. Pretty safe. I'm not hearing any good arguments, Mel. Oh, I wasn't arguing. <laughs> You're wrong. Wow. What's lightning in German? Blitz? Uh, yes. That's a pretty cool word for, for lightning, I reckon. And thunder yeah. is Donner. Yeah, that's less cool. And... Wait, thunder is what? Donner. Donar? <laughs> Don <laughs> Donar? Donner. Donner? E e D-O-N-N-E-R. <laughs> Donna. Oh! The, the reindeer! Donner and Blitzen! Mm. Yes. Hey! Hey! <laughs> that's cool. That's, that's actually kind of cool. Donner and Blitzen, the reindeer, are thunder and lightning in German. Nice. No more, you know. Uh, that wins in a thunder fight. was pretty close. <laughs> Just run under the table, like I said. <laughs> I'm in the house, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins in a fight, the Teletubbies or the Backyardigans? The Backyardigans have imagination, but Teletubbies are 10 feet tall cyborgs. I have 100% in TCS. Some said, why haven't I put that together until now? Well, if you don't speak German, you might not... <laughs> yes. No, <laughs> you might not. <laughs> well, I mean, it's worth saying. They can add it to the wiki. Uh, Rags, Mola, and Fringy do not speak German. Uh... All I know is Danke, das ist gut, and uh, das ist Heil gut. Hitler. Sorry. Well, of course I. <laughs> Everyone knows that class. That one. Class. <laughs> um. <laughs> you have a. Let's see what else. Uh, Arbeitsmacht frei, right? No. Free. Yeah, that we got that. I don't know what I got that from. It's just a weird connection to my. I head. know I got Kota C. De Juden from like South Park or something. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Like, I, I just know it's something not good. <laughs> Oh, I know how I uh, house off Gobbin is homework, right? Yes, yes. I know um, Nick Venishen means don't resist. I got that one from Silicon Valley. Wait, what was that? Nick Venishen? Something like that? I, I don't even what know that? what that second word is supposed to be. Oh, maybe I'm mispronouncing <laughs> it. Oh, Mozart. Um, Mozart has Eine Kleine Nacht music. That's yes. a little night music, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all of these ones. Zweihander is, is Valley. Zweihander, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> um, Heimer is basically like thing. Yeah, that's like, it's like Tism, but in yeah. German. 
Uh, I know that Heimer and Jim and yes, I know that. Is it <laughs> he just said, don't resist, bring us your Jews. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was what have we that told you about saying that, that on you, fam? <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is, like, a lot of the time when you hear German media, it is Nazi-related, like, like in Western yeah. media. Like, you, get... uh, you know what? I know, I, would I know probably... one. Sly Glazer. That's three glasses. I know, um, oh yeah, that's from uh, Inglorious Bastards. Another Nazi movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, of, and of course, I'll feed us in. Um, what was, oh fuck, there was, um, there was, like, specific words. I know FUBAR means over, right? Verbar or something like that. Verboten? No, we have FUBAR. Verboten. Well, because we have FUBAR, the acronym for fucked up beyond all recognition, yeah. I think. But there's, like, VUBAR. I know Soldaten means soldiers. I definitely know that one. Mm-hmm. I know that. Sold um, Panzer, Sold of course. Yeah, pa yeah Panzer Spice, it's or whatever it is. Kino de Toten, uh, Kino is film, right? Oh, Kino, we have Nocturne Kino is, Toten. Kino is cinema. Well, cinema. Well, Noc is just night. We, we yeah, Nocturne Toten was our first Nazi yeah. Zombies map. True. Um, um, yeah. I love this just came out of fucking right. nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, um, Jaeger means hunter, doesn't it? Yes. Does Meister ah, mean master? there you go, yeah. Jägermeister oh. means master hunter. I'm guessing. And of course, everybody knows what Uber means. Mm. Yeah, come. It means, uh, no. it means you don't have a car, <laughs> is what it means. True. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, I'm sure there are other ones. I, cause I did German for two years at school. Um, but like, I don't remember. Oh, um, what is... <sighs> Uh, what I want, what I want to do is I have a, so Worms World Party is one of the greatest video games ever made, and is in Worms not? World Party, one of the voices you could give to all your worms is German, and they speak in this hilarious high pitched German accent, and I need to give that to Metal just so that he can hear them. Here, let me see if I can find them. Um. Uh. I want to see if I could find that script for South Park so that I know exactly what Cartman said. <laughs> we have to, he, he says in in English, or like in, in English, like, uh... Yeah, so, I've got I've got the transcript oh. here, so... Yeah, go, The go specific ahead. quote is, Toten see de Juden ver Conan nick still see the light sin, or something like that, <laughs> which is probably something crazy. <laughs> Like, it's like it's some... the first sentence was is like le legit. We have to kill the Jews. Well, I'm pretty sure is, it's Cartman it's... also says we have to eradicate the Jews in German at some point. And well, yeah, because like, he has, he has a big chat. He has a big chat. Well, he keeps looking around saying, "We all know what needs to be done." <laughs> while staring <laughs> at everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's how fucking episode is crazy. Oh, was this the speech files in German? Okay. Yeah, I think the I think it's just I don't know. Like anytime you hear Juden, you're just like, uh oh. Like you just get worried whenever you hear it. It's like, oh no, whatever whatever is before or after this word can't be good. <laughs> so do you just want me to listen to them, or do you want to know a specific I just, one? I just threw it in there oh, okay. so that you could en just enjoy classic German appreciation. Worms. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know, I know, I, I know the the, uh, the the sentences obviously. Worms World Party. I've always great. had trouble with two, good ones in there. two German words. What do uh, Ludendorff enough mean? Ludendorff. Ludendorff genug. Oh, a Ludendorff? Oh, that's the German word for simp. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was for everything. <laughs> That's mostly how language works, yeah. Except the word chill the fuck out. They don't have one for that. Okay. Always so angry over there with all your shooting and stuff. Quite the opposite. There's not a lot of shooting going on. You're really ordering true, a coffee. I mean, there's that meme of ordering the coffee. That's the most intense thing ever. <laughs> it's an intense language. Yeah, metal apologize. No. Well, there, I think uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's just intense. That's all. Yeah, Mel. Shut up. 
I feel like it's all the, the throaty sounds that make it, like, just an intense language. As opposed to, like, French, where it's all, like, sort of soft and dainty. Mm. So can, there's a black adder from Black Adder. Germans have no word for fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> they are a, they are a hardy people. Yes. You can open trooper doors with Vader. I didn't know that. That makes sense though. Um, will the eventual 12 angry women be sexist because of the title or empowering? Which will Twitter decide? Definitely <laughs> empowering. God, could because you their, imagine? Their, their anger, their anger will be righteous anger. I don't know. Mm. You should, someone will out there will be like, shouldn't it be twelve intelligent women? Uh, and then someone else is like, well, that implies women aren't intelligent normally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, intelligence is implied when speaking. Like, okay, fine. Twelve normal women. <laughs> <laughs> they normal? What do you they mean are by not that? a bunch of doom coughs. You're implying it needs to be stated when a woman is normal, and you're like, you know what? You name it. I don't know. You know <laughs> what? No woman's no no woman's normal at me. Isn't the saying "Don't at me"? No, I'm no. daring them. Oh, oh no! Well, not the women. I don't think you need to do chat. much of that on the internet. They they get obsessive. You know, they do all the attings all the time. You get like a thousand quote tweets if you say "man." Fucking Corella was shit. Man, full stop. <laughs> man. <laughs> this is a band word. Man is a band word. As it should be. Please add W O in order to make it legal. I will. Open up the doors. Oh, it didn't work? Okay. Uh, RE6 is overheated. I know that Morley and Rago would have a fun time playing co-op. Hmm. Probably. I'm pretty sure yeah, us having fun sometime. playing co-op isn't dependent on the game being good. Yeah, it's because we're just, just a fun, we're just barrel full of monkeys fun. We're yeah. just, we're just fun. I'm, I'm the mayor of fun town. Really? I'm the mayor of fun town. Yeah. Pretty awesome, dude. In the bun. Yeah, it's it's great. The uh, yeah, it's it's really good. It's hard to organize that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. yeah. And I always like to just. Ho 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 ho! That's me, has, Mr. Fun. Has Anna told us about the bullet in her arm yet? No, no, that'll be the next time she guests, and we'll get right on it. That's the big. Oh, yeah, that. that, that... <laughs> <laughs> that, never, that was never, season bait, you know? We have to get everyone into the next sure. episodes by, by baiting that no sort of thing. Got no conclusion on that one now, that's true. <laughs> Gosh, this Death Star is so, like, annoying to take down. Can you just made it so that I press one button? Well, no. can you just fire one proton torpedo into a... Or is uh, proton gotta... torpedoes... Are those... Wait, are those Star Trek? Are those the Star Wars? Uh, no, the proton, proton torpedoes. torpedoes? In Star Wars. Oh, they're in both. Okay, yeah. so that means so does that mean proton torpedoes are um, what what is it? They're in the public domain. Must be. That's that's nice. I like that. We'll I like use that. that in EFAP. We'll have EFAP proton torpedoes. Yeah, EFAP brand proton protorps. Protorps. That's what. Oh yeah, protorps is what I'm thinking of because in um, Rebel Strike Two for the GameCube, um. They were shortened. You could choose your secondary, and your secondary could be protorps, which mm. are proton torpedoes, and you had to, to shorten it for space. Yeah. So, so they're, they're fo oh, they're photon torpedoes in Star Trek. Ah. ah, thank you, chat. Photon torpedoes and proton torpedoes. Ah, I ah, there we go. That's where the confusion came in. I see, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> I'm doing the big, the big victory lap where you, you, the fire's trying to get you. The leg gets you. It's hot. I'm trying to avoid it. We did it. Woohoo. We beat the Emperor. Good job. Metal, Do it again. Metal equals Superman. No, no, no. You have, you have not defeated the Emperor. You have inconvenienced the Emperor. He will return. Can you really say in that Avengers when the Force Awakens. He goes from having Avengers. Skywalker. You say we inconvenienced him. He went from having one half a Death Star to a thousand highly mobile Death Stars. Like, he's probably happy yeah, this happened. I forgot. That's one of oh, my issues no, with the rise of Skywalker. Is... Yeah. Well, actually, it starts in Force Awakens, where the victory 
of our heroes in The Return of the Jedi and A New Hope really just leads to even more horrible intergalactic terror. Oh, dude, so, I unlocked Super Story. Whoa, what does that mean? Does the story get better now? You, didn't, you don't know what Super Story means. <laughs> okay. I don't understand. So there's stories and then there's Super Stories, huh? Mm-hmm. It makes sense in the uh, Lego Cinematic Universe, I'd say. <laughs> if you guys have been paying attention to some of the I'm earlier not... entries, you could see that the this DCU? is coming from a mile away. The DCEU is a super story? Wouldn't you say so? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, metal equals Superman, Molar equals Zod, Rain equals Zod's soul. <laughs> I don't get it. Rain had its chance. Ew. Uh, Devil's Advocate for Lucifer, you don't go to hell due to violating Sky Daddy's rules, but because you feel it's what you deserve. The show's focus on a lot of self-reflection actualization. Why did you listen yeah, to everything we said and then say that? I don't understand. Yeah. yeah That's I specifically don't think what we were talking about. We didn't talk anything about De Sky Daddy's rules. We didn't even mention it. Sky Daddy. I, don't, dumb too, though, I so. genuinely don't get how you sent that message <laughs> after what we had discussed. I'm lost, but I appreciate were it. Were you not listening? We talked about it for... Longer than we should have, yes. probably. Wow, wow, wow. Mole's PC is dying. Quick, do a hot tub stream to fundraise for replacement parts. <laughs> Fucking hot tubs. I'm pretty sure they're dead now, right? Now the new thing is dressing up as a horse and doing ASMR. <laughs> I'm just kind of pigeon and tapping the... <laughs> hot dog <laughs> stream. That's the cool new thing the kids are doing, I guess. Dude, it... Twi like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Is what this, can you say? This is what light stage capitalism is. <laughs> is that what we're claiming? I guess. So. <laughs> the creative. Wait, sort of how can we make this out. capitalism's fault? I like the idea that light stage capitalism is this creature that's actually got like kind of like intentions and it's stuff. It's a and you, headed you, you, man. You blame yeah. it on him, and he's like, "What? How? I like I do horrible, horrible things, sure, but like that one, really, you're blaming me for that one, okay?" I'm not taking a blame on that one. I no, <laughs> take that back. I guess, you son I of guess a bitch. all I say is it's like it is the free market at work, but like I don't know. <laughs> what does that say about us? <laughs> that's what that's what late stage capitalism demon would say. He'd be like, "This is all on you, you fucked up creatures." <laughs> like this isn't well. Me. The late stage capitalism creature. He should be the star <laughs> of his own sitcom. Everybody blames him for everything. He <laughs> just trying. He goes to the office and he's just like doing his real hard daily work. Yeah, the office like... filled human versions of things. So there's like the communism guy <laughs> and then the 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 anarcho capitalist guy or whatever. They just hang out with each other. Communism guy, like whatever he earns money, he puts it into his pockets, so it falls right through onto the floor, and he's just like, oh, oh that's fine. <laughs> The com maybe like the superpower of the communism guys, he splits up into equal parts, like it's a little <laughs> block of equal mass. That's his superpower. I could believe it. Uh... Or maybe his superpower is like just I don't know, being really skinny because he just doesn't have enough food to eat. It's like yeah, you know, it's a great diet. You know, you just give it a try. The communist detox. So, people in chat, what is Super Story? Because I, I don't know if I should start just doing the story again but on free play, or if I should be doing something about whatever the Super Story thing is. Maybe that's the sequel trilogy. It's the Super Story. And this is the real ending for these oh. movies. Yeah. This is the Super Story. Super Story yum. equals SS. No, no, don't say that. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta stop saying that. So they don't like it when you say that. I don't remember. I played this so long ago. I expect you, Ashen One, to know exactly what I'm talking about when I say it. And if you don't, that means you're you going can't to call them that, Baller. Holy fuck. <laughs> That's <laughs> see. I was like, <laughs> he can't be thinking about Dark Souls because he doesn't play it. So he must be going somewhere else with this joke. <laughs> what the fuck? Ashen one. <laughs> they call you that in heaven at that point, I guess. Fuck me. <laughs> Jesus, I disavow. I'm just a guest. Uh, uh. Super Story is blue mini kits from what I remember. Oh, is it like this shit? Where there's like weird things I can unlock throughout the map that I haven't actually unlocked yet? I thought it meant that I could walk somewhere and do something. You have to do the story timed. Story timed? Are they timed? Story. Limits? Timed, probably like a time trial or something. 
Adventure story time. Come on, grab your friends. Friends will go to distant lands and stuff. That's stuff. not how it goes. Distant lands and stuff. With, you fucked with, it up. With Mike the what? Pu Mike no, from PA. Mike what? The, I said pug, but if you want to from PA, with Mike from PA, <laughs> and the song that you been. <laughs> <laughs> like every episode is just it's all about him <laughs> trying to show how alpha he is <laughs> screaming at <laughs> Finn the human no Hassan the human I gotta get it all Hassan right in my head <laughs> the fun it's an will insult never to begin. humans the fun will never begin alright the fun will never begin <laughs> <laughs> it's a depressing intro but I'll take it uh, please watch Teen Titans go to the movies after the Snyderverse arc. Besides Joker, it's the best DC film of the last ten years. Best Stan Lee cameos. Um, yeah, maybe. You never know with these things. You know what's gonna happen next. Uh, for Guardians of All Time, seems like the TVA would struggle to capture Hawkeye since all they are, have are melt sticks. Yeah, it's pretty fucking stupid, isn't it? That all they have are melt yeah, sticks. Yeah, it's really dumb. Those are stupid. The Time Lizards, if they exist, are really, really stupid. Shocking. Because, like, so. if the Time Police came to arrest me, like, right now, I'd shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> With my gun. And that must happen all the fucking time. We, we were saying when we were watching it. Surely! Um, We'd be like, someone could stop you if they had a, and I think Rags, like, jumped in with gun, and I said sword. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, my mind goes to gun, because, you know, yeah. it's just me. But I was like, oh, ooh, that happens in the episode. One of them has a sword, it just stabs it through the person. Yep. Right down the middle, and they just stab him, like, oh. And, and the TVA constantly, like, show up to a place, and they just walk into the front door. Every fucking time. So this must happen a lot, where their agents just get massacred. Mm -hmm. And they don't care about local regulations, or they don't try and blend in, and they don't uh, respect anyone else's authority. Okay. So if they just show, like, especially in America, where you just show up with what seems to be glowing weapons and body armor, and you start bossing people around and pushing them, you're gonna get guns pulled on you. And well, then you're gonna is, get um, shot. I think it's... I can't believe I'm saying this. The, the only person that can help me here I think will be Fringy, but I think Iron Man 3... They're doing, um, bad guys are doing things in a bar with, our, mm -hmm. with Iron Man and someone else, and they make enough sort of a ruckus, not not like a fighting one, but like a shouty one, that a sheriff just is like, what are you, what's what's, what's going up? on, what are you guys doing yeah. here? Like, what's, what's the business here? And it's just funny to me, because I'm like, yeah, imagine the amount of times the TVA have to fucking deal with this. Just local authorities yeah, being like, what the fuck office, are you guys? Like, hey, <laughs> well, what's funny you guys are like walking around with weapons. They go to like um, the recreation, right? Or they're, they're in some kind of like festivaly recreation thing, and someone's like, you know, in costume. And I was just like, yeah, if they had someone who was, you know, overprotective enough of that sort of thing, they could honestly get the fuck in their way. They could be like, you guys can't be here if you're not in costume. They're like, what do you yeah, do? Yeah, there might be one person like that. What do they do? I guess you melt them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to delete that timeline anyway, so. But then, okay, what so you melt them, right? and then everyone is like screaming and running around. They're like, oh, <laughs> let's just get this reset. Then someone goes, well, fucking, we got to stop these crazy aliens from the future. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you just had, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, I don't, it's a stupid show. That's all. It's yeah, you come, you come around these, you come around this neck of the woods and start <sighs> shit. And you're gonna get shot. You're gonna get shot. Mm -hmm. Like, what if you have to go into someone's house and you just break into someone's house? They're gonna be like, "Motherfucker, you can't just break in my house with your body armor and your weird weaponry. You're gonna die. <laughs> you're gonna get shot. Yeah, People are gonna defend well, themselves." You'd think. The TVA are awful. Their armor doesn't work. They're all idiots. They just—they're so incompetent. Which makes it even more frustrating that Loki just gets t you know, taken by him at the very beginning. That was so shit. I just I like the Loki that's almost constantly got a uh, an illusion that he can keep tricking. I even think that we talked about how I was I wasn't thoroughly satisfied with how he was killed by Thanos. They did the um the one illusion. I was hoping for like Thanos would be that far ahead of him. That Loki, despite being pretty intelligent, has like two different distractions or something that Thanos sees through them. 
Um, yeah. But, like, that's way fucking better, the fact that he had an illusion to begin with. I don't know. Bad face. Yep. <laughs> Um, last EFAP, someone said they were going to make a Halo 4 critique. Whoever you are, DM my Twitter, Big Mitchy. I've got some short vids of it, of trashing it. I wanted to do a Halo 4 vid, but I can't do it myself. But I'm happy to help out another Halo 4 hater uh, by testing and giving them my criticisms. Well, there you go. All right. I mean, yeah. I, um, I, I, I do someone in chat, was it? Or? I can't remember. Well, it must have been, because it's not me. Or at least I don't think it was. Uh, you never answered the Teletubbies question, Mola. Oh, yes. Well, I, I don't know who the back... What was it? Backyardsman or something? Back... Back... The Backyardigans! Oh, that was it. I, I can't help you. Yeah, I don't know who they are, so I can't guess. Those that had, the That was the one with uh, Tyrone the Moose. I'm still blanking on that one. No? No. Oh, I know who Teletubbies are. Friends, the the backyard again. There was like a, there was a poss, no, not a poss, sorry, a penguin. So that's cool. There's a penguin. That was cool. That's he cool. had the moose, who's the only one I, I uh, remember the name of. Uh, his name was Tyrone, the moose. Um, was he a and moose? there was, yeah, he was. He was a moose. He had these little antlers. He was little, little moose antlers. Um, uh, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, I forget. There was, one of them was like a pink snaky creature, like a lizard or something. I think uh, nice. I'm not as I'm not as up to date on backyardigans as I am JJ the jet plane. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, the backyardigans. Um, there was a hippo. Mm -hmm. A yellow hippo. What was his name? Frank. Her. Rutherford. Tasha. <laughs> So here's the thing. I looked it up. Uh, so you have this fucking thing. Jeez. This is. Let me. Let me just give you a picture, and you'll know what I'm talking about. This character, her name is. Copy image. Paste it here. Her name is Uniqua. Oh Jesus, that's horrifying. I don't know what the fuck she is. Wait, so this was in the original show? In the Backyardigans. So she's clearly a, um... A bug? Um... Maybe it would be offensive to even question what... Maybe she has evolved past labeling of any kind or any category. Um, let me see. Uh... Let me see. I need to know what she is. She is a oh, she's a one of a kind, unique creature. Hence her name. I thought she was just black. Because of Uniqua. Yeah, Uniqua. That does sound like a black person's name, potentially. Yeah, potentially. Much it's like, like Shanene. Like or Ch Latifa. Chesterton, you would be like that. Or that's a white guy. Or Tequila. That's or like Ring of Rags. Oh. It, uh, it is also the name of. Um, uh, uh, it's an urban name. Um, so yeah, I guess I think Teletubbies would win because Teletubbies are kind of like incredibly powerful and they often are only seen as lot not powerful because they stick to their own sort of areas. But if oh, you... Unique was voiced by um, someone named Lashan, so I'm pretty sure that's a black person. I am correct. So, yeah. Oh, in that so, universe, there you go. See? that's what black people look like is what you're saying? Uh, no, I looked up a picture of her, and in our universe, that's what black people look like. <laughs> All right, then. Um, <laughs> I she is the too... Of all of this, oh, I'm man, gonna... time flies. <laughs> so, LaShawn, who voiced Uniqua, she is, um, she is, like, uh, younger than I am. Huh. Which makes sense, but it's by not, not as much of a margin as I thought. Wouldn't she always have been younger than you are? Uh, yeah, yeah so it's, it's the margin thing, happened, but it's, it's the margin that, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it's just my remembering of the timeline, but, you know, I, I think of her as a small child because she was a small child when she voiced Uniqua on the bits of the Backyardigans that I did catch, and so I guess I, it's like, you, oh yeah, child actors are all grown up. Like when someone says, 
Um, uh, not not Hollywood star Rich Evans, but who was the um, Home Alone? Uh, Macaulay Culkin. Oh, Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> when people when people think about uh, Macaulay DeVito, do they think of you know little Kevin McAllister in the movies, or do they think of current day adults Macaulay Culkin? Well, I think of the latter because of RLM, but yeah, so yeah, that's why I yeah. that's why I do too. But I bet most people might pr think of them as the child actor. So. <clears throat> So yeah, um, like when you like when you say player. Harrison Ford, I think of like a, like an Indiana Jones kind of Indian, you know, Harrison Ford. I think of the Those man who hangs out with another man in a CGI suit to be a dog. That's what I think. Oh yeah, that's acting. But, uh, anyway, anyway, we have unique. We have Pablo, who's the penguin, Tyrone the moose, Tasha the hippo. Um, and those are the those are the backyard. Why didn't they make Tasha or Tyrannosaurus Rex to match the T's? Idiots. You then fools. it says Austin, but I don't remember Austin back yard again. Dead? Holy fuck! Why would why would that be popping up? Austin back yard again. Dead. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, he's a. Oh, I think he's a kangaroo. You like that, Fringy? I, will I like he's that? Yeah, he's a purple kangaroo. Oh, a purple kangaroo? Yeah. Okay. Here, let me show you. Let me show you. He's pretty... Yeah. Uh, he's, Please he's do. Pretty... I need to know yeah. about this. Those disgusting purple kangaroos. Oof. <laughs> ah. Oh, God. What the hell is that? That doesn't look like a kangaroo at all. Just because he's got the... The ears and the tail. There are other features of kangaroos. Name three. Uh, the so the pouch would be the most obvious one. Do now. Um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do only the females have pouches? Oh, yeah. You might <laughs> be right about him. that. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that's that's almost that's almost certain. Yeah. Went from one out of three yes. now it back says, to zero out of three. <laughs> It says yes. Okay, so, we're back to we're zero well, no, 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 out of three. Well, okay, they are sorry. they are known for their pouches, but only females have pouches. I just googled it. All I have to do is ask, uh, do only female K, and it autofills it because Google knows right, what's so up. You defeated A lot of him in the marketplace of ideas. Okay, so um, it, so it the the next big thing would be kangaroos have pretty distinctive arms. That's one and legs. That's distinctive two. arms. Yeah, because the little ones up top yeah. are kind of smallish. They're smaller, but they're they're long enough to reach. It's they got like everything. little T Rex arms. Yeah, and Kangaroos the big old T Rex arms. Big old jumping and feet. They got with the big old chungus legs. Chungus they got legs. chungus legs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you know that male kangaroos their testicles are above their penis? That's I wild. didn't know that. That's yeah, something I, I don't. Something I know. And I, and I bet it's because you're it, not it, actually it, like, hold up what I just got an image of a kangaroo it's clearly a male and what formerly was bald now it's all starting to make sense because it's <laughs> look, I think what? it's because it, it's jumping around all the time you know and if you're jumping around mm. they've got their yeah I mean I mean that so I guess both male and female kangaroos have pouches <laughs> above their genitals. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that makes sense if you're. <laughs> wow, the delay on that yeah. one. Jesus, the sound just... had to get from Australia to beat America. No, just, I was laughing transmission. at the fact. That... I was laughing at the fact that men who spat out his drink <laughs> because it was so funny. <laughs> oh, the movie Kangaroo Jack. Yeah, I don't know about Kangaroo Jack. Yeah, I never saw it. Uh, but what, the kangaroos are cool. Kangaroos are really cool. Right, so you've, you've escaped the, the name three. We, we, we were getting so close. You named two out of three. We needed to approve them. So, uh, oh, I, 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 did you know that a young kangaroo is called a joey? Uh, I knew that. Yeah. Of course. What do you mean, of course? You didn't know about the ball thing. <laughs> ball thing. <laughs> I didn't know about the bull thing because it's not really a particularly important thing. Neither is neither is knowing that a juvenile kangaroo is called a joey. 
But you know what's well, really but, cool is it says no. Here, the reason why I that, know that they're called a joey is because in the scouts in Australia, at least the one that I was part of, the joey was like you know when you were a kid, like before you joined like the proper scouts. That was the name for them. Did you what's so over here? Like the top rank is eagle. Over there is it like wallaby or koala? Are you are well? You wallaby koala is, wallaby was second up. So like you were Ooh. joey first, then you were a wallaby. You get to the point um, where eventually you're a huntsman. Ooh, ooh, no, you're a, uh, yeah, but you're, you're a Jaeger, Jaegermann. Yeah, when you're a man, you are dangerous. A, a, a Jaegermensch, right? <laughs> a hunter man? Uh, but oh, as I was saying, I, I mean, I it's know. really cool. This will be a, this will be a classic EFAP throwback. Hmm. Oh, boy. Is, for the true fans, that Joey's are just, they're born about, just about an inch long. 2.5 centimeters oh, yeah, at yeah, birth, this one. or just about the size of a grape, which means <laughs> that a, a kangaroo is basically a weird grape. You could say that. <laughs> a very weird grape. It's I'd a really so. weird grape. That's a good reference. Wow. <laughs> Someone asked, is... <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, you're right there. <laughs> I don't know what, what the, what the <laughs> funny is. Yeah, what's about dead. to happen? <laughs> oh no. I just oh, have what? to post it because I can't speak. <laughs> oh my god, this is I'm, I'm having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It's balls above Wagga Rank. <laughs> 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 I don't even know what would that badge look like. <laughs> don't, I don't know. I want to know. It's, I can imagine I being played, played played totally straight by everyone in the organization. You are now balls above Wang. <laughs> you've reached the rank of balls above. <laughs> when someone questions this, like, do you not know anything about kangaroos? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be alright, guys. Think of Borobi. <laughs> oh no. You say the bulls above wag would hit? Uh, no, Dude, because yeah. you're bouncing around. You're, you're a kangaroo. You're bouncing anything, around all the time. It's probably more ergonomic to have the bulls well, yeah. above wag. I mean, if you're, if you're jumping around everywhere, yeah, you don't want those things. Oh my god. Oh, my little fluffy tum tum hurts so bad. <laughs> You probably won't be able to was... shoot on stream, but like, here's it. Oh. There's actually you because it's you kind of cut out there it's for me. I thought cool. you said you won't be able to shit on stream, but so <laughs> like, YouTube what? has like YouTube has in graphic detail like draft horse breeding. So I think we're fine showing animal genitals. We don't have to though. Yeah, I'm gonna vote no on that one. So <laughs> so like oh, if no. you start in scout you start in scouts with balls below Wang. You're a fucked up little Joey with your balls below your wang. <laughs> but one day if you try really hard and work, you'll get to uh. have balls above your wang. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. That's how you establish dominance. Is how I... <laughs> An interesting day. <laughs> uh, something. I'm glad I showed Man, up. Like, oh. is kind of lost here. <laughs> uh. Oh. 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 Good stuff. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> man, it's a mean riot today. Jesus. Okay. Someone's. Can you please acknowledge the Laughing Cavaliers comment? Let me no. scroll up. <laughs> the Laughing Cavalier. Um. Fun fact about koalas, their pouch faces the opposite direction. So, like, pouch entrances below, not, like, the top down like you would expect. 
Oh, that's lewd. So, like... Well, there is a reason for that, but I'm not sure if I actually want to talk about it. It's, uh, well, oh, wait, it's let me Let me think. Why Why would that be the case? Why? Cause, so it's easier when a koala is born for it to get into the pouch? No, that is not the reason. Do koalas spend a lot of time upside down? No, they don't. Hmm. Just assholes. <laughs> um... Uh, you know what? <laughs> You're actually... You're getting close with that one. Oh, so when the little baby what? shits, it leaves the pouch. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the, the actual reason is that koala mums secrete something out their bum, or like a hole, something near the bum. It's like I've a, secreted a thing. something out of my bum before. <laughs> but it's, not, it's not poop, it's like, it's just something... <laughs> Thank you very much for you. It's just something. I know. Oh, no. oh. It's poop. <laughs> so it says. Oh. It's over oh, Anakin. No. I have the balls above my <laughs> 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 I see Obi Wan saying that. <laughs> oh, that's what even the Jedi would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as people were pointing out, Australia is upside down. So, but, but that wouldn't explain why the the kangaroos have theirs the right way up. Unless those creatures are upside down relative to their heads or something regularly. And whenever well, we their see heads them. Are at, well, I mean, of course, oh, we know that up is down tell on, me, on kangaroos. <laughs> tell tell me, Fringy. I, I am curious about this bum secretion. <laughs> Oh, I thought I had already explained this. Frank just... wants I, more. I, missed, I don't I missed, know why I'm this just surprises be, any no, of us. Ringy, I'm, I missed, I missed all of that shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. So please say it again, because I, I, I really did miss, and I didn't want to, but I did. Ah, oh, crap. Now, now, because I, I feel, I feel the need to like double check now, like on Wikipedia, to make sure I've got it all right. Let me, let me see. I'm on the Wikipedia page right now. Um. Because they, they stay in the pouch for... Wow, goddamn, koalas stay in the pouch for seven months. And then at which point I guess they're just pushed out to like, go off and do their own little thing. Um... Oh, detective agency. Uh, uh where... Oh, oh, uh, wait. No, I don't... I don't I see... Know about I'm sure, koala I'm sure that this is... I'm sure that this is correct. I'm sure that I there was like I'm I'm confident that's like accurate. But uh, other yeah I I I no I'm not sure. All I just remember was that there was like something that secreted from from that area that's just it's just for development, but not poo. Because someone, someone in not chat poo, just said no. what five hours live. So I'm gonna assume that you're new here. Welcome to our discussion about koala. And animals. as you may have noticed, <laughs> the longer the longer it goes on, the more it deteriorates. Well, I would so, like yeah. to remind you all that this this all comes from. I, this is my job sometimes. This all came from who would win in a fight? That weird children's cartoon thing the rags knew about or Teletubbies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, the origin. <laughs> if I hadn't, I'm, you know what? If I I'm hadn't looking. randomly remembered that Tyrone was the moose, we would have never gotten to any of this. No, we wouldn't have learned all of this. Oh wow! Fantastic. Fantastic. Educational streams. Um, this is our super chat check. check. Remember, yeah. remember, right? Koalas are not bears. Please, for the love of. Then why are they called koala God? bears? Yeah, right. They're yeah. not called koala bears. They're called koalas. Bear is a misnomer. But why are they called like koala Wikipedia bears? Like Wikipedia says. Literally. Yeah, Wikipedia nurse sharks says, aren't nurses, but they're called nurse sharks. I, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Wikipedia says the koala, or inaccurately, koala bear. So, like, even Wikipedia acknowledges So you're saying that Wikipedia you is right constantly? Hey, look, Wikipedia is the arbiter of truth and justice, alright? Mm. And justice. I'll give you truth, but justice as well, really. Oh, will you give me truth? Alright, that's all I need. So you <laughs> it's bad, not a bear. Justice. Yeah, but yes. uh, this is a, this is a, this regards justice, justice Fringy, as far as I'm concerned. Fringy is not like Superman. Fringy's not a big fan of justice. No. No, Wiki Wikipedia Randy is a big fan of justice. He comes in and slaps people in the face with Wikipedia articles after just giving away justice. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't line up to me. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Boyd's uh, in the chat, isn't he? I'm just. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god. <clears throat> oh, it was pretty good. It was that was a good one. It was the right. We still have the right it. level of. <laughs> the right level. We have no. Oh, yeah, I've managed so, to read I out this know question. About this koala bum. I have Please, read out the I question about like koala seven bum. times. We still never answered it. I feel bad for this person. <laughs> well, someone liked this question like, so much that it sorry, just followed my Twitch channel. About... Apparently. <laughs> Rags, are you a bear? I'm a daddy bear. You're a koala bear. But to, to address no, the I'm point, a... the koala, koala is not a bear. It's a marsupial. Yeah, we know it's a misnumber. We misnumber. A misnumber? Oh, a yeah. Misnumber. It's a misnumber, yeah. right? Yeah, that one, well, that one was interesting. That misspeak was... I knew exactly what to say, but for some reason, I was like semi-laughing or something, and so I tried to keep my mouth closed, which made the mm sound in that word. So that was really interesting. But... Koala butts, please. I like. I really am curious. Why? Why would a koala's that, pouch wait, evolve to be upside he down? Really, really wants to know. No, that I think that's really interesting. Why that would be the case? Like there has to be. There, there's got to be a reason uh, right, why me, it evolved that just way. Look up, why is a koala koala pouch upside down? Because <laughs> like uh, yeah. yeah. So it, it right. So here is here is according to this website. Koalas compensate for their upside down pouches by using a special sphincter muscle along the outer edge of the pouch opening. A mother okay. koala uses this. Oh, wait, that doesn't explain. Wait, hold on, that doesn't explain. Maybe I was totally wrong. Like, I'm pretty sure that there was. There was somewhere. Ha oh, apparently wombats have backward facing pouches too. You telling me we can't rely on that. you for sphincter facts? <laughs> yeah, I'm just well, of course to figure that's out why job. it's upside down. <laughs> I, it's, it's really. I'm just trying to figure out where it's because. Um, uh, it has a. Let's see. It does. It doesn't say why. I okay. Maybe, maybe I was totally wrong. Um. I'm, I'm confident that I saw it somewhere. I, in fact, I think it was like a National Geographic thing. Koala 101. I think that was the video. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. Sorry for potentially misleading you, chat. No, let me see. Do you know koalas are smooth-brained? Like, they ha they're they not very intelligent. But hey, look, they're doing the best they can, They can't they can, even get right? their pouches right. Yeah, yeah. they got their pouches upside down. Call themselves koala bears, and they're not even bears. They don't call it's themselves idiots. that. It, it's 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 actually pretty offensive. Well, then maybe they should get a different oh, name. Oh, yep, yep. I yep. Yeah. I was okay. It was it was right. There was there was there's something near the butt that aids digestion. Okay. So that, so what does that have to do with the pouch? The pouch is facing backwards so that they have easier access to this little like secretion thing. Wait, by they you mean the baby in the pouch? Well, yeah. Well, what else are they secreting it for? Like, what? what <laughs> well, I don't know. That? This is a very strange thing. I'm not going to jump to. I think it's a very fair question. The pouch is backward facing as opposed to facing up so that the little koala joeys are able to access the, uh, the substance that helps them digest better. <laughs> there you go, right? I have never. It's weird because. I have never licked my mom's asshole. Well, I don't Are know you that... a koala? What? Like, what? Koala bear. Why would you say that? Are you a koala? <laughs> no, I'm not. What? I, I, that's, a, uh, that's a sentence I didn't think I'm gonna hear. That is a sentence, yeah. Also, why are you talking about AIDS? Yeah. And like, how the uh, fuck do you digest them? AIDS? So is it like a... So they just eat the butt secretes. Animals are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to be a koala anymore. Right. You know what about dogs like to let poop and stuff, right? What about koala bear? Though? Uh, some weirdo ones do. Some fucking weird. Uh. Low class um, doggos do that. Yeah, low class bunch of fucking <laughs> the riff raff. But the the. Rabble another, dog is. another fun fact about koalas, they sleep for like 23 hours. They are they are not active. They are they are lazy. 
They, they, is that, they is that lazy like relative to koalas, though? Well, the issue for them is that they eat eucalyptus, which has like no subs. It's 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 pretty uh it's pretty shit by way of um nutrients. Yeah, they have to eat all the time, and they only well, eat eucalyptus like, leaves, uh, right? Pandas. That's like the uh, only sorry, thing they're they like eat. pandas because they're not. I that's panda bears. What I just said, but no pandas. Pandas it's like all koala bears. Is bamboo, which is too why are you doing this? Why can't you just be clear with what you're saying? <laughs> well, you have panda bears and koala bears. Yeah, they're like polar we bears. We have pandas and koalas. I misspoke. Pandas are also... Oh, wait, no. We had this before. Pandas are bears. I'm pretty sure we had this discussion before. Pretty sure I fucked that one up. Let me see. Wikipedia. Right. It found me now. Rags will ruin grandma, but you know he has standards. I do. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a way to I'm ruin. not licking my mom's asshole. <clears throat> Oh, it, it is. I'm just putting my cards on the table before I get yeah. fucking rod. So <laughs> we're just we're just being clear. I just, I, you know, just establishing my limits. Someone said, "So is that where the where the phrase pap smear came from?" Oh my god, Maybe. pandas, not pandas. God damn it. Koalas spend 10% of their time eating and 90% of their time sleeping. Sounds like an enviable lifestyle to me <laughs> in a lot of ways. I'd sleep 90% of the time too if it meant that that's 23 less hours in a day I'd be licking my mom's asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, you shit on them all you want, but like, seriously, koalas are pretty fucking cool little nifty what's, creatures. Like, what's, yeah, what's strange about koalas is you think about that that we just discussed. You think about the fact that... Um, like they only eat like that one leaf and it's really shitty, but that's like all they eat. Like, how do you, yes. and then their pouch is upside down. I, I just like the fact that he said they eat their mother's excretion or whatever. And then the response from Friggy was, well, you know what? They're pretty cool. <laughs> how strange evolution Co must have been to where that's just kind of what Koalas came about. are little anomalies, but yeah, they're here's almost... something that a, a lot of people probably... Koalas are actually like incredibly important to the ecosystem. They are them eating eucalyptus and then pooping. Like that's really good for the environment. It's just really good for yeah. the trees. But ultimately, okay. mm. how can you not like? They're cute. How can you? Oh, the image is taking a while to load, but like it's it's a real yeah. It's a real Koalas good are. Uh... Friend. He needs to put up on stream. Look at look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, he's he's taking a he's taking a break from his uh, last rimming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't like it when you besmirch koalas because that's the character in my comic. He's a koala. Really. <laughs> does, well, he's, he's does a he, plush um... koala, so he's not a real one. He's not real. Before you start coming on with you little, he's a koala bear. Things to be criticizing. No, I, I like koalas. Koalas are they're they're nifty. They got the the hands and the the big poofy ears and their black noses and their either eyes are just it's just they're kind of cute. They're very they look they look rug they look like kind of like rug like. They're the way they're yeah. I like them. Is that offensive? I like koalas. Rug like I don't know. No, I don't think so. I have to check Rugs with my, are soft and Twitter exec. <laughs> <sighs> what a strange creature. But anyway, we're done with that tangent. Um, so what was the actual question? I'm sorry. Teletubbies versus the Backyardigans. Guardians? I don't Backyardigans. know. Backyardigans. I think the Backyardigans would probably win. I feel like they... I think like they're more... They've got more experience that would make the... I think they're... They're animals of the world more so, I feel, than the Teletubbies. So here's the thing. I think the Teletubbies are more sheltered. I picture... See, that's where we're going to have to disagree. I picture if I was to battle the Teletubbies, I could bring a gun or, or whatever else, and I go to attack them. At first, I think they would treat me with, like, lots of respect and wholesomeness, and then when I, like, step over a particular line, like, something would happen. I believe they would, like, crack open, or they would unzip their costumes, and, like, some creature would, like, oh, no. like blood and, and bile oh, would just okay. pour out. Okay, you're inventing then, that. That's, like, that, knives you're in... and legs like you're they did the thing up. i'm pretty sure i don't trust them is what i'm saying like I, I i appreciate the job that they perform but i just don't know what's going on underneath all of that especially with how their tvs can just well like, it's probably just like organs and stuff and I that they just have know. an organ that is a tv that you know it, it or it simulates television i think there's or something there's some kind of a... going on with the tally tubbies that's kind of where i'm at 
God. I I think that's 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 something that you made up in your mind. So what happened there was was that <clears throat> were you preparing all that material more while you were waiting for us to finish our uh, our little discussion about koalas and then just unload all of that? But look, Tyrone's got armor and he's got like a shield. Oh, he and he's clearly in he he's yeah, able to utilize tools much and armor against it, he's probably got horrors. a sword too. Yeah, no, that's cute, but I just I just don't know it's gonna do much. Uh, like the like a sword or something? What would the, I don't know what the Teletubbies would do. They 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 seem very soft. I if Teletubbies but how strong are they? I don't that's you don't have to, the backyard against. I don't well even a child with a sword could stab you and kill you. They're well, it depends. Is that is a Teletubby's flesh so strong that like it can't be penetrated this is, this is by thing. swords? I I don't think we have any reason to assume that it can't. Well, be of penetrated. course we don't. We're inferring a lot. I don't think we should go simply on literally what we see about these two types. That's boring. I think okay, the Teletubbies I, have been I'm sequestered with... to a dimension where God tried to trap them there because they're so powerful. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jump <so> over. <laughs> I'm okay. Oh, yeah, with Rags, the can idea. you prove that that's not true? Okay, we already did this thing with hell. That's not how this works. <laughs> yes, the I'm fine with reasonable... are much like Hogwarts. I'm t I I'm I'm fine with the idea that we can make reasonable inferences as to the power levels of the backyardigans or the Teletubbies, which is a sentence that I can say that now I've said. Yes. However, we need to I think there's a there's a level of reasonableness that I feel as if we need to try and establish. Um Oh, the... what's that reasonable? With this, what would? What well, would that be? The, well, that's that's kind of what the discussion is, right? That's that's sort of what we're talking right. about. So we know from the backyardigans, uh, uh, there was the episode called Special Delivery, where uh, Pablo, Unico, the legendary and classic are, episode. Yeah, yeah, where, where they're riding on motorcycles, so they they can sufficiently operate motor vehicles. I don't know, like that already gives them, you know, abilities and powers. They can utilize tools, like we see here. Tyrone was in the armor. He had a helmet. He had a shield. He's probably got a sword somewhere. I think it's reasonable to say he's got one somewhere around here. Um, I think they could utilize tools. They could wear different outfits. They can perform different jobs. I think there's an episode where there's a train robbery, uh, and I think they're pirates that can sail a vessel in another one. Um, it, I think they're capable of all kinds of different things and i think that tyrone was once a mayan king as well um and those were those could be a fierce people and they were smart too um so the, the way they figure out equinoxes the and everything between flesh and technology and i believe that this will propel them into any warfare that they would dominate on should they choose to engage with it Again, I'm not even sure if it's self-imposed at this point. Like, they knew they were too much of a danger to the universe, and so they made their way to those grassy hills to be left alone. And, <laughs> and look at this, too. Look, we see them operating technology and wearing armor. Like, and this is a different kind of armor, too. They have proficiency in armor of multiple varieties. I mean, and they're smart. I mean, look, they... Look well, at here. that might I mean, be their big advantage, yeah. Yeah, like it's it's their ability to utilize tools, perform a variety of tasks. They can be police officers. But is can... there any reason why Teletubbies can't do that? Well, do we ever see them doing that, or do they just giggle well, and fart they're around? They're made of TVs, like TVs. The are technology built into them. that There's they a have TV in them is more incredible than anything you've presented so far. They've achieved, they have a TV inside of them. That could just be a product of their birth. That could just, they, they don't have oh, anything. Well, we assume like, that's I've, a product of their birth. Yeah, well, we assume that. Yeah, like, I've never made an appendix, but I've got one. I believe it is that they have mastered the craft of combining flesh with technology. I think that's the most reasonable <laughs> inference you could make. I mean, they, like, the, the backyardigans, they can, they could crack safes, and they can rob tombs. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's season one, episode five, secret mission. <laughs> oh, is it season one, episode five specifically? <laughs> we gotta make sure we get our references right, okay? Remember, well, the, I mean, the, I the Teletubbies are also much. graced by a sun god that looks over them, so I believe that this is going to help in their fight against well, these these childish Well, creatures. that's obviously... Yeah, well, the Backyardigans don't need it. The Backyardigans oh, killed their gods yeah. eons ago, and they have assumed into to godhood. Oh, yeah, but so we're there. going to real god this time. Oh. This is a real sun god. Oh, well, real god. There, there are, oh, you see a, you see a baby in a I sun, have. and you start worshipping it? Sun god. Is that how it fuck operates? Up the back god again. I think the first thing is we can't rule out that the sun god isn't just a paranoid delusion 
like if that's true. Zombies. Fine, all if of this is I in everyone's doing. heads, and nothing is real. No, no, no. If well, I saw, if I looked up into leap. the sun, it would, you, you the sun do, you god was real. It had a face. It talked. Oh, it had a speech. face. Oh, 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 is that all what right. this is? <laughs> all right, it's the. Uh, Gonna have to. Maybe we should put it up to a vote. Who believes the sun god was real and vengeful in Teletubbies? <laughs> it's real and very vengeful. <laughs> Like, <laughs> whether or not we think it's real or not, I, I don't think it was vengeful. I, I got a vibe. Just... I got a vibe when watching that show. I don't know. I felt like it was laughing, at, like the idea of people trying to get to the Teletubby dimension, but the second they do, that thing will fucking shred them. And so what? Do you they think only like... allow the children of Earth to enter vaguely and carefully to teach them things about their, their world, but they're really just trying to influence them gradually without, you know, rocking the boat, if you will. Why would you assume that? Oh, I don't assume it. I let's just say I had someone in on the show, quote unquote, the show, who uh, knows oh, some stuff. Oh, oh wow! I guess you've never heard of reader response theory. I so, think you mean death of the Earth. I so mean I went, reader response theory. Well, I went why would that the, matter? I, I'm uh, talking about somebody who made it or is involved with it. Yeah, that's reader response theory. No, that's death. I'm ad I'm appealing to the author or creator. Wow! Again. Look at that. Does not understand sarcasm, chat. My god. No, you get that wrong cool. all the time, though. That's one of the things you always get wrong. That's- I'm- I'm sorry that you couldn't sell the sarcasm there, because I was being sarcastic. Ah, see? Yet another instance of, uh, rude response theory. Silence. Sense. Of There's you. not even a joke. There's just nothing. You just- Oh, I, so I need... sarcasm has to have a joke? Well, so when wow. Rax does this, usually- Based on something funny. I'm sorry. Is sarcasm an I'm operative funny. element of joke? Is a joke an operative element, like well, a fundamental component of sarcasm? Thank you for proving my point. I was I'm being pretty sarcastic sure this whole time. Fun. Yeah, I was being sarcastic this whole time. This whole well, time. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic when I want you guys to see this. Why did it put spoilers? It, this is the baby Spo son from the Teletubbies wiki. And it- Spoilers it, the up sentence... on a thing that you pulled from the wiki, <laughs> wiki of wiki Teletubbies. Teletubbies. <laughs> and sarcasm. So, it's, there's, a, there's a sentence here that says, some fans wonder why would the creators put the baby in the sun because the sun is a baby. <laughs> That's- that's a sentence. <laughs> they wanted to make sure you understood why people had that question. <laughs> Some fans wonder, why would the creators put the baby in the sun because the sun is a baby? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe there's like a Wikipedia film. Well, no, I it's can't very, actually. It's very short because we know very little about this enigmatic, this, this, this strange infant sun creature it, it it just by the way um no it's fine i could i've got some sun baby trivia there's some trivia here on the wiki page does it describe any of its war crimes um no uh well borderline why would you assume it's, that it's, he suppressed all the information if if the, i mean the oh, I, told you I wasn't like assuming it. i'm aware of what it's done no no no, no then no, why did you no, oh okay it, Child labor. Uh, according to Jess Smith, who is the baby, while she's being weighed at the hospital, the producers of Teletubbies were there on the same day looking for smiley babies, and that's how she ended up playing the role. Oh, there you go. Just so happened she was there at the hospital, and she was, um, yeah, and they were like, oh, we need a smiley baby. You. And then child labor. <sighs> You probably didn't even pay the son, baby. <gasps> I wonder if there was a way. Probably I, not. I wanna... no. What? They paid her in, um, I don't know. Oh, we, I thought you were going to connect us back to something there, but I feel like it's too... Well, I was, I was curious. Do you want to see what the sun baby looks like in this like, recent image? Well, like what, Jess? the adult version of the Yeah, would you god? like to see the adult version of the... <laughs> Are you saying that your god will age and wither away and die? <laughs> I mean, hey, no, this could just be the, the prime age. She's not going to age any further than this now. Do you think that she's currently in her prime age? I, I don't know what she looks like. So. Is this your sun god? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel a sun baby. <laughs> That's your accolade. Like.
<laughs> I played a sun god uh, in a fictional I was fantasy program. Teletubbies. Most people worship the Teletubbies, but the Teletubbies worshipped me. <laughs> I mean, FYI, those antennas. They were weapons. Oh. Speaking so, of war crimes... Yeah. I hope you got your money's worth out of that super chat. It's like an hour-long response to it in many different topics. <laughs> I think they should be proud. Up. Um, We're never going to get So I've been doing this for a while in the background. Rags, have you seen what I've been doing? Oh, look, look yeah, on it. Genociding people? Yeah, That's great. people with space because you're a monster. <laughs> well, you know what? If for oh, every person terrible. I kill, a rebel lives. <laughs> that one's... <laughs> Some of them oh, are... they're naked! <laughs> C-3PO, man. Did we have a meme oh, about C-3PO being the most bloodthirsty creature in Star Wars? You know, <laughs> just oh saying. my god! I want you guys to appreciate R2-D2's opinion on this matter. Look at him. He is... he's struggling. He's not... he's, he's not sure about this. It. Just shaking yeah. his head. He's like, oh no. He's just bringing oh. C-3PO's ear. He's like, do it again. Another... <laughs> another yes. Another, another one. Another Veda one. knows about this, like... but he hasn't stopped him because he's curious about this AI. Like, it's just... It's done what if this, on this is own. how they get to work every day? They go through the zero G2? What, is they this fly the through space naked. <laughs> well, no, they got a helmet. <laughs> well, they've also got, like, a thong, so... Looking good, I would say. <laughs> I don't so, know yeah. what is a Lego dick. Are all Lego dicks uncircumcised? What the? I don't know. I don't have the answer. That's a fair question. question. I don't know. So, um, I already watched the on. first few minutes, but the new Mark Brown video isn't so bad. Please go on Adam and Stitch with Rags this time. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. What I mean, is the new Mark Brown video? I don't know. I, I... Have a count of 10. To Let's Dude, see. It's pretty Hold advanced. On. I don't know. <laughs> um, Mark. <laughs> God, it is taking me a while to catch these ones. Mark Brown. Oh wait, no, he's Game Maker's Toolkit. Um, can, is it? Can we make better tutorials for complex games, or is it the RE one, or which? Well, I guess it has to be that complex. Or the Game Jam video, but I don't see how that would be the one. I don't know why Game Jam would be bad ever, if it's just people who submit games to it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, well, I feel like that would be really good, because it'd be people who are, like, really <laughs> putting in some serious effort to make something. <laughs> you implying? <laughs> like, I'm not implying be, anything, I'm just be, saying, like, it's just people putting in effort to make something cool. Sounds like you're saying he doesn't for his videos when I think they are Well, phenomenal. I mean, I mean, like, if we're, if we're being, like, really, uh, like... As much as I don't like the content, if he's putting together game jams where people, you know, where it encourages people to submit stuff, like, that can only be positive. So that's sure, cool I, with we that. might get something productive out of his audience, that's true. Well, I'll go a step further. I think the editing in his videos is really good. The editing is excellent. I think that's the issue. I think it tricks yeah. people. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's, it tricks people into thinking he said anything of any value. Well, sometimes I don't know what game is on screen, and there'll be a little thing that says it. That's valuable, right, Rex? Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, I love Super Chat streams. Great conversations. Oh, it's just constant conversations. Oh, we have no, we have we no floopy video to distract us. Mm -hmm. Concentrated EFAM. Uh, the Dark Alliance game needs more press. 40 on Steam for full game, no microtransactions, and looks pretty fun. Also, Beef Stroganoff or Chicken Alfredo? I'm for Chicken Alfredo. That's what they say. Um, beef Stroganoff. I don't know what those are. <laughs> what? They are foods. Well, I'm sure that they're foods, but I don't, I don't know what they are specifically. Um, well, if you haven't tasted them, then... Well, what about you, uh, Metal? I'm just, try, I'm just trying to figure out what a beef stroganoff is because I don't know that name, but it just could be a different I think name here. In so German I don't know. Uh, beef Stroganheim, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Everything is Heim and stuff. No, let me, let me see here. Heim and stuff. That looks good. Uh, what was the other one? Ch chicken something. Uh, Alfredo. 
chicken, chicken is this supposed chicken to be Alfredo? Alfredo. Do you have pictures? Can you post mm -hmm. them? Yeah, I can get some. A sample of these. Because, yeah, it might just be called something different here. That's all. Chicken Alfredo. Alfredo. Chicken. Wait, so they chicken because I prefer, prefer sure. chicken in general. So, I yeah, go with, the, chicken well. go with the Trimkin. I, I didn't know them by these names, but uh, yeah, I definitely had that before. Okay. It's good stuff. This is beef right, stroganoff. Right. Oh, okay. Is this the same in German? Well, just a note by by that and name. This is That's fine. Chicken Alfredo. Is it supposed to be Alfredo? <laughs> oh, I yeah. So that I'm not sure that I've ever had either of those. Um, but I I they're like the look of the chicken. Good. Yeah, they're both very good, but I prefer the beef stroganoff. Okay. You're entitled to that opinion. Is that it? Did we do it? Yeah, I think so. Very well. Now I'm hungry. German time. Come on, grab your Strumgilla. Uh, we march to very distant lands with Blonde the Dog and Adolf the Fuhrer. Wix has to set you free. It's German time. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new PC guy who wants to play RE Village here. I already bought it. They put a oh, face no, after boy. that of like, oh no, sort of thing, and it's like, well, if you haven't played it yet, you can refund it. You might enjoy it. You might, you know, there's something of, you know. Yeah. We got a C3PO meme already. I put it into Discord. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> 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 I like that. That was a good meme. I mean, you know. <laughs> the thumbs up does it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it is the thumbs up that really makes the meme. Uh, how do you say cum yum in German or grandma wrecker? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can translate cum yum to German. <laughs> what? <laughs> Probably not, yeah. Lame. I, I think they can think of anything. Uh, wait, what was the other one? Grandma something? A uh, Grandma Wrecker. O Oma Zerstörer? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, oh, my Rex, that's what you guess. are. Ah! A Großmutter Zerstörer. Okay. It's no, hair, no. Großmutter Zerstörer. You know, you don't want to break TOS, just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty much, yeah. Could you imagine if, like, that actually ended up happening where, like, you just had websites that detected languages and immediately said, Nope, you're not allowed to say that one. That <laughs> language is not allowed on this website. <laughs> they just ban an yeah, outright um, ban a whole language? Like, damn. Gamer speech Well, is I know, banned. damn. I agree. That is pretty scary as a thing, but, you know, who knows? Let's see. I'm gonna play as Yango. I mean, if you if you if you if you would translate it word for word, come yum. As far as a sperma lecker. I don't know. Some of, this crazy with German, language, but it always, almost always, anyway, so it just feels like you made it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably how people think, feel about English, maybe. Well, the, the reason why I said that is like I don't with other languages, but with German, I think I do because it's it almost sometimes just feels like the way I would try and make up German words, and it turns out some of them are just that. <laughs> well, could, I mean, it, I wonder if it's it's interesting to think about like the way that other languages sound because in my mind, I find it very hard to think about how you would make fun of English, but like I can easily see how you would make fun of like French and Chinese and German. Just because there are like certain sounds that you identify that you don't really hear a lot in English. And then it probably would be the same for the other languages of things that we say in English that are just weird. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, I return to more size of Cantina. Does that count as having the brick? <laughs> he just walked right off the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> huh. No, it doesn't. All right. 
Uh, Teletubbies versus Backyardigans. Who wins? Please tell me. See, we finally, finally did actually do it. Yeah. Well, it was Teletubbies, but yeah. It was, it was. It really was Backyardigans. We established that. <laughs> no, yeah, it. on your end, but my end it was Teletubbies. <clears throat> yeah, the Teletubbies and the supposed strange sun god cult. Would, oh, you're they, supposed, they would, yeah. Yeah, they would fall was... to the mighty technological might of the Backyardigans. And I don't know how much technological might matters to a god. Uh, Rick and Morty tries to answer that question, I suppose. Well, yeah, cause... well, oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of cults that got wiped out by bullets and swords. I'll tell you that. Yeah, but Both they of which, seen... if they were all wiped out with no gods, then they never had one. No, oh, is that the post talk for that? Yeah, what if they got weak <laughs> shitty gods? What if they just had shitty gods? <laughs> <laughs> like I like how that five go to instead oh of those God. gods weren't real. Was those gods were <laughs> shitty? <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh. No, 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 those gods are real. They're just really shitty, and now they these gods exist, but just no one believes in them. Like, I am the god of vegetables. He's like, oh, what can you do? It's like, I can grow vegetables. A lot of I them. I can steam a mean zucchini, <laughs> but other than that, I can't. And it's and like, can you protect us from invaders? Um, <laughs> if they're zucchinis, yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, if they invade your garden, I guess. He's like trying yeah. to impress his followers. He's like, I don't even need soil. Here's a zucchini. Here you go. Right there. That's just for you. You're like, yeah, I it's, guess. It's good for you. It tastes great, and it's good for you. Like, yeah, well, the war god, like, let us conquer neighboring tribes. You just give us vegetable. <laughs> oh, the war god, huh? You should like the war god so much. Jesus. I tried to do something nice for you. And this I give is you food. Thanks, I get Plenty of food. Yeah. Like, we, he, we, we want some other vegetables. He starts walking away, it's like, no, we're, we're sorry, vegetable guy. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> they call him vegetable guy. Like, they don't even... <laughs> <laughs> they don't even call him God because they don't respect him enough to recognize that he's a God. He's just a vegetable man. He just, he just sounds just like a another generally sitcom. He just a really sounds like another sitcom. Sitcom. Yeah, he's like, he's they pretty... like him a lot. He's helpful. They like yeah, him he's like they the don't son... respect him. <laughs> He's like the son of a really <laughs> mighty and powerful god, but he just has kind yeah. of lame powers, and he's always living in his dad's shadow. And he just has to prove himself, so, like, his plan is to prove that being a vegetable god ain't <laughs> so bad, and he has to go on. This sounds like a season-long journey. Well, yeah, he's the god seasons. of... He's a god of, like, toenails or dryer lint or something like that. <laughs> he's just very unimpressive. <laughs> It was just what like the season finale will be like everyone's about to die. If not, if only we could have some vegetables. Like that's the the key ingredient for this particular drama. And there he is. Jack Horseman episode. Oh fuck yeah! Don't remind me. <laughs> right, spaghetti strainer god, the god of spaghetti strainers. Yep. Oh well, yeah, the god of colanders. We love you, no, uh, vegetable guy. <laughs> We love no vegetable god. They finally respect him. Yeah, they call him that. It's like that since you know the Simpsons, the the Burns meme. You truly are the king of vegetables. <laughs> he's like excellent. The end. And he's there at the Emmys, having been nominated. Everybody starts booing. Are, are they booing me? It's like no, they're saying uh, boo rockily, boo rockily. That's his god name, Broccolius. <laughs> no, his name would be like Vincent or something. Yeah, he doesn't have a cool god name. He doesn't have a cool name, he's just a vegetable god. <laughs> but it's his cool name. Yeah, he's, you know yeah, he's like... That's like part of the arc. You don't, you don't have to have a cool name. <sighs> That's not what it's about. All, it, all it's about is helping people as best you can with the means that you have available to you. Yep. And, uh, he oh yeah, with great cauliflower comes great responsibility. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> it would be better like than Loki, it. I know that much. It, it would absolutely be better than Loki, we're not screwing with the Yeah, we would keep this shit existence. consistent. We would establish exactly what he can grow, how fast, and what's required for it. None of that wibbly-wobbly yeah. bullshit. I don't like the idea of actually unironically developing some of these crazy ideas, <laughs> but I feel like they're just funny on paper. And if, and if they ever do a porn parody, we can see him undress his salad. Oh. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> Who fits the balls above Wang rank in Discord? 
I almost don't know how to answer Who fits that? that? Who fits that? Yeah, I, I, I just... How do you answer a question like that? I don't know, sure. You found them in my wing. No. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna hop off now. I'm getting quite sleepy. Well, well. So I will. Well, I guess I'll, I'll let you do your yeah wangs. You three. I guess. You three. Yeah, well, there's three of us. What did I? What did I say? <laughs> you said two. <laughs> you forgot Fringy. Oh, sorry, Fringy. Well, we, you assumed that, right? You could have been referring to you and Fringy, or me and Fringy. It definitely wouldn't have forgotten me. Uh. <laughs> Not after this stream. <laughs> Yeah, fucking Alright, Mel, reveal the truth. Who did you forget? Uh, you. Oh. Okay. Wait, who are you again? I'm, I'm, where Ronald. am I? Oh, hey, Ronald. So, <laughs> where's my McDonald's? Ronald. Not every Ronald has McDonald's. That's stupid. That's so disappointing. I want. Yeah, I know. I want Bergenheimers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good. We'll catch you around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you around, guys. Bye bye. Bye oh, bye. bye. Yeah. I'm getting kind of tired myself, so. Thinking about hitting that dusty trail. Thinking about slapping my face against that pillow. Mm. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna right. hop up onto the bed, and then I'm gonna circle around three times to check my surroundings, and then I'm just gonna <sighs> collapse. I'm See, I, I sleep. Huh? I woke up very early. I can't go to sleep. It would be weird. It's like, why are you going to sleep at like 10 in the morning? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty awake. Like 7 30. Um, yeah, I know it's only 7 30 p.m. But I, I, sometimes I, for me, like, yeah, I, I just, I sleep when I'm tired, and I wake up when I'm done sleeping for the most part. So, if I don't got things to do, um, or schedules or places to be, then I just, that's just life. You have that. Uh, well, great for me. It's it always feels weird to like go to sleep at certain times. I feel like it's um, yeah, like, you know, going to sleep. Then again, my sleep schedule has like significantly changed lately. Like I went, I went to sleep at eight last night. It's like eight p.m. So early, but I got to get up, and do the work. I am relatively energetic. Um, I could go for another ten thousand oh, hours. Oh my god. I'm totally happy to keep going off 10,000. Yeah, hours, go for it. Like, um, yeah, <laughs> not 10,000. I'm going to go to the loo real quick. I'll be right back. I was thinking I'm fucking. The loo. I got to the loo. It looks like I can make that. It's all lies. Oh, I guess I should be using the, the contraption. That's probably fair. Veda, help me out here. Uh. Okay. So, Rags is a bad son confirmed. I'm assuming that's in reference to not eating the secretion. Um, I don't think Rags would consider that bad, I'll be completely honest with you. Probably fully on board with, with regret, like like not doing it, and he probably considers it a good son move. Um, paying two dollars to save the stormtroopers from Mooper. Well, I did eventually spare them, so I don't know what the problem is, you know? And they didn't look like they were suffering, they looked like they were having fun. That's, uh, what we have to headcount it as. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. You know what, let's try and finish this map quickly, because, um, we'll have to just redo it with a minikit detector. I think that makes some more sense. Um, Backyardigans and Teletubbies are powerful, but Little Einsteins have a rocket ship, and Kal... Kalu? Kaliul? Controls the universe he exists in, and Little mm. Bill. Not sure if he's the product of Big Bill. Mum might sue. Well, I mean, this is the thing. It's some of the most difficult questions. Who can win out of all of these child TV show, show characters? Because some of them have some powers that are kind of insane. Um, you know, it's a, it's a fair question. And hopefully, you know, greater minds than ourselves will find the answers. Is Teletubby still going? I don't know. I, you know what though, I imagine it is because there were plenty, like when I was a kid, we have a show in Australia called Play School that was on ABC and I'm, that's still going. 
Um, there's a there was a kid group called the Wiggles, which um, I'm pretty sure that's still going. Um, I man, I, I remember I used to really like the Wiggles. They were um, that was uh, Wiggles. Tank, yeah, the Wiggles. Like, that was. I remember a show called The Hooves. Wiggly Wiggly Christmas. Wiggly Wiggly Christmas. Thomas the Tank Engine was the gem. I oh, just no, hope there's like. I can't. Um, I, I kind of just hope there's sort of like a universe that binds them all and that we, they can assemble to defeat like some enemy of childhood shows. The corporate businessman. He ha he's like master hand and crazy hand. Like that's the kind of thing that's going on. He's gonna be him. All of the the power of all of these combined children's TV shows. The Wiggles epic. is what I'd call a band full of people who had like Parkinson's. It was. Oh, I thought I thought I would need to have seen the show to get the reference, and then I thought about it. I for reference I haven't seen it though, and it sounds good. You know, the Wiggles. Yeah, it was like, um, they had a big red car. That was like the... Yeah, yeah, that's the song. Now it's coming back to me. Choot, choot, chug. We're driving here and we're driving. Choot, choot, chug. God, now I'm getting sad about this. this is childhood, it's gone. Who took it? Where did they go? Time. That cunt. <laughs> he took it. <laughs> This biggest super villain ever, he's just a man with a giant, a giant clock on a stick, <laughs> just cackling on a hill. Well, you know, some people say Father <laughs> Time, like, so it's like, no. who would win in a fight, Father Time or Mother Nature? Father Time. Fa I feel like time beats him, yeah, time I beats I feel everything. feel it would be this vicious battle, in a sense of, like, it begins, it's like Mortal Kombat, everyone's excited to see who's gonna win, Mother Earth is like the combined elements, and maybe even to the point of, you know, planetary systems and stuff. And the time is this old man who, like, sort of hobbles out with his stick. And then they're like, go! And then Father Time just holds his hand up and she just disintegrates. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus! And he fast forward time, like, a trillion, trillion, trillion years. <laughs> yeah, Nature like at the end died. of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, they yeah. just. She's Gonzalez. Yeah. He's like, do I win? Did I, did I win? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh. Waffle or pancake? And why would Fringy pick the inferior pancake over the Chad waffle? I like how you knew that I would pick pancake, but yeah, pancakes. Um, I really, I like them both. I don't really have a preference, I don't think. Between pancakes I I and pancakes. waffles. Broccoli? Oh, um, I really, I think I like waffles more. I think I like, I like waffles more. Oh, uh, well, it looks a... like we're totally split here. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think no? they're both neat. I don't have a preference. Um, I think Mahler's just trying to keep the peace. I think he does secretly love waffles, but he just wants us to be united as a team. He wants to unite us when I don't break the stalemate. Because now we have to, we just have to be tied. Is that better? And that kind of makes us a team. What if I had made it 2v1? Would that be, mm -hmm. would be more or less of a team at that point? Oh, that'd be, that'd be terrible. That'd be awful. Oh. Well, then your logic doesn't pass through, does it, Rags? I think it does, because Besides, I have couldn't all couldn't you just claim the reverse, that I'm trying to not admit I love pancakes the most? He could, but we all know that I, waffles I have built-in syrup holders that will keep all, you know, just everything together, and they're, mm. they're just so just, oh, the taste is just, man. Perfect. Well, well, I mean... If, if there's no other counters to that, I, I do I do kind of see that. That's a good point, Rex. Waffle team came through, you know. This just says salmon lecker. I, I I think is that is that, is that one of the things that it, it was German for something, something lewd. All right then. Hmm. There is mit mit mist. Again. Ah, looks with doodle frudel. Don't know what this stuff means. I'm with Muller on this one. Teletubbies are unholy unions of flash and tech, peering into different realities for fun. Imagine if they wanted to fight. Exactly. This guy knows what's up. 
I just think that we should be thankful that they've decided on what they've done instead of moving forward with any other plans. Wouldn't want to provoke them, for that's for sure. Uh, hello, Yeah, all. the Teletubbies might force them one to death. I mean, with the Sun God on your team, there's a lot to worry about. I don't know. Yeah, I feel that's a pretty shitty god who only does one thing throughout all the episodes. Doesn't oh, it's because he doesn't, he doesn't hate the Teletubbies. He guards them. So. No, you wouldn't want to get on his bad it's side. Soft. That the Teletubbies don't ha have any natural threats, which makes for weak guardians. You're like a fool virgin OT watcher. I'd assume that Yoda can't do nothing but maybe hit you with his They're stick. Like the dodo. But the weak, Chad prequel bird. watcher would know that he'd be flipping around going and, and doing all kinds of incredible things, chopping clones' heads off, you know. Don't underestimate a master of their particular craft, slash species. Oh, they can. Terrifying stuff. Hello all, decided to play through the Metroid series again due to Metroid Dread announcement and currently on Super Metroid. It's fun stuff. Yeah, Super Metroid. They really are a great game. game. Great <clears throat> game. Metroid Dread, ooh, coming in from to save E3. Do you think coming Metroid Dread is an edgy room. name? Um, you know what? I, no, actually, no, I don't. Um, I don't think it is. All right. What um, do you think, I think the big thing is that we need context first before we can stay. Hmm? Do you think Metroid Dread, so Dread being a subtitle, is edgy or no? Um. Uh, is going to be my answer to that one. Not. It's not not edgy, but it's not edgy. It's definitely in that neutralish kind of like a little bit. But not really. I like it. It doesn't come to my mind. Only now that you point it out, what I say, eh, it could be construed as that, I suppose. But not unreasonably. But I don't think it's 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 definitely not something that I would set up as an example of an edgy name. But some I people like might is, think that. I don't know that dread is edgy though. Like I don't. I don't know why I would assume that that would be edgy. It was like. Oh wait. Let, well, me let me. This is important. How is it spelled? D R E A D, dread. How no, it's, that, how that's it's... a lot more. Well, no, you have Judge Dread. So. Oh, but it's it's spelled the way that it actually is. I like, know, I know, but spelled. but however, as we established with Dark Side. <laughs> ah, yes, that's right. The edge is so, enhanced if you spell yeah. it incorrectly. That's a good yeah. point. Apocalypse. No one thinks that like the dark side of the dark side of the moon, right? That's not that's not edgy, right? Yeah. The, um, the Pink dark Floyd. seed so, that is yeah. edgy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, I I don't think it's I don't think it's edgy. Um, I wonder yeah, if the I don't, context I don't really matters. Think because, so. um, no. Well, here's an interesting question: Does the does when it was made matter? Because the name was invented like I'm pretty sure the name was chosen for this game like 16 years ago, maybe even earlier. I don't think Edge has a time. That doesn't have anything to. Yeah, Edge is timeless. Well. It depends, like, what is edgy back in certain time edgy now? Maybe that's relevant? Who knows? I don't think 16 years has been long enough for the, the edge well, culture to really... Shadow the Hedgehog was, like, super Hedgehog. edgy in the... in the... when he came out. Edgy the What edgy. do you mean? He's super edgy now. Yeah. Well, I don't know... I... I guess I wonder is like has the has the edge worn off and he's just become cringe now like just hyper cringe. <laughs> like he wasn't of cringe kind of then. Cringe. <laughs> <laughs> he, always, he always was, but like that's like the implication if... of of edge though is that it's also cringe. It's both. oh, I mean, that's yeah. I guess it's not the right word I was looking for. I think it's like I don't know if embarrassing. It was trying to be no, more mainstream. Self-aware edge now, you know. It's it's almost like self-aware yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Self-awareness, I think, is probably a good way to describe a lot of it. Yeah. Um, like, like if you're self-aware, like... knowing that it's silly, that's different than oh, we're trying. Well, we're, we're trying to be so cool and edgy, but that just makes us. Maybe cringe. that's an element here, though, is that like Metro Dread is probably actually going to be legitimately uh, like tense as a game. Atmospheric and it's, okay. it's, maybe it's Metroid. What's well, Metroid? Yeah. It I would hope there's a, a, a more of a meaning to it than 
you know. I'm sure it's there just is. just a spooky sure game. There is. Not that that's wrong well, or anything, but I, I would assume they're going to have a lot of reason for it. Fucking what? Uh, I would imagine. I just well, like tried to assemble something. It pushed me off the fucking... Oh, room. you both fell off. <laughs> um, well, well, what I was going to say was that every Metroid... <laughs> Damn it. Every uh, every Metroid subtitle has had some sort of relevance to uh to the game. Like Fusion is about oh, Samus. Oh, it has the relevance uh... to the game. That's well, mean. sometimes you don't even <laughs> Wow. No, I know. I'm 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 having I'm having a jolly moment. Carry on. Yeah, that is just a funny. Well, it's bit. just cause. Metroid Fusion is about a fusion with a virus. Metroid Echo Prime is obviously about the Prime Metroid, but then, like, Echoes is, you know, two different worlds that are against each other. Corruption is obviously a lot more obvious. There is a literal corruption. Um, I guess Other M, for as shit as it is, in terms of, like, story, there is an actual meaning there. It's really shallow, but it's something. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it does mean something good besides Dread. I agree. That game looks cool, though. I'm, I'm actually, I'm quite excited for it, and it's coming out real soon. So that's, that's. But awesome. is it coming out on PC? No. It's, it's not. But you know what? That's, that's, uh, that's okay for now. Um, please make balls above Wang someone's description on the EFAP website. Well, I, I mean, that'll be at the discretion of the creators of those respective websites. If you're talking about EFAP.me, I'll be if Kibikins wants to throw that on. Most suitable person? I'm not sure who, he is, but... I feel like is. it would have to be Rags at this point, right? Balls above Wang? I've well, had a lot of balls above who, my Wang. You died laughing from that, you know? It feels like that was your thing. Oh, it's not my thing. I mean, I, I thought it was very funny. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but I will leave it up to him. If he, he could keep... Well, here's the thing. He can keep that in his pocket for later. He can he can bust That's that one true. out whenever he need whenever he needs balls over Wang. He can yeah, bust he that out whenever he needs away. it. Yeah. Perhaps we have yet to meet whoever that perfectly suits. You know. Uh, could Hadhod defeat Goliath? Well, um, you unlock that move with Hadhod where he sends like a fucking asteroid from space. Do you thing magic? <laughs> Just, it's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I feel like that could do some damage to Goliath. I'm not sure if it would kill him, though. And his defensive powers, he can take zero damage after defending himself with his stone shield or whatever it's called. So Yes. That's and mountain shield deal. applies to all of his friends. It's like, damn. Impressive, to say the least. Uh, you convinced me to buy and play through Soma. I did it completely blind and it blew me away. Definitely one of the best games I've ever played. That's Ooh, for me, good. Man. Glad you really like it. It's quite a mo uh, game. <laughs> I was thinking of Star Wars. Quite I was a like, movie. <laughs> I, my brain was like, this is a game, not a movie. Uh, but I was like, but it's basically. You do what I do then. with videos on YouTube. Yeah. I call them movies all the time for some reason. Uh, what saved E3 was Shin Megami Tensei 5. No, it was. I don't have an opinion. Shin Megami Tensei 5. Yeah. Can I really believe you over this guy for you? I'm just saying, Metroid, like a, a new sequel to Metroid, like a direct sequel, the first one in fucking like two decades. I don't know. Like that feels pretty cool to me. Was Metroid Prime 2 not a sequel to 1? Oh, well, so um the metroid prime games uh slot in between metroid one and two if i remember or i believe they slot in between one and two whereas metroid fusion is the latest one in the timeline so this is the this one will now be the latest one so it's it has been 20 years since the game has like directly progressed forward in time um yeah, and, and also, I'm pretty sure now there's, like, un thanks to Other M, it's unclear whether or not Metroid Prime is actually in canon, or if it's not its own separate thing, which is lame as fuck. Metroid Prime should absolutely be part of the main, like, timeline. I'm happy to pretend Other M isn't part of it, though. I find that really easy. Hmm. Why was Other M so, uh, so, not good? Met 
Gameplay wise, I don't care, but like, in terms of its narrative, oh boy. Like, that, that game is like, I'm not sure, like, I didn't know you could assassinate Samus, but like, man, <laughs> that game. They gave all the yeah, I, I never, like... yeah, I never really knew much about Samus, like, her character. Well, for, this will be the big, big important part, I guess, in terms of highlighting the issue. So, match by the Metroid. Oh, no, my internet has gone flu. No. Oh, there we go. My internet has been flu -y. Oh, no, it's still being flu -y. No. Oh, no. The suspense is killing us all. It's it's the internet. It's being floops. Oh no! <clears throat> I mean, you're coming through pretty clearly. Oh. Okay. Um. All I was gonna say is, I think the clearer example is, Samus has beaten Ridley. I think at this point three times at least. Uh, if not, in fact, it might have been four times. But she sees Samus and is like, Oh no, he's the big lizard who killed my family! It's like, but you've already beaten him! Like, why would this be traumatic to you? Like, you've already- you've already overcome the trauma, like, four times. Why would this fifth time suddenly be the one that gets you? Um, so what you- I feel so like you that was hate character development. This is absolutely not development. This is like just hardcore regression. It's a, it's a trauma she's clearly already overcome. Suddenly, just like weighed down by trauma again. It's weird. It doesn't make sense considering what we know about Samus. She is like an incredibly sound character in terms of like sound of mind, strong, resilient. But like all of a sudden, this one instant, she's having flashbacks to. Her. Like, her past, even though it doesn't make any sense. Also, she talks way more than she ever did. Like, in Molly, the old you're games. right. He really doesn't get sarcasm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he... <laughs> he might have just been developing his point. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. But, like, yeah, I, I seriously, like, didn't know that Samus had, like, a character. I thought she was well, sort of so this is the reason why I wasn't sure whether you were being sucked. I don't know how much you know about, like, Metroid Very little. Lore. Very, very little. Right, so... Samus is a girl I don't know why a you would... space suit, and she can turn into a little ball somehow. I don't know where her body That's goes right, during all that, but she can turn into a little ball and roll around. Up. She's curled I guess up. she does. Yes, yeah, she's very... She's she... a good curler. That Samus. Where are her organs? Oh, uh, yeah. Where are her organs? Yeah. As the organs. Well, no, the, the, the Samus organs. has character that... She does have character that comes through. Like, more so in the Metroid Prime games, she just... You get a certain sense with the way that she holds herself and, and moves and interacts with people. But, like, there is... She's just confident. That's the big thing. She's confident. She comes in, saves the day, and walks out with nothing more than a little hand wave. It's, it's actually pretty neat. Um, I, I honestly kind of prefer the look in the, in Metroid Prime where she looks like a real person. Like, yeah, she's really hot in all the subsequent things, but like, in that game she actually looks like a real person. She strikes me as like, legitimately a bounty hunter who's seen a lot of shit and is hardened. She's about to get dreaded. She is about to get dreaded, and then subsequently Prime Ford. Dre so, Dreed? Dreead. So anyway... Uh, hey Muller, is it okay if I copy some of your ideas from your videos? I'm making a WandaVision video and I want to format it like how you formatted your TFA vids. Well, I do not have a patent on, uh... What are you, the, Chronological the sort of, discussion? Well, this is the thing. I don't want to be a dick, but like, I'm not entirely clear on what you mean. If because I go through the film chronologically and then I tangent off into subjects of writing that I think the TFA is currently failing at. Um, if you meant that, go for it. Have some fun. Uh, what you don't think? Oh, dark uh, wait, sorry. It's just in chat. So the the thing with it's not 
to clarify, like, the Samus that we see now in the games, like, doesn't look like a real human being. It's a different style. It's not in the sense of, like, attractive or not. Like, the new one looks more, I guess for lack of a better word, anime-ish. Whereas, like, the, the one in Metroid Prime looks, um, more realistic. That's all. Are you saying you have an issue with anime? Not really. I actually... In, in terms of this instance, um, I I don't mind it. It's more dialed down in, in like the modern Samus case. Like it looks more real than a lot of anime-ish kind of stuff. But um, but still, I think I think in Metroid Prime One, she just looks the most realistic. I know it's sarcasm, you fucks. I just want to continue with my point. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> What's the worst instance of character regressing in power and intelligence when they switch over to the good guy's side? Hmm. It's a very specific um, type of... I'm wondering if the idea here is to find out, like, is that a common problem for bad guys becoming good guys? They often get depowered because now they have to be a part of the team that's not able to easily win sort of thing. An interesting point. I haven't really thought about it, but it could very well be true. Yeah. Um, so, that's her in Metroid Prime, right? Wait, have you posted anything? In the... Oh, whoops, never mind. I, I put it in the wrong yeah. thing. Oh boy, somebody's gonna just get that without context and be like, what's the story nah, here? It's, it's fine. Um, that's her in Metroid Prime, right? For a GameCube game, I think that's yeah, that's that's definitely the one. Just and looks more this real. Is, and I think this is her in other M. Yeah, you can see like the difference in terms of that like it's definitely not anime, it's just more stylized, I think. Or like less, it definitely doesn't look as real as one on the top. Despite the fact that one on the top is like GameCube game when they had the worst graphics. Any commentary, Rex? Yeah, is there a point? No. Like, huh. No, I, I was just, I was just, sure. just saying if those were the correct colors there. I was expecting a payoff. What I will say is that um, the bottom one makes me think of Final Fantasy. That is Fantasy. the payoff. Yeah. Yeah. As you get to see I the found the payoff things. dissatisfying, all right? I didn't want to say it, but you forced my hand. It's up to you. Naturally, I said you I. Are. It does look more like uh, Final Fantasy. Which isn't a problem. It's just that, I guess in my head, I don't connect Metroid to Final Fantasy at all. That kind of style, I mean. No, I don't. I feels like um, more gritty. For lack of a better word. Nuts and bolts. So, good old grounded bounty hunter, but also like stylistically super. Uh, I don't even know how to describe the Final Fantasy look, um, but it, it definitely feels like I, I'd say it's justified as an offshoot of anime. Well, I think it's in, in the sense that it's like it doesn't look quite like anime, but it doesn't look quite real either. Yeah. Um, it's just the way that. He that humans tend to look like you see you know in final fantasy 7 remake it's like yeah tifa's really hot but she's not real like at least i don't know that there's any human being who looks quite like that they look close but not quite like that yeah um revealing video game characters aren't real for each yeah she How looks too that. she looks too artificial like, she's a creation. Yeah. She didn't arise naturally, you know? It's just too yeah, perfect. I, too so. I feel like most of Final Fantasy characters feel that way. Yeah, they're all just too... They're too... She, she, she just falls into the unfortunate trope of female anime slash MMO human females. They're just too... They're all too perfect. Which, it's a, it's a huge I turn off because be, it's too yeah. artificial. Well... I agree with you, but I think it seems to me the majority of the world doesn't. Like, they really like it, because it's getting more and more around. It yeah, seems. yeah, which is a thing I... I... I it, it really bugs me. I know, like, all the... Like, in, in Guild Wars 2, yeah. all the human females, they're just... They're all... 
all the models are just perfectly Immaculate. beautiful and, and slender, perfectly proportioned, and it's all just ugh. It just turns my fucking stomach. I think it's just um, I do like when characters look like real people. Um, yeah. I, I, well, like she unless like you go an full cartoon or something. Yeah. Whereas like. I guess that's what I mean is like I would prefer to have Metroid Prime 1 Samus where it's like she is attractive still but like within the bounds of reality like she looks like a person who could actually exist and actually looks like the kind of person I guess who would you know fit the 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 bill more like you would expect probably that Samus would actually be like pretty battle hardened might yeah, have she'd be and stuff, strong and, how and much kind of stuff she deals with. Yeah, she'd be strong. Uh, she'd, you know, big scars, well, I think there's you know, the rough face. Find the image. There's a short Metroid one like that, that yeah. drawing. Um, Samus. It's the illustration. It feels like ah, damn it! No, that's not the one. There it is. Um, I always like this one. This feels like. In terms of, I guess, the, the look. This one, too symmetrical. <laughs> God, it's such a cool looking suit. So cool. She's got a long neck. It's so unique. Wow, she's six foot two, I believe. She's, uh, she's quite tall. Mainly neck. Oh, uh, it's not mainly neck. There's a uh, there's a I decent amount of just like. Oh. oh, maybe. But I. Oh, you actually in this drawing. Oh, why did you point that out? Now I can't not see that. Now I can't not see the long neck. Sorry, I objectify women often. So we'll go on to this it's podcast. This is really cool. We needed it. Suit. Um, what? You don't think Doc Pictures House of Ashes was the best part of E3? Jokes aside, Replaced looks pretty cool. Replaced? I don't know what that is. Oh, is it the, um, it's like this pixel art, uh, cyber... Yeah, it does look neat. Oh, I, th I think I've heard of that, yeah. Um... But, um, yeah, so, House of Ashes, do you guys exciting. remember a? Uh, do you remember the trailer for that game, The Last Night, that came out like four years ago? No, I believe so. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. It looks similar to that in style, except this game's going to come out sooner, seemingly. So, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, it looked amazing, um, but Cyberpunk I'm not sure what's been happening yeah. for the last few years. Yeah. Um, what's the worst instance of a character? Oh wait, yeah. Um, I I guess we didn't necessarily answer that because I'm I'm just not 100 percent sure. I'd have to think of a bunch of examples. Um, I'm not sure either. Power and intelligence. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to think about all the examples of it. Um, uh, what about Ching Chong Ping Pong or Wing Pong? I don't know what uh -oh. that was a question for, but it's probably close to TOS. It's a I understand where Rax is coming from, but at the same time, I don't agree with this mainstream push to make unappealing female characters is what you should like. What? That is that what? is quite the insane leap based I on what I, I said. I was about to say, like, you got that from, but then my brain was like, no. <laughs> I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> it's just too much of a leap, that one. Yeah, it's that's the idea what of just making people leap. who look like real people. Yeah, which I everyone... have no problem at all. Yeah, there's too many, especially there when there's this cookie cutter and mass and MMOs yeah. and stuff of these just android perfection level, perfectly proportioned, slender uh, the w characters in MMOs. It's just doubly weird considering that they they're holding these massive great swords and s stuff like that. It's, it's really it's huge immersion breaker, and it's just they don't look. They look too perfect to be attractive, if that makes sense. They just look artificial. They I don't look absolutely. Real. 
I absolutely. It's when like I look at porn, traffic. it's like all amateur stuff. I, I don't watch professional porn because it's just too. It's too perfect. Oh, it's too well, right. It's it's to, not. Uh, it doesn't feel real. To, to, I guess to to bring it back to uh to to examples within video games, it would be like um. I I find it more plausible to look at like a character and I don't know like Uncharted for instance it's like oh these are like real people and and it's funny because like you look at something like Nathan Drake it's like well he's attractive it's like yeah but I still I I believe he exists more than I can believe in like the existence of a cloud you know or like um or like yeah any these anime of people are just no, I don't believe that they're real like, they're just too Nate has imperfections and so does like Elena and Sc and Sully and and uh and um Chloe it's just like, yeah, the I, they're still attractive, but like I believe in their existence because they have, like, just features that exist in reality. Like I don't, it's they look normal. I can believe. Yeah, Nathan Drake is a handsome guy. Yeah, yeah, but he ain't like fucking like perfect. Like that, and part of what makes it easier to sort of buy into that character is just he's an everyman, even though he is like definitely a handsome man. He's still an everyman. Yeah, he's a very attractive guy, but he's not like silly attractive. Yeah, basically. Um, Other M was a non canon origin manga just as a game. Yeah, I'm happy to I'm happy to trade it like in my head, but I'm pretty sure it is like just canon, unfortunately. The only canon I want in Metroid is on Samus's right arm. Tom. Oh ho ho. Isn't Samus's body like Robocops at this point in dread? Uh no, I think it's, um, because, like, the suit is... That's uh, complicated. <laughs> but, like, she's genetically... But she's not, like, part robot. Or at least I'm pretty sure she's not part robot. Cyborg. Um, it's complicated, because, like, the suit is, like... Well, the suit is almost magical in a certain sense. It's, uh... It's not, but it's, like, sci-fi magic, you know? Or, like, sci-fi tech that's basically magic. <clears throat> uh, have you massive watched Invincible yet? No. no. And I don't care. Why, I don't think you Why don't you care? I just don't care. I don't know why I don't care. I just know that I don't really care. I mean, I don't care, My but there's also plenty of things I watch that I don't care about. Like, I, I just don't see myself watching Invincible. Maybe when season two comes around and everyone's ranting and raving about how amazing that is, we can finally watch season one in safety. Or maybe they'll hate season two, and then we'll finally watch season one. Well, let's see if this was the good one. Kind of remind me of uh, other shows that go through that. Like there was a lot of people saying Mandalorian season one was the good one, and season two was the bad one. But then again, there are a lot of people. It'd also be a great show. I don't. Y'all don't like animation. Please tell me you, you forgot to put the cap of face on Man. the end of that. Please. Oh, see, look, you pissed Freggy off. Oh, he left. Uh, oh, good. I don't... So I just looked up images for Metroid Dread. Not a fan of the suit. Ringy? I haven't actually seen it, so... We just cut out... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll post a picture of it. You need Smug Ross for that. Yeah, like, guys, you gotta put something in text. A little winky face. A little... A, a plumbus, like anything that can indicate that you you definitely aren't serious. Oh, are you posting the new out the new uh, uh the new not, cool. Not really a fan, not gonna lie. Oh, dude, I I li I really like the new suit. I think I think it's awesome. What don't you like about it? I don't like the colors a lot at all. I I don't like the colors. Um. I don't like the All the right, little the blue veiny kind of things on it. Um, it looks like tendons or the the 
like on her leg there, on her right leg, and underneath the breastplate, there's like that more fluidy s stuff. I, I don't know. It just seems like it. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like the the light blue, white, green, red, and then the dark green gun color. It just doesn't look good. Enough. I, uh, I, I do like, uh, I like it a lot. I think it's neat. Yeah, I mean, I, looking at it, I think it looks cool. I don't really have many strong feelings about it, though. Well, it feels like a sort of, um, moving on from the, it, it feels like an evolution of the fusion suit. That's, that's kind of the impression. Now you get what I'll look at it. Like, I can see how you can move from the fusion suit to that. Um, since none of you had feelings about Lynch, how about Kubrick? You, uh, was he a genius filmmaker, and why is 2001 the most ingenious film ever made? Also, hi, Ra. Oh, it's Ra, right? Yeah, I don't know if that was for Ra or for you, who knows? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, um, I've never been oh, passionate no, about so any... Some... Kubrick films, um, except The Shining. Maybe. I thought The Shining was pretty awesome. I've but, like, not seen The Shining. 2001's a film where I was like, that was pretty good. But, um, these aren't really films that I tend to cite, and they're not films that I am in love with, you know? Uh, I still think he's a very talented director. That's oh, yeah. Much the long and short of my perspective on him. So I do, like, a strong rewatch of all this stuff. Why are people saying, ah, get annoyed with the comments on the suit? Blue and orange are complementary colors, so they ca they just don't clash. Like, they just um, don't. Um, I can understand if you don't ever, like blue and it's orange, but red. please don't say they clash. It's, well, it's, it's red. It's, it's yeah, to be clear, red, it is red. It's the lightness of the blue. It, it does, I it, it think it's the lightness of the blue with the... With the white, just how it all comes together with the green lighting, I just, I just don't like it. I, if that was a, man, if like that I was just, a skin, I would not wear that for my character. I feel like when you take the elements in isolation, they match quite well, and then when you put them together, they do feel like different parts of the suit. Like I don't really, like I, I, I put the blue and the white together and the green and the red together, like almost separately, and those combinations work really well, I think. Um, I think Paul's it's, I just got think the big, the biggest glow on there, maybe apart from her visor, is the the shoulder pads that have the the green glow. Yeah, on no, the no, white I know blue. the shoulders got it. But they have that yeah, matte kind of look. It's it. and then and then she has the yellow light on her gun, not the green light. So that's, right. that's got... and then the yellow and the dark green. I just, I just don't don't like it. Don't like the don't like the aesthetics. I okay. I I feel like it's just impasse time because I just I really like it. All right then. Uh, new meme fap when? I'll so back. I'll need coffee. That will be out tomorrow. Um. At a, at the usual-ish time for these sorts of videos coming out. How many studs do you get for that? Is it 100,000 or 50? Because Minikit Detect is going to be helpful, but... Man, does it take a while to get 2 million studs. Finally done with this level dice. Yeah, I know, right? Bum, 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 bum. Uh, Chris Redfield punching a boulder in RE5 is the greatest moment in all of gaming. It's up there. I'll say that. Definitely a pro gamer move. That's the kind of thing I'd want to make if I ever made like a top 10 video. Top 10 gaming moments and that, that's like one of them, but describing it earnestly and like how in the narrative it matches everything he's fought for and everyone, everything that represents who he is. Well, what I know is that if you edit it well enough, people will totally, yeah, they'll, <laughs> they'll buy it. Give it good visuals and that'll be that. Yeah. Um, what I want to play as... I'm gonna keep sticking with Django. The Frongle, the Longle, and the Dongle, the three blind musketeers of objectivity, do daring dastardly doth dangerous doom, the trevely triad trickled troubled travelers trustingly 
Tranquilized traditions, tropically tracked, triumphantly true. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um. Suggestion for a game to play in the background. Alien vs. Predator 3. The story is wacky, but the gameplay is fun. Um, we shall Maybe see. Alien vs. Predator 3? Mm hmm. Hmm. I think that was the last one before the 2010 one. The one on 360 that was just called AVP, I think. Yeah, I remember that one. I played that a bit. I have a fun memory of that. This is, like, very much peak my investment in Alien as a franchise and just was really excited for this game, so I thought it looked really good. I yeah, was good um, over a friend's house when the demo released for 360. Uh, not a friend's house, sorry, a family, like, like an aunt's house, I think. Um, my 360 wasn't there. And um, it was, uh, I think I called a friend because there was nothing technologically I could do at this person's place because they, they didn't have that kind of stuff except maybe a TV. And uh, the demo came out that night and I was really sad that I couldn't play it. And I remember talking to him for a bit and then they were like, you could tell in the conversation, they were like, so uh, when's this ending? Even after like five minutes on the photo, I was like, oh man, are you uh, looking to get back to thingy? And I could keep hearing like, what would turn out to be pause menu, non-pause menu, and I heard the fucking tracker sound from Aliens. And I was like, oh, they have, they have, like, game accurate, movie accurate sounds and stuff? He was like, yeah. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I wanna play it. I, um, I quite enjoyed that game. I don't know if I'd call it good, though. Just, uh, yeah, I'm not sure myself. It might be, it might not be. I just can't remember enough to make a judgment on that. I just remember uh, there was the sort of team arena combat shit where you could play as alien, predator, or marine. And uh, mm -hmm. if it were low population, you're going to want to be predator. Um, unless you're a really good fucking alien player. Like, it, I think alien's skill ceiling was really high, but predators were pretty easy to just win with because you get the plasma caster, That's you dominate. That's because they could be on the ceiling. Yes. Beautiful. And, um, but the thing was, if there was a lot of people in the server, the one you want is the Marine. He was, uh, he outclassed them all because of his plasma, sorry, his, um, his pulse rifle. The fucking thing was OP as hell. But it needed to be because <laughs> otherwise how do you balance this shit? Like, who wants to play as the Marine when you got Alien and Predator, you know? But, uh, he was nifty. He could gun down, like, five of them in a row while I the I bet others... Marine was probably the most played character. Um... I'm not sure about that. From memory, I thought it was Alien. Um, there was a lot of really good Alien players out there. And Alien had like, I think it was, you could argue it was a bug where Alien could uh, sort of like run on screen, charge a heavy attack, I think, stagger you before you'd even know they existed and then insta-kill you. Um, these are all running off very, very limited memories though. Ringy died again. Oh, sorry. Uh, all I have left to look forward to is Percy Jackson on Disney Plus, and only because Reardon is writing that show. Rip good writing, nobody knows what it is anymore. Well, fuck, I hope that's good. Yes. I wouldn't pretend to have any clue. Uh, not sure if this is still relevant for you, but the YouTuber G.I.G.O. unironically defended the ending of Crisis on Infinitisms in one of his videos. Might be worth checking out in a mini fap or something. Why? So, it's so fucking bonkers and nuts, and I don't have really any investment at all in explaining to people just the 1 out of 10 garbage that is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah. And their super in their, their showdown to save the cosmos in a gravel pit outside of Vancouver. <laughs> I just don't, I just don't have any. It's, it's, it's such stupid. Watch our video on it if you want. If you haven't seen it, we have an EFAP where we watch Crisis on Infinite Earths. And, um, and, and it's just, it's just, what is There's that? There's an unironic what line, is, is the planet evacuated? It's like, <laughs> dude. And then he fights some ghosts on the rooftop of Vancouver, and it saves an additional billion lives. Like, what the hell? I like the idea. They just throw like, it in at the end, yeah. The rooftop yeah. of Vancouver, as if it's like, oh, there's one rooftop in Vancouver. There's only... The one rooftop. Every other building in Vancouver has no roof. It just lets all the <laughs> rain in. 
Um, yeah, he fought to his last breath. That was a, a direct. He quote. fought to his last breath. I <laughs> estimate that he over a billion lives were saved. It's like, no, he just fought on top of a rooftop punching ghosts for four have, extra minutes. He didn't have ammo. Remember? Like, what yeah, was he, he gonna do? Not the, not the he ran out of ammo. Yeah, he ran out of ammo because he brings air. He bre he uses arrows. Well, remember, so he, he did it between ammo. shots as well. Uh, it went from full to. Zero. He doesn't even no, have, yeah. yeah, like, you'd think he'd have a pistol on backup or something, even if you are an arrow man. But, um, yeah, like, like, why would arrows even work on ghosts? I don't know. You could punch him. Batwoman was out there punching him. She them. was. It was. She was doing she was great. Out there. She was out there. She was the, yeah. Remember, we were she rooting for her. Courage, right? It's like when, you know, you're picking a team, and you're like, oh, I'm Team Iron Man or something. You're like, I was Team Batwoman. I wanted her to beat the most ghosts. Dominate. Show them lads how it's done. You know what? She kind of did. And remember when they, the weird, the, the Atom Man or whatever powered up her, her Batarang? That was oh, real, yeah. that was real cool. Atom Man. Oh yeah, Throw the- Throw like yeah. a girl. And then Throw she did. Like a girl, yeah. <laughs> and then she did she did, to yeah, like she threw it like a girl. So, weaker than a man, I guess. And, uh, Sometimes I wonder about that sort of thing. Like, if someone, you know, for all I know, likelihood-wise, it's happening right now. Like, someone just happens to see one video of us carrying a movie or show episode, whatever. And they're like, oh, I wonder if they've got any more of this. <laughs> Just like, how long would it take someone to get through our entire backlog of reacting to shitty movies and shitty TV shows? Hmm. That catalog is getting fatter and fatter. How do I get up there? Oh, probably how. Punch your ghost sounds like some pretentious life advice, yeah. Punch That's just combat maneuvers in Crisis, so... But yeah, punch your ghosts. Kill them if you have to. <laughs> it's just really not helpful. It's like, my ghost, how do I punch it? It's, it's, I can't. It's a ghost. It's like, well, that's your fault. You need to come Man. to my next seminar. It costs $6,000, but <laughs> I'm giving you a special discount. It's only $3,000 if you sign up in oh, the next no. 30 minutes. My hand, it go through the ghost. Oh no. And what, this is Luigi's Mansion 4, punch the ghosts, and just Luigi's oh. Like, oh no, uh, my I'm hand is not going oh. through the ghost. No, I sound more, suck more them. like Mario. Why suck them when I can punch them? Luigi's more like, ah, Luigi. No, that sounds like War Luigi. <laughs> hey, you know, he could, was like, Wall Luigi's Mansion, I could be. Wall Luigi's Mansion, that's the spin off. Wario's being kidnapped by ghosts, and Wall Luigi <laughs> comes in to beat the shit out of them. He has a crowbar, that's his weapon, he breaks their legs. <laughs> he just beats the ghost. <laughs> to death. Like, the, the first <laughs> example is just a ghost is like, sitting in his study, you know, the dad ghost or whatever. And like, Waluigi comes in and hits both his kneecaps with the crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> He's just crawling across the floor. He pulls out his Tommy gun and just sticks it in his mouth. It's like, wah, ah, 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 now give, give me the money. You know, it's the thing, at the end of the game, you can choose to, like, save Wario and sacrifice, a, like, a sack of money, but... Or, yeah, but no, they wouldn't give you the choice, because... No, it wouldn't well, be wait, a choice. No, he's not... <laughs> it wouldn't be a choice, yeah. Um... Life has been really rough, Sorry. and I commonly struggle with continuing, but you guys make it slightly easier, so thank oh. you. Bye. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to hear that. I hope things get better for you, though, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, me too. Making you so sad. Work out. Oh, yeah. Uh, hope you're doing better rather than the alternative. And, yeah, we Definitely like, we, want we you like. to find something that you enjoy. Something that you, uh, you enjoy doing. Fills up your days well. Mm. No worries. You can think of us as a fixture. We'll be around for a long time. What's funny now is that the fucking unreleased EFAP content is getting larger and larger every day. Yeah. The backlog just keeps it's growing, huge. so even if we were all to die in a fire, there'd still be a lot of content <laughs> so this is to come out. true. You'd have a lot of EFAP content to come if we all died still. I think we're like five episodes behind on Batwoman, all of the Resident Evil movies, about eight war movie-ish things, a couple of random movies, um, and then a meme fab. Uh, I think there's a couple more things as well, but I'd have to actually check just my folder for it, so I'm not even sure anymore. We're getting there. Um, uh, if I didn't know any better, I'd say all the melted Super Chats might be a little annoying to EFAP. I had to say this, of course, or else I'd be melted. 
Dun, yeah, dun, there we go. Dun. You know what? I mean, you guys oh, can yeah. super chat about being melted all day if you want to. It's fine with me. In fact, they're usually easier for us because um, I can read them, acknowledge the joke, and then we move on instead of discussing Teletubbies for half an hour. Yeah. It's really, mm -hmm. um, but then again, which of those has more content in it? And it's like, I think we know the answer. Man, I don't know. I was expecting to buy characters with like huge jumps, but now I don't know because not even Jar Jar has big jump. Well, who has the biggest jump in this one? I don't think Super. I think it was called Super Jump. It was like an ability in the previous game. Jar Jar had it and the uh, Magna Guard had it, but Jar Jar, I played as him in the previous level. He didn't have a dupe Super Jump. He has the same jump as Vader. So now I'm like, what's going on? Did they remove Super Jump? Have they nerfed Jar Jar? Maybe they have. They realize that their mistake. Could you really call it a mistake? <clears throat> to yeah. power up Jar Jar? I feel like that's just the way it should be. You know, if you say so. Um, this is what I thought. It got nerfed. Yeah, it got nerfed. To deal with it. Uh, your thoughts on how us non-reviewers contribute, continue to support franchises like Star Wars and Marvel by watching it, despite knowing the high probability of poor writing with a, an agenda will bother us? Basically, our watching to see how bad it is only makes more. I really doubt that. Um, I think that with every time we cover an MCU property or movie, and this goes for Batwoman, but I mean, who cares at this point? Um, more and more people in the audience feel that there's less and less fucking hope for the MCU and they're getting more and more upset. Um, also, without yeah, us seeing it, we cannot tell people why it is shit and we should not be encouraging it. Um, if we And that, that's kind of worse for us, right? If they release Loki and we hadn't seen it, and then they're like, someone's like, I love this show, it's amazing. Um, EFAB lads, what do you think? And we go, I don't know, it could be good. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, if we if we watch something and we can convince if the three of us watch something and we can convince four people who were curious about it to not see it, then we've done the world a service. And let me tell you, fucking not only in freaking metal streams, I see like more casual messages like that, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it just in EFAP streams, not in super chats, but just people saying like, oh, I was going to check it out, but I guess not. It's like, yeah, I fucking well, I wouldn't recommend Loki in a million years. That show is designed to piss you off if you're a fan of the MCU. Well, yeah, there's a lot of... because it's, it's... it's... it's actually pretty rare to find stuff that's bad that I would want to watch. Like, Batwoman is... is rare. That's uncommon. A lot of the time, bad is just frustrating, annoying, Yeah, sad, it's fine in boring. doses. Like, we... Yeah. if... especially if you're alone, it's miserable, but... Oh, like, it was yeah. fun to watch Cruella with a bunch yeah, of other people yeah. making fun of it. Like, that was enjoyable. Conversely, but watching, watching Army of Army of the Dead yeah. alone would have been misery. Dude, it was bad and... enough with friends, that one. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Because I don't um, like... I don't tend to like have a metric for this, but there is a there is a serious difference. Like there are films that I love watching with people, and then there are films where I'm like, that would have been fucking impossible to watch on my own, and with friends it still didn't quite work. And so you know, like because I often say like watch it with friends when I talk about bad stuff. Some things aren't even like they don't even earn that, and at that point it's like, what did what did it do? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say. Army of the Dead I is think, definitely one of them, though. There, are... I I I feel like it's just a lot of stuff that's just hard to watch sometimes. Like BoJack, you remember that? That wasn't fun. Like as it dragged on, it was getting miserable. Yeah, well, you and I have. And, and Rags and I have watched a lot of shows that I fucking find to be... Yeah. I think shows more than movies, because uh, those movies, man, They're they have long. limits. They can't go for long. But shows, Whereas when you're you staring down... Season, yeah, when you're staring down another three seasons after deciding you're done, you're like, oof. Well, but imagine if you're just, like, staring down the rest of the season. <laughs> like, you... It's yeah, just like, not fun. Do you mean like if you were to watch the first episode of a show and mm. decide yeah, it's fucking garbage? Yeah, you know, yeah. And then no, you have like, I don't know, 12 episodes left, something like that. Yeah, and it's just hell. <laughs> Absolutely just like, hell. Fuck. Especially with every single episode being as good as you expected. Fucking painful. Yeah. It's crap. Really Nobody crap. would enjoy an experience like that. But then again, there are some, like Batwoman, where you sort of... Especially, in, that is a key thing that Rags just mentioned, the, uh, the doses thing. Um, mm. I don't think Batman would work if we all watched it all in a row. 
No, I think that'd uh, be no, hell. Oh, yeah. We need to, like, forget <laughs> what Batwoman's tropes are a little bit, you know? Yeah, well, it's good was... to watch one and then, like, you watch an episode, it's 30, 40 minutes or whatever, and then next week you watch another. You know, you get it in a nice steady stream, or, or not a stream, but, like, you, little, a little bit here and there. A little bit here and there. Um, yeah. Unlike, but, for like, instance, in BoJack, the Snyder where... Cut. Wow, yeah, the Snyder Cut was a good example. Well, but it's I funny. always feel Snyder Cut and Army of the Dead would be two examples where I think that's the worst time I've had while watching stuff with, with friends. It's still a good time for the most part, but those two really tested the limits of it. Yeah. yeah. My god. <laughs> Did they test Fucking the miserable limits? experiences. I was just going to say, like, in terms of the whole getting doses, when we were watching Bojack, the big thing that became intolerable was how formulaic the joke structure was. Yeah. When you watch the whole show in, like, a week, you can't not see it, and it becomes hell. It's like, oh, there's our alliteration for the episode. Oh, wait, no, sorry, there's four of those. Oh, wait, <laughs> there's our long name for the episode. No, there'll be a few more of those. Wait, there's our pun. Yay, another pun. Oh, another one. Wow. It's just, it gets tough. Whereas with Bat, I feel like Batwoman has, I, I feel like I could watch four or five episodes and still be having fun. But that would be pushing it, I think. Oh, the Magna God still only has a single jump, but I don't think it's as big as it was in the first game. Look at him go, though. Yeah, all right. I think, I think that, that looks to be bigger than Luke's jump. Looks, looks bigger to me. Yeah. Oh my god, this sucks. Magna Guards can't build Lego. Those poor guys. Do wow. you need a soul to build Lego? Is that how it works? I, well, can General Grievous build Legos? I would, I would test that, but I with don't that have many, them. He better if with all those arms he's got. Yeah, with all those arms, you think he'd be an expert <laughs> at Lego. Um... And yeah, sort of to close off that super chat then as well, what I would say is um, we don't know that Loki was going to be bad. We didn't know, sorry. Uh, we didn't know that WandaVision was... In fact, we were probably positive about WandaVision. Um, At first, yeah. So like, you know, the idea of uh, Hawkeye. It's like, should you guys avoid Hawkeye considering how bad the other shows have been? It's like, there's no reason Hawkeye can't be good. Mm. Unfortunately, it's There's no reason why be. anything couldn't be good. Like, the reality is, is that there's no reason... Like... In an ideal world, I could go into Doctor Strange 2 and be like, oh, they're gonna, like, actually address the stuff with Wanda. Like, that is gonna be a factor. And then I wouldn't have to worry. But the problem is that there's just external information, which is I don't trust the people who are working on these projects. And kind of the same for, like, all of the Marvel stuff and, like, a lot of the Star Wars stuff. I just don't... I don't have any faith. So I know Dutch would be really mad at me, but I'm sorry, Dutch. Like, just, I don't have faith. Uh, Muller, are you aware that your newest video is under an hour long? Did Moopa hack your account again? Did Gadelb season come early? I'm so sorry. Yeah. You know, it's just sometimes, sometimes you can, you can actually be competent, you know? Uh, my videos were only long because I'm a very bad editor, as I've been told, and I don't know how to reduce my scripts. This time I was a good editor, and we can tell this because there's a certain amount of time you're supposed to have videos be. Um, that guy came out with a tweet the other day. You have to have it be two-thirds at most. It has to be at least, it, like at most it's, it's two-thirds of the uh, the content. And I believe the father was an hour and a half, and my video was an hour, so. Um, it's just pretty neat to finally have the answer, because uh, we on EFAB have been asking for it for a while. Obviously, we don't know. Um, uh, in the case of Star Wars, if you think about it, right, this, this podcast, I think we'd have to go with Star Wars since I'm playing the Lego Star Wars. That's what we have to go from. You have to combine all all nine mainline movies. That's what you have to do. And then from there, how long are we allowed to be? I think our cap is something like an hour and a half uh, times nine. I think something like that. Around about that. So so yeah, we should be okay. We're still under it. So this will be a well edited podcast. Um, but it's good to know that. That's how it, that's how you tell. Uh, what's up with EFAPs being out of order? I'm confused. Metal uploaded the last EFAP gaming months before you. Well, they're not out of order. In fact, the reason that they come out so late is that they're in order. Um, I'm trying to release them staggered, not all in like a big cluster. Um, so they'll catch up eventually, but I'm not too far behind. I think I'm like, <laughs> I say not too far. I think there's five. There used to be more, so we're, we're getting there. 
But uh, yeah, Mootle gets his out the day that they're made. Um, they're all transferred, I think, over from good old Twitch. But uh, what delays for this sometimes as well is that I can have difficulties on, on my end for the videos uploading. Whenever they're over about five or six hours, YouTube can sometimes decide they just can't process. Um, haven't been able to get a consistent solution to that, unfortunately. So sometimes you get the EFAP that we did on the Saturday literally out on the Sunday. Sometimes it takes up until like the day before the next EFAP goes live. It's um, really annoying. Hey gang, would you say time travel is one of the hardest genres to find well written? How would you write a time travel story? I wouldn't. I don't know. Probably wouldn't, uh, unless I was... Yeah, I'd definitely like, avoid it. Um... I don't know what I would get out of a time travel story in terms of payoffs like for character stuff that I wouldn't just try and do in something else. Um, I think I would almost only ever do a time travel story for the challenge. Or a parody. Oh, I would totally throw it in like a comedic thing. It could be pretty funny. It would allow you to get all kinds of shenanigans. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be, it'd be a, I'd probably write a character thing about if, uh, if someone can travel through time and they can do as many things over as they want and redo as many things as they desire and you know that they lose uh, this and honestly i you know just hold that thought i i'm just getting too tired to get into things yeah it's a, so. it's a bit of a big subject as well to be like what would you guys make the story about it's like oof. probably try and use the fact that it's time travel to your advantage just the fact that take you take you to all different kinds of places get a character that can react to a lot of that. Also, those skeletons make annoying noises. They must die for it. Freaking bones. Um, if time tra oh, if time lords can time travel, then how is the doctor the last time lord? What does last mean to a time traveler? Well, this is the thing. To understand that, you have to fucking look into all the Doctor Who lore. From my understanding, his whole race got killed in a war. But you'd have to wonder, it's like, were none of them off-willed? This Did you not go back in time and snatch a few up? Ah, well, that's that's the, that's the the question that they address in Doctor Who by saying there are fixed points in time. You cannot change certain events because they'll have. I don't even think I remember talking to Jay about this. I don't know if there is an actual explanation beyond that, like why are and they fixed and why do they have to be fixed points for? Points that the plot needs to have happen. Those well, typically, the they'll say stuff like apocalyptic events are fixed points in time. You can't change them, and the implication. I thought was that they have such an influence on how everything turns out that changing it is like too significant. But then again, you'd be like, well, doesn't that apply to everything? I think they've avoided giving that reasoning. I'm not sure. So there's going to be a Doctor Who expert who knows that they did or didn't say that. Yeah, and what makes what you know what makes you know what's the difference yeah. between an a event that's important and an event that's not important? You know what what determines something? You know why is the destruction of one planet more important than just, I don't know, just a rock rolling down a hill somewhere. Exactly. Are you really supposed to jump on top of these things? Because I am not finding it easy. Also, I also think that's lame as a Lego puzzle that you can accidentally lock yourself out of it for the whole level, because annoying. Also, the Tusken Raiders can actually go eat a dick. They are sucking annoying. Trying to you figure out a puzzle. You should go to the village and kill them all with a lightsaber. The, the children as well, or just... Oh, yeah, you don't want them to... Yeah, you don't want them to cause issues in the future. True. It's like Kill Bill. Remember that, Rex? When she, like, once you grow up, and you still want to get... Like, you still roll about what happened, you can come find me. And have a fight. To the, the kid or the person she killed. This doesn't. Uh, I really. I'm actually getting annoyed with the Tuscan Raiders. Can you fuck off? Why would they make it in a place where I've got to do floopy puzzles that they're an infinite spawn? Kill yourselves. In a video to, game. Well, it, it is a video game. For me. Well, I need to clarify that. I, it's just. I feel like it's important to clarify, just in case, you know. In case the YouTube gods are listening. Yeah. I'm like, why? What do you hate? Are you hating Tuscan Raiders? What the fuck? I like the idea that YouTube gods are just like. Just human beings, but with the play button for heads. <laughs> <laughs> like the diamond is the diamond for ten million, right? Or is there a, is there one for a hundred million now as well? Because there's one hundred thousand. I I I'm the odd one out in this group. I don't have that one. <laughs> and then you have the uh, 
the the um the gold one and then there's a diamond one um but is there a hundred million subs one surely there is let's see yeah there is oh there's a 50 million and a hundred million one yeah, i think you has got both of them right yeah well he'd yeah he'd have all all uh all five of them and t-series would too i guess and nobody <laughs> else i think nobody else i think uh i don't think there's anybody else who has over a hundred million I wonder if they're gonna have one for a billion, because that seems like inevitable. Yeah, one day, surely. God. Raider spawns end when you set up the radar. Alright. God, they're annoying. Someone's saying, is it possible for Ben Kenobi to be the one you need in this? Is it Seriously? Like, I had him in the campaign. I don't think he would have been the solution. But like this, I swear to God, like the fact that you slide on it, this can't possibly be it, right? Like there was me thinking we had loads of Lego experts in the chat, but I was wrong. Fringy and Jay were competing for the hot host spot since episode 60. It took Fringy 80 episodes, but you finally beat Jay. Congratulations, Fringleton. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Oh, thanks. Ben jumps the highest. That might be true, but I, I I don't know that I wouldn't have tried that in the campaign, I mean. Why would the old dude jump the highest? He's got the force, and it makes old people jump really high. Oh. Judging from the movies, I mean. Jump again, my wonderful droid. Um... I don't think that's it, it's been too long. Pretty sure you have to get the opposite side somehow, use R2, fly across. I figured you'd get to this area by getting to that area first. But, um... Bye. Oh. Uh, if Schrodinger's cat is alive, it gets melted. If Schrodinger's cat is dead, it gets melted. Oh. God, I think you got a point there. That cat's existence is not a fun one. It's yeah. Big, yeah. I bet at Schrodinger's funeral, he had a closed casket, casket just to fuck with people. <laughs> yeah, he probably did, actually. You'd want to install, like, as part of the will, you'd be like, can you install a knocker inside the, uh, the coffin? It goes off at random intervals. Just to trick- yeah, that- that- god, that'd be really funny, actually. What if there's any legal I, things I, with that, like, you can't? Is it- Ah, uh, that'd be scaring lame. the shit out of people, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a small price to pay in the pursuit of science, like, you know? Hidden entrance before this area. The one thing I forgot to fucking try was Django. Um, in the in the first game, if you go across, as, as you guys saw me point out, because it frustrated the hell out of me, you can't go across chasms with a jetpack, even though you should be able to, reasonably. I think you can in this one. They fixed it. Which means we could get over to that area that I blew open. I think. Whoa. Muller is the true steel, rags is pure iron, black and hard and strong, yes, but brittle the way iron gets. He'll break before he bends. And metal, that one, he's copper, bright and shiny, pretty to look at, but nothing worth that much at all at the end of the day. Wow. Wow. Or wow. metal. <laughs> now, the more well, he... are, are, you, are you saying that Muller's steel will test my metal? Perhaps. And then I could be like, wow, you own metal? How much did he cost? Wait, I can't even get over there with Django, can I? Like, I don't have any, it. Like, test my metal in the TTO. Yeah, That's but I choose to interpret it the other way. Okay, I just, I thought that was... Oh, come on. So that does that get me anywhere? Probably not. Molly, you massive bundle of sticks. Lucky me catching you live. Love your work. Efaf's keeping me sane these days. Would love to shoot the shit with you and the toxic brood one day. Sending you and the gang the big gay. That's not. Nice. I think everybody could use a bit of the big gay here and there. You can toss the detonator as you're flying. Well, that would require me to have a flying character. 
Oh wait, R2D2 can fly. <laughs> oh my god, finally the mystery has been solved. Someone said, I object to the idea that metal is bright and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's fair. Uh. Man, I'm I'm getting really tired, so I don't know if I can go on much longer. I just wanna um sit here for how long have we been going? We've been seven hours about? Been a good while. While? The more I hear you talk about Loki, it sounds more and more like the TVA is the MCU version of Fate Grand Orders Chad. Chalde? Chaldea? Uh, where they exist in a magic time bubble in a, bubble in a justifi justificated contrivance? You mean justified contrivance? Justificated? No, I like justificated. To have absurd matchups in a fighting game. It's kind of dumb. Well, you can at least appreciate it if it's for some silly payoffs that are fun, you know. Like, like the idea of time police could be cool. Like, oh my goodness, uh, we're we're trying to do something or other, and we, I, I don't know, like, you could, like, maybe they, they only have a jurisdiction over a certain area, or uh, if you have to have time travel bullshit, I mean, there's just so many different ways um, to do it that don't involve this. They, like, they did the worst thing possible. I mean, it wasn't even interesting as far as I'm concerned, because we don't even understand what the fuck they're doing. Like, oh, we're good, and we, we do our best to stop some weird you know things from happening, but there's only so many of us, and so we can't stop really, really big stuff without really knocking the timeline out. But, you know, little things, you know, it doesn't really impact much, these little things, and, you know... It, some I don't know, like, uh, or, or 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 if people find ways to time travel, we go back and we stop them, you know, things like that, you know, like. But you, we've already we already have acceptable time travel, I guess, because of the Avengers. So you're, ugh, I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, hello, Boobschley, Fringleson, and Hi Rags. Would you be interested in an EFAP <gasps> movies Godzilla response? Uh, Fat movies so the, Godzilla response. The only one we've done is King of the Monsters, and if you mean a response to our coverage of King of the Monsters, I, I'll, I'll be no, honest with you. No, because I, we're right. Yeah, well, that not even is, that. I fucking forgot most of King of the Monsters absurd. at this point. Yeah, the plot and characters of that were fucking absurd, and that movie was shit. Remember when the most important piece of technology they have, the Orca, they just sort of leave it on a desk, and then the girl just escapes with it to another city or some yeah. shit. Yeah, she just gets it and leaves. Oh, there was so much in that. I wish Charles Dance killed everybody. Okay, there, I said it. He made some speech while doing it. Um, watch Invincible if you want to watch WandaVision. Not sure. So, Wait, oh, you mean go. like instead of watching Wa mean, uh, WandaVision, you watch uh, Invincible? I would stake... A, a New York dollar that it is better than Loki, but I don't yeah, know why probably. they would connect. Hmm. Like why would? Yeah, they seem like they'd be two different. I guess they're superhero related. Kind of, yeah. They're both kind of, yeah, yeah. I guess you could you could say that. Um, sure. I, the, the the lesson here is don't watch Wandavision. Division. It's incredibly fucking disappointing. And partially infuriating. The boot. Um, what's everyone's opinion on the SCP short story slash films? Think they'll have a, their day on the small or silver screen? Who? Say that one more time. The SCP sort of monsters and stories and stuff. Probably. Yeah, yeah I feel like there's probably. plenty for them to work with there. It might just be bought and they make... That's probably something they could make like a fucking universe out of, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, you could do that. Would be I just don't know if there's a general enough awareness of that being a thing, or if it's definitely more of an internet thing. But I, I, I'd be down with that if it was written well. Could be really good. Yeah. Could be. Depends which ones they pick. If they pick some of the really good ones, for which they have many, many, many good ones to choose from, and they craft it well, that'd be nifty. Um. Ooh. If K 
Kevin hadn't ran out of jelly beans, he would have been melted. Uh, Kevin, uh... Yeah, right Kevin didn't really care about the jelly beans, he just wanted to join the gang, let's be honest. Yeah. Was it, like, the idea that it takes 30 jelly beans worth of days or whatever to fucking give up and join a gang. It's like, no, nah, you just wanted to join the gang. Come on. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah. I feel like you're just using that as an excuse to... Um, fuck, Mary kill, Kira... Kira Nearest Dr. Crusher Kaiko O'Brien? I have no idea who any of these say, people are. Say, say one more time. Kira Nearis? Ni ne Neris? Kira Neris, maybe? the names, but what was the question? Uh, fuck, Mary kill. Um, okay, say the names again, I gotta double check. Kira Neris, presumably. Dr. Crusher Kaiko O'Brien? Kiko? Kiri Neris... I think she's the Kardashian. Yes, she is. Um, and then we have... Kaiko O'Brien... And who is the other one? Dr. Crusher. That's Star Trek, right? Yes. So, um, Dr. Crusher is def is she's the least attractive of the three. <laughs> but she's the she oldest. Killed, and so that's the thing I'm trying to I'm trying to do this. So, but she's great. Crusher is pretty great. Uh, hmm. So, uh, Gates McFadden was her name. Uh, Kaiko O'Brien. You know what? I'm gonna. Whoops. Kill Kiko, marry. Fuck Kira, and marry Crusher. Well, there you go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna defer to Rags on that one. Same here. I, I don't know anything about any of these guys. So. Yeah, um... Kiri Naris is. She's. She's pretty. Pretty good looking. And you know she's it's Cardassian, which but she's like Star Trek alien, which means there's an eighty percent chance they're human with weird shit on their nose and forehead. Uh, so someone said, "What? I'm baffled." It's like I don't really, I don't know. I don't, I'm not because I haven't really watched. Um, I think she's a Deep Space Nine one, and that that's the one I know the least about. Hmm. So, but she looks hot, which is why I'd fuck her, and I want to marry Crusher. Yeah, this Crusher's pretty, uh, Crusher's pretty great. He's an intellectual. Rags, that means you're Wesley's dad now. Wesley got way, way better after the first season. Plus, he doesn't show around, up around that much. Also, if Rags were his dad, he might not, not turn out to be... He's a Gary Stu, right? He's usually one of the recommended people for that. He, he started out definitely being that way. Like a self-insert for Roddenberry. But Wesley's not nearly as bad as uh, he started. Um, as an autist, so I'm talking about Crusher not being attractive. She's not as attractive as the other two, but she's she's like older. She's clearly an older character. They flirted with the idea of having her be the romantic interest for Picard. Um, but but she's like I like her as a character on the Enterprise. So there you go. Yeah, fair enough. Um. As an autist with emotional connection struggles, I find your critiques incredibly understandable, seeing as most critiques are about emotions. Um, it's kind of the idea. Um, it's not hard, because we've had this conversation with a couple people. For some reason, people believe that if they watch, let's say, fucking anything, and they come away being like, holy shit, I felt things. This thing is incredible because I felt things. And I suppose this is kind of... <laughs> I don't, I don't mean to be a downer, but I'd just be like, you do know that's incredibly common and can be done with everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why is it that you think that because you watched, you know, Die Hard 5 and you felt incredible while watching it, that that suddenly makes the movie, you know, one of the greatest of all time? Surely, I wouldn't deny that it's pretty great for them, but I'd just be like, any movie that you think is shit, someone out there had a fucking phenomenal experience. For instance, Snyder Cut. The amount of people who have claimed that that is the most greatest masterwork of all time that made them feel incredible, it's just like, damn. So there's got to be more to it than that, right? We can't just sit on that, because, um, you know, if I tell you I watched uh, Army of the Dead, it was the most incredible thing I've ever experienced in my entire life, I'm just going to be sitting there like, what? <laughs> I don't know, man. And then, 
you know, nothing further. If you have someone who hated it and loved it and they both used accurate references, that's way more interesting to me because I can actually verify all this shit and then be like, oh, I can see where you came from, why. I don't feel what you felt, but I know how and why. Which is way more interesting, I think. You don't even have to be autistic, as far as I can tell, to enjoy that stuff, but at the same time, I can see why uh, that could be an appeal because you can't can't even come close to, like, emulating the experience that they're claiming they had, sort of thing. Um, at least when watching that. Yeah, you know. According to As and Drinker, Rags is a virgin weirdo for not finding Flash, uh, Iris romantic. Was that the slow-mo thing at the beginning of the Snyder yeah. Cut? Right. Yeah. yeah. What? He, like, so... I think it's, I guess, I think it's for everyone. I guess they, they probably meant that they'd say, they joked about how anyone who didn't like that's a virgin weirdo. The weird thing about that is that that's a really fucking weird creeper scene. Yeah. If you can go super fast to the point of basically pausing people and in their moment of distress, you stroke their hair. I don't know why this is hard like, for people. Every, I thought I the, covered it in if, the video. Replace him with movie Bob and then talk to me yeah, about that scene. So that's a really weird creep thing to do. Yes. That's borderline. Just like, that's like... Like, touching women without their consent like that is really fucking weird. And you should never, mm -hmm. ever do that. And if you do that, you and should you know be what? very, very concerned about your behavior. Let's create a scenario where you're in, you know, the, the queue to McDonald's or something, and she turns to look at you and says, like, oh, sorry, am I, like, too close or whatever? And you see that one of her, a bit of her hair is caught in her eyelash. And then you go, oh, let me just, and you move it out of the way. That's yeah. still weird. It's still really fucking weird. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, it's generally just weird to touch other people on their yep. face in general, you know, sexually or not. You know what's weirder? Fucking doing it when they can't do anything about it. Yes. That's really weird. Doing it when they don't even know you're there and doing it. That's really fucking weird. Like, I don't know if I didn't... <laughs> I, don't, I guess we need to overstate it because people, like, missed the point. That scene is really fucking weird. Uh, to try and get me on his side, it's like, oh, what a great superhero. It's like, nah, that was just creepy, man. I hope you don't do it again. In fact, if he was telling me this story, it's like, like I'm, a, I'm a friend of his, and he's like, oh, yeah, this girl, and she was falling through the sky, or the, the air, as she fell out of her car, impossibly, by the way, if you watch that scene, it doesn't make a lick of sense. Um, and yeah, you know, she was so fucking, like, she was so hot. You're like, oh, oh, yeah? And he's like, yeah, I was, I was like, kind of moving her hair out of the way and just watching her as she fell. You're like, oh. <laughs> Um, but she's okay, and he's like, yeah, I was just, I was just kind of admiring her. You're like, yeah, maybe don't do that, actually, you know, because I'd start to worry. It's like, if you're willing to tell me that, like, what are you willing to yeah. do without telling? It's just like, what yeah, don't. She tell me? Feels like we're on a path here. Let's not, let's not go further than that. And I, I would be, I'm almost like not even sure that they would have said that, Brinker and As, unless the, there's some kind of fucking misunderstanding here i assume that what it is because i liked i'm gonna give both of them more credit than having them actually think that um and if they do that's on them but yeah like there's there's ways like that's a super weird it's not it, it's like it's not i wouldn't go as far as it's not sexual assault or anything but it's like it's you're touching women without their permission when weird. you're infatuated with them that's really really weird shit um, may, may I remind people of the defense of that scene? They are, in the future, going to hook up. Good defense. Uh... Like, they could've... If Zack Snyder wasn't like a bizarro alien trying to imitate <laughs> a human being, then he could've had a scene where, as Flash was going to save her, he like he's running towards this woman, and then he gets almost like distracted for a second with her beauty. Like, it just kind of almost catches him off guard. And then he sort of just remembers that he's there to save her and he does the whole thing. Like, that would be better. The point of the movie, like to show that he comparison is that they recognize the fucking fault isn't with, like, who it is. The action. You might think it's because it's movie Bob. But that's not actually the problem. Or at least, if you thought that... That would be really disappointing. Like, you're like, yeah, well, you wouldn't want Movie Bob touching a girl. Who knows where he's been? Or something like that. I'd be like, That's the thing. It's fine to hit on women if you're super attractive and extremely, you know, That's what I mean. this if... is all in quotes, of course. But if you're just like, a, a, if you're if you're a seven or below, then how dare you speak to women? <laughs> Remember that um, idea we came up with where 
is a movie about movie, but he's like the Flash equivalent, but because he's so fat, he, he can now move at a, a brisk 40 <laughs> miles per hour or something. That's his super speed. <laughs> like, well, that, I guess that's pretty fast, but um, you can call him the Blur, I guess, because <laughs> you can still kind of make him out. Um, <laughs> yeah, if that was his superpower movie, and this is the scene where he meets his doobie wife for the first time, everybody would be saying, what a fucking creepy-ass scene. Uh, but it's yeah. okay because Esma Miller and the girl, they're both, they're both, a, I don't know, conventionally attractive people in a movie by a person they really like that makes movies, and so it's totally fine. And to say that it's weird and creepy just kind of shows you have no experience with women. Like, okay. I just, I, anybody who'd say anything close to that, I'd just be like, go into your local supermarket, walk up to a girl, and move her hair out of the way. See what she does from her face, I mean. And again, don't do that. No, don't, 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 don't give it a do shot. Like, you don't, you don't <laughs> like, need to do it. No. This is what I mean. There's no, there's no like, who, you know, well, it's just who's right here. It's like, no, no, I, I already know it's true. Just don't, just, it's fine. Moving on. Someone, someone said it's okay for Flash to touch women without consent in Zack's cut, but it's sexual harassment when Flash falls on Wonder Woman in Justice League. Well, that should give you an idea of what kind of brain rot you're dealing with when comparing those films. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, really unfortunate, chat. but what are I you know what do? you're saying. This is the thing, like, a couple of people have responded to my Snyder Cut video, from what I've gathered, believe I am, like, hyper-biased toward Joss Whedon. It's amusing, because I forever have said the Justice League film is shit. It like, is. Like, that's a weird bias you got there. <laughs> He's not doing a, a lot for him. Um, is the Force the big gay? Plus, ask Rags if we can adoption him. I don't know if he needs a home, but I always wanted a Shiba Inu. Oh, well, I, I am taken. I have a house to live in. I got, I, I've got a, got a guy in here I gotta look after. You know, he's a wreck without me, so... I better stick around. And as for is the force the big gay, I don't know, why would that be a question? One of them self-explanatory things. Um, Buffy the movie for EFAP movies? I would want to do that after Rags has seen the show, and I also... Fring, you haven't seen that movie, right? I have not. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to. It's really much more fun to watch after you've seen the show, because that movie is a... <laughs> the fucking weird one. Um... Entertaining, but weird as fuck. If I had to choose between the fur fag rags or the baby face crimson chin version of rags, since, sorry rags, but once your face is, is no getting a, around, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'd stick to the dead meme avatar, also good day, Fringy. Hey. Dead meme avatar, what's that? I don't know. I have meme. no idea what they're referring to. It's uh, strange. Yeah. Especially because I'm a very handsome person. Oh, Very handsome boy. Handsome people aren't allowed to know that. Stop it. Oh, I know it every time I look in the mirror. I'm like, that guy right there? That's a handsome guy. I got this well well groomed facial hair and my 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 nice hair on top and a well structured chin. I got love people compliment my eyes fairly often. It's 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 interesting how often my eyes get complimented. Humble brag. Uh, I I got to just oh, I'm great. It's all great. Bringy, what are your some of your favorite games of all time, and what are some of your favorite games on the SNES? Um, so I, t I tend to default to like Crash Trilogy, Original Rash Trilogy, San Andreas, um, or even just the 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 PS2 Grand Theft Auto Trilogy. I don't like to leave any of them out. I just like them a lot. Super Mario Galaxy. Um. Uh. There are other ones, but I feel like I want to sit there and think about what I would pick. But, uh, for the SNES, it'd probably be, like, I, Super Mario World. It's, uh, ooh, that's a, that's a good game. Super Metroid's really cool. Um, Donkey Kong Country is neat. Yeah. Alright. It's Donkey Country. 
I brought up rhino milk in a conversation with a friend recently, and he said whoever milks a rhino would need to have some really big balls. No, I just hands, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't know how how angry the rhinos get when when getting. I don't down know. I them. I don't know. I think they would like they they would they would want to be milked. No, like I I think like being milked would be because I've never been like I don't have like teats that produce like milk right mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i assume that it wouldn't be that it, it would be kind of therapeutic in a way to be milked i don't know and when i'm searching to like make sure i do an area i forget what i'm actually supposed to be doing campaign wise um my sister and I used to play every Lego game and we'd 100% them. The only one we never did was the second Lego movie one. Yeah, I never played the Lego movie Lego games. I felt like we were getting too far, you know? We'd broken the, the layers of reality. Lego, the Lego-y real-life stuff, be made into a video game that they make a movie out of maybe referencing, but then that comes back into being a video game. It's like, you've gone too far. Um... How do you tell the different acts in films? Don't you really through like a, a really basic understanding of typically where they try to uh, slot them? The first act is like almost always um, introductory information, and the second it starts developing plans being made or adversity being recognized and stuff, it feels like we're in the second act where everything is moving along and. Uh, Sort of different conflicts happening, and then the third act is usually just defined by we're about to begin the end, or at least it feels that way, like the beginning Whoa. of the last plan. There's um, usually there's, the sim there's way more official like guides on this written by people and stuff, but I'm just saying how I like eyeball it usually. Generally, a, a simple way is that an act break is usually when a door closes and they and the the main character can't like they they have to commit to the path that they've chosen to a certain extent mm -hmm. um that's what breaking it in terms of three act generally it is inciting incident is at the end of the first act and then the middle is just plot stuff's happening and then the second act is the low point the break yeah there. you'll find oh i feel like this is in all, all the eve out movies but we'll usually point out the second act low point it's almost like fun it's it, so common. It's yeah. a common thing. Usually, when you've got about half an hour left, that's when the characters hit their lowest, and then they have their revelation that leads to the the ultimate conclusion. I remember there's a diagram that that's just a common one that goes around for the three act structure. Um, find it. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's, uh... It's usually this one. This one g gets around a lot. <laughs> I reckon you'll like this, Fergie. I just created, like, a TV, gave it a signal, and there's apparently a news report about the Star Destroyer above Tatooine. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> also, Han Solo. Oh, look, a little breakfast treat for Jawas. Someone said people were shipping Jay Longbone and Rags, and she was just. But Rags is a dog. Well, yeah, Jay's not a white woman. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be a match made in heaven, I suppose. There you go. But I think that I could convince. What's I, funny I could is convince if people her. don't know what you're referencing, Rags, they'll just assume you meant like you only date white women. Oh. <laughs> oh. Whoops. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, yeah, that's going to come across Mask super off. racist to people who don't know. <laughs> Mask off. Yep, Rags reveals. There you go, yeah. I'm referencing a joke of an observation that tends to be... I guess it just tends to be a thing that people have observed, but that's all right. Who knows? Uh, do you think movies, future movies, will try to ignore the shows? Like, will Cap 4 just try to pretend Falcon and Winter Soldier never happened? No, it's written by the no. same person. <laughs> they will, no, definitely they will not. bank on what they've done already. Um, however, if, for example, they hired someone like us to make Cap 4, and you'd be like, would you ignore Cap and Winter Soldier? I'd be like, I want to make as much effort as we can to repair everything, and I don't, that doesn't include ignoring. The only time I roll that out, I would say, is stuff like, um, 
Uh, well, funnily enough, the Loki show, actually. <coughs> but, like, there's no fucking repairing this. We have to get rid of it. Same for uh, Game of Thrones Season 8 or... You know the sequel trilogy. If someone's like, repair the sequel trilogy, it's like, no, we need to get rid of it. It's gone. We need to start all over again. Way too much damage. It's funny, because, you know, with being mentioned Halo Infinite, they're trying to ignore Halo 5. It's like, you can't, you can't, and you shouldn't. You, you need to address it. You need to fix it. You reckon? When you say ignore, I'm assuming you don't mean they're not decanonizing it, they're just... They're not decanonizing it, but they're trying their hardest to almost act like it's not a thing. Like, it, they're, they're doing their best to ignore it, but you can't because there's so much of consequence that happens in that game that I don't think you can ignore it. We'll have to see, but it seems like they're just trying to ignore it as much as possible. Um... But yeah, uh, going forward though, the only reason they would ignore it isn't because they're trying to repair anything. They would do it because they're too incompetent to remember. I forgot. Yeah. Um. Never get a chance to catch you guys live, so I never get to donate, so here you go. Keep up the good work. Have you guys watched Peaky Blinders? Just finished season two, enjoying it so far. I have not I seen it. I have. I have not, but I've been tempted by seeing bits and more. It looks like it could be neat. Uh, who, who named the Gimpy Town, though? Tell me, Rags. Don't let Fringy speak for you. Gimpy Town? I think it was the whole Gimpy Gimpy thing. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows where they get their names down there and that strange, strange land. Who knows why Mad Men do what they do? <laughs> That's going to be out soon, right? Like a month? Yeah, like in a month. I hope it's good. A Gibi Gibi, the king of the Gumpy Gumpus. I rags and M. M was never here in this this catch up. Ridiculous. But I was, metal. hello. Yes. Um, hello, Daddy Fraggle 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 Fraggle, the bestest of doggos. All of the butt scratches in the world to you. Rags. Oh, thanks. That sounds great. Have you played? And what are your thoughts on Dragon Age Inquisition? Love you, Mola. Oh. I have not played that game. Well, here we are. So there you go. I just played Dragon <laughs> Age uh, 1 and 2. Um, in relation to the Gimpy Gimpy thing, someone said, I'm starting to understand why people think Australia isn't real. What do you mean, think? Hey. <laughs> <Don't laughs> He's starting to believe. Lies. He's starting to believe. Uh, hey lads, who is worse? The TVA who melt people for stepping out of line, or Wanda who tortures them for it? Oh, the T TVA. I feel like TVA have done more damage to <laughs> like yeah. reality. They've been doing this for billions of years. Um, I'm trying to think in like isolation, the acts themselves. It's like you see someone makes a choice and thus oh, creates a different timeline well, with themselves in it. Oh, I, would... I think I'd rather be dead than a slave. Well, but in Wanda, Wanda, they, Wanda they got unslaved. A Wanda slave, sorry, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I didn't they mean... Escaped. They yeah, got I didn't, out. I, didn't, I, didn't, I was going to say ignoring the fact that it all comes to an end, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, like, um, if you didn't know it was going to end, what would you... Yeah. If... So if... If it was, like, be a Wanda slave forever, or die? I guess so. Uh... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess I'd want to die because the Wanda slaves have no autonomy. There's Kinda no terrifying. escape from it. It's painful, like to the point where they would rather die. Yeah. So, ugh. Yeah. I'm... And of course, if you've got family like kids, oof, you got that as an extra element. It scares the yeah, shit out of it... you. Yeah. Now that's which one would rather happen to me, and it's assuming that like I. So the TVA are way worse in terms of scale. Um, what do you um? But what do you think about wh who's like the the worst soul? The person who enslaves the town because they want it that way for themselves, or the person who does it because they're afraid of their space lizard gods t telling them that if they don't, the whole world collapses. Well, I First guess there's that as an element. Like if you believe that the space wizards have a plan, like an act, well, a, a, a plan that's meaningful compared to Wanda, where it's just for her own benefit. Yeah, if you're part of the so yeah, if you think that there's gonna be a multiverse level war that just destroys the entirety of the cosmos, if you don't do it, then 
if you believe that's the truth in the case, then that's way more understandable and justifiable mm -hmm. than I am. I have the sads, and I'm going to kidnap and torture a town so that I could keep the sads away. Yeah. But it's interesting that we have these conversations. Who would have thought? About Rewind just hero, just a year's right? time. Never would have thought we'd be fucking talking about this shit. Yeah. Um, since you're sleepy, or getting sleepy, I can test your defense of Batwoman breaks your own scale. If both shows have will-breaking stories, Loki at least wins on production value and acting. Like, you read Wit, is it Loki's better? Because it has Loki's better acting. Loki's worse than Batwoman, because it has it's worse easy. writing. Well, so the logic yeah, here the... is if both shows have will-breaking stories. So, first of all, will-breaking is still on a scale. Every kind of flaw is going to be on a scale. Um, yeah. We talked about this before, but like, you know, like crazy likelihoods where it's it's like one out of a hundred, one out of a thousand, one out of a million, one out of a million, billion, trillion. You're like, okay, so all of those are actually meaningfully different. Yeah. And Loki breaks, it, it just, it breaks the entirety of the cosmos. Like the biggest scale that Batwoman is, is... It, it breaks like, like... Security Gotham officers wouldn't island? run this way. Law wouldn't run this way. Medicine wouldn't run this way. Uh, yeah, it's just like a shitty um, city in an island. Yeah. And to be fair to Batwoman, what is it that Batwoman breaks on the scale of fucking Loki? Yeah. What are like, we talking remember, about? Loki, Loki breaks the cosmos. Batwoman doesn't even affect all of a planet. All of it, not even all of a continent. Mm -hmm. On a planet. It's not even close. Yeah, I, I don't really know. To me, it close. sounds like you're saying, hey, you know that car in the background of Lord of the Rings? That kind of breaks the world, so Lord of the Rings and Batwoman are on the same level as Loki. I'd be like, um... <laughs> even if you thought your logic was valid, don't you think it's kind of useless at that point? Um, fascinating. Rags' syrup story was an analogy of itself. Which what which which syrup story was that? I'm sorry, I, I forget. It was the the epic syrup story that it just kind of kept going and the room kept filling and you just kept saying. Oh, going. gotcha. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that tale. Uh, Rags, you forgot the part where the syrup fossilizes and you're preserved like the mosquitoes in Jurassic Park. Oh uh, yeah, I'm but I'm I'm but a bug in amber, ready for my DNA to give birth to a new race of doggos. I will be the father to a new people. We are a new race. We will prevail. Hey. Batwoman ruined Conroy Batman. Also, Kevin Conroy liked it. The tool. Oh, he liked it? He, <laughs> Jesus he was Christ. He probably told he had to say he liked it. He probably had to say that contractually. That would be really sad if, like, it, it, he genuinely liked it. I'd be like, oh, dude. Oh. Damn. Kevin Conroy had to like that contractually. And my mother gave birth to me contractually. It just feels... It, she, did they, they did. They did ruin. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was covered. That's all. <laughs> like this is. Just, it was. It's damage, but isn't that like meta damage? That's not actually like in universe damage. Yeah, yeah, that's meta. Yeah. Though I'll agree, it was fucking painful to watch. Uh. One of the balls has to be the closest and one the furthest. The two in between can be aligned perpendicularly to the cliff. Say that one more time. It's about the four balls thing. I think I'm just gonna... I'll just be like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, balls. No, well, I, I didn't catch that. What was it? It was, uh... One of the balls has to be the closest and one the furthest. The two in between can be aligned perpendicularly to the cliff. So the two in between are perpendicular to the cliff. So they're all four perpendicular. Yeah, do they, do they or they're in like parallel a, to the cliff. Meanwhile, the other two could be, you know, thinking of them as like a like collection. Like they're arranged. Four, like a diamond. Arranged and yeah, like a diamond. I mean, maybe, but that that further complicates my ability to know like 
directions or which one is which. And, and, and I don't think it changed the spirit of the question either. In terms of what happens when a ball is copied and then takes the place of another ball. Hmm. Imagine four balls on the edge of a cliff. Again. Uh, Someone asked, are these four balls above or below the lane? <laughs> <laughs> Questions such oh. as those truly be answered. Uh, boop, boop. Halo Infinite treats Halo 5 like Halo 5 treated Spartan Ops. Laugh my ass off. Yeah, just ignoring it, pretending it didn't happen almost. I mean, because, yeah, I was going to say, like, you know how Dark Fate pretends like Terminator 3 and 4 didn't happen? It's like... Yeah. But, like, literally didn't happen. Because that's one of... It's just funny to me that we have that, that example of a mainstream, mm. high-budget thing basically decanonizing its shitty movies. Like, wow. And in, in turn, replacing it with another <laughs> Exactly. Movie. Uh, what grinds my gear are people trying to excuse badly written characters because psychological dysfunction. Unrelated, just something from previous EFAB. Well, uh... This sounds like the classic one. Uh, we, we dubbed it, My Client is Insane, right? When uh, they, they usually don't open with it. Yeah. But if yeah. if the conversation's going a little bit toward it, they'll just be like, you know what? Yeah, they made a mistake because they're in kind of nuts. They're arrogant. They're under stress. They're, they're doing this. It's just like, basically, you have no idea how to justify it. Um, good old Hux. Really stupid opening decision. Um, imagine four balls, two above the wang and two below. There was no question at it, they just wanted you to imagine it. Two above the wing, two below. Alright. It's like an X-Wing configuration. Uh, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. I recently saw Predestination and thought it was really interesting, and the time travel was relatively well done. Thoughts? I have not seen I have not another. seen Predestination. Suppose I hope it's good. How does the time stone play in with the TVA? Does it even matter that Doctor Strange had it? Thanks for the great content, y'all. Um, I've got no clue, because if Thanos, right? So let's let's pretend for a second that you going late to work, uh, Fringy, it cost it cost us big time. It started creating a Nexus event. It's like, oh, jeez. What if yeah. Thanos rewound you? Would you keep making that mistake and keep creating that Nexus event? I. I don't know. I, and, do, I don't know. I don't know what. And this if the answer is have. yes, you would. Then what if Thanos rewound and then woke you up on time? Would he then? Prov would he be doing what TVA agents do? I guess so. In which case, like, you can Outsourcing. solve it in universally with your own Infinity Stone. It just that just doesn't. It just feels all fucking yeah. nonsensey, doesn't it? Well, it is nonsense. That's. I'm uh, running on fumes here. We need to wrap up. Yeah, like I said you for now. Um, going a while. Feel free to go to sleep whenever you want. Um, I'm probably gonna uh, yeah. like I'll save any that are directed at you. All right. Yeah, I think I'm gonna head off then because it is. Um, yeah, we've been going a while, and I uh, I'm just I'm just flat out tired. Yes, so sir. I gotta head uh head out. And go and sleep, because mm -hmm. I am the big, the big tired. So I will catch all of you later. Toodaloo's to Mahler and Fringy in the chat, and uh, you have fun answering those questions. And I will see y'all later on. I yeah, see you, dude. Catch you around. Toodly, toodly, do do. God. And then there were two. My God. I know, we used to be four. Double the size. Yeah. There were four, four people on this cliff. There are only two. Now there's only two. That's right. So where where the are cliff. the balls now? I don't know. I can't answer all these questions, though. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Netflix's Daredevil best comic book adaption, adaptation of all time? Um, hmm. I don't... I wouldn't say so. Um, what... Well, we have to think what's what the competition, right? Uh, like... Civil War. 
And is that even a good adaptation, or is that just a good oh, movie? Oh, yeah, we're talking about good. Well, the, with good adaptation, that becomes more complicated Actually, that's a good because point, with yeah. Daredevil, with Daredevil, it depends on which era. If you're talking like the '80s, then pretty good. But if you're talking like old classic yellow suit Daredevil, no, it, it, it's not. So I don't know if that's symmetric. It would just mean best superhero content. Yeah, it's like, I really like it, but I'm not sure if I can put it like right at the top. Especially for uh, EFAP, these ratings can't coexist. How good the thing itself is, and then how accurate the thing to its comic counterpart is. Like, yeah, those two things don't line up for us. You'd have to choose one. Um, I suppose if we try to answer both, the most accurate adaptation from a comic book? I, I can tell you. I'm not even know. sure, yeah. I think I would probably leave that to chat. I'm not sure. Um, but the best content to be adapted from a comic? Um, that just basically means best comic book content, like, like, yeah. TV show or movie, and... Um, contenders would probably include Civil War, probably the Spider Daredevil Burst. TV show, fine. Uh, yes, yeah, Spider-Verse. Yeah, I, I'm happy to put... It's, it's just, um, yeah, I'm not sure, because it's been too long since I watched it. Joker, honestly, obviously. Yeah, Joker, Avengers would probably be in there. Avengers, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so... Really, that's one of those do-it-yourself sort of answers where, judging from whatever criteria you're looking for, that's the best we can do for you. Um, Army of the Dead might be a zero, so I feel like the audience watching Loki is Loki finding the drawer of Infinity Stones. Chef kiss. I'm confused at that sentence. Um... Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel. I feel like what does the uh, Army of the Dead part have to do with the rest of it? Like, <laughs> what's um, mm -hmm. feel like the audience watching Loki is Loki finding the drawer of Infinity Stones. Uh, like, like you watch Loki desperately hoping for things to just work out, but they just they're just getting worse. I guess. Um, I. <laughs> I no, I don't. I don't That's the best I, I got. Know. I'm sorry. Uh, as for yeah. Army of the Dead being a zero, what what do we, we even give a number to that? It's probably three or two, right? It's gonna be that. I uh, probably like a. I feel like a two. Probably it was a fucking retarded movie. Yeah. More so than TLJ, probably if that's a three still. <laughs> Uh, everything sucks. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, what? It's like, Hard to tell. Really? The other movie is that? It's just like, guys, The Army of the Dead was really bad. I just, uh... Why is it so hard to just make a normal ass fucking premise? <laughs> it's not that hard, but it is. Evidently. Evidently. Oh, somebody said Scott Pilgrim uh, for the comic. That's that's actually a good one. Yeah, I think that's fair to put that on the list. Yeah. Basically painful is what I recall you guys saying about Army of the Dead. Yeah, uh, I had a bit of a headache after seeing that one. I'm not sure if it was the um, the crazy focus. Could have been that. Might have been. Sometimes you just get a headache though when it's like some fucking bullshit's happening, you know? <laughs> well, it would be cool to know um, when you get a headache strictly because of the frustration of the nonsense like you actually had yeah. a confirmation of that like your head literally is trying to just fucking make sense of shit and it can't and it gets frustrated and it hurts yeah a story idea a sci-fi revenge story of a prince reclaiming his throne after years of hiding as a peasant in the empire by disrupting the royal trials of the empire for leadership thoughts i mean that feels like a premise that's common um, I was gonna say, it that sounded familiar. I thought the joke was gonna be that it reveals what it was, because <laughs> I was like... really familiar to a lot of things, and I can't even put my finger on what exactly, because I feel like there are so many examples, you know? Like he, I guess the more specific part is, like, he gets back in by disrupting the royal trials for the Empire... Um, hmm. of, ...of the Empire for Leadership, so... A bit more specific. But, like, the idea of a prince reclaiming his throne after years of hiding is, like... I guess Lion King is kind of that, in a way. Yeah, Lion King. Uh, he wasn't hiding necessarily. Well, I guess he was kind of yeah. different in premise, but yeah, similar. Um, yeah, a lot of things. Damn! Imagine being an EFAP guest and getting upset. No one says hello, but then not even in stream in months. Wow! Also, hello, host of EFAP. Imagine being an EFAP guest and getting upset. No one says hello, but then not even stream in months. I can, I'm confused on that one. 
I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But they said hello, so hello. Uh, you, gentlemen, I have a problem. I'm attempting to convince my friend who likes Mando that Loki is bad, but he says it's good. This is homotisms. <laughs> I, <laughs> look, I, I guess we just had, this is like a part of a theme of this particular stream, but just normal people like shit when it comes to movies and TV shows. I'm sorry. You don't understand, by watching and listening to EFAP, you're a part of a niche. The very limited niche. It's, like, it's downright fucking weird to most people to care about stuff making sense in stories. They'll be like, what do you mean? It's all fucking fictional. What's wrong with you? If none of this actually happened, you know that, right? Like, you have to go through all of those motions with them. They will unironic- it's Patrick Williams, they'll be like, this is about space wizards, dude. And you're like, oh god, yeah, yeah, I have to go through all these arguments with you, I guess. Sorry, I wanted to take it seriously. That was my mistake. <laughs> let's let's not take it seriously, man who went to fucking film school. Oh, what's important for you have to understand. Yeah, that's yeah, unreal. Two K loses. But yeah, good luck convincing them. You, it'll require a particular kind of poison for everybody, you know? it's uh, Everybody takes this conversation differently. Mm. To work with what they value about stories, and then try and find a way to make them be a little more consistent, right? Because a lot of the time they won't be. And it's not necessarily their fault. They typically just don't really think that much about it. It's like, it's a movie, I like it or I don't. Thoughts on Ratchet and Clank? I think it has potential, but they never go the extra mile. What, like the whole series? What? Sorry. What? For the whole series? Or I, I guess so. Um, oh, which is weird I to me because Ratchet and Clank, across the whole series, it's like, I don't think you could say any, like, one thing to sum up all of those games. They're, they're very different. No. They are quite different. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think it's a great series. I, I'm not sure what... When I look at those games, like, they gave me what I wanted in terms of, like, the fantasy of traveling through space and going on adventures, so I'm not really sure what I'd ask for that isn't in those games. I think they're great. I guess this guy wanted something else in it. I'm not sure what it is, though. Okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm not sure what... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've not played as much Ratchet & Clank as you, but of all that I've played, I've really enjoyed. And something I really liked about Ratchet & Clank was the, um... The effort for, like, additional content outside of the campaign that they worked at. Absolutely. Um, and their museums. Yeah, the, uh, they were really cool. Yeah. Bio Bioshock has one of them, by the way, do you know that? I didn't know that. I think it came with... It could have been that it came with the remaster alone. I'm not sure if it was ever in the original mm. game or one of the later re releases, but, um... Really cool. I, I only checked it out the other day because I didn't even know it existed. You go in and they show you a bunch of designs that didn't make it into the game for... Enemies, like weapons, locations. Um, mm -hmm. One of the ones that's super interesting is the, the Rapture Zoo. They had a whole plan to have a Rapture Zoo, which I think would have been really cool. <laughs> that could have been neat. Um, how would EFAP evaluate a movie where cause and effect are not connected, e.g. Mulholland Drive, Mother, or Nostalgia? What would be your criteria? So the problem is that I'd need to see any of them recently to be able to give you a better answer. But hopefully you think that the father would qualify. Um, because that's... The story is about a man who can't rationalize cause and effect in any way, shape, or form, or at least progression. Um, mm -hmm. But under that scope, things do actually make sense. The whole point in that film is that you understand exactly what's happening by the time you get the full picture. Even though things don't line up because you, you understand how they don't line up. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I would give better answers, I suppose, if I had seen the others more recently. I'm afraid I can't, though. Um, especially because, uh, I think Rags brought it up as we were going along. Um, if you have a movie that goes as far as saying everything in this movie takes place in a person's mind, and it represents different ideas and thoughts they were having, um, and it tells a story of them thinking to themselves about their whole life. It would be like, I don't think you can do I don't think you can make a mistake at that point in terms of uh, continuity. Yeah. At least it's really, really hard to be able to say exactly what the mistake would be. Um, so the subject would probably change into how well they represented different ideas and what they could try and avoid or whatever. Uh oh 
Fucking Bantha jumping around. Uh, do you sometimes find it difficult to review movies based on your set standards? E.g., how would you review something as absurd as Monty Python and the Holy Grail? So, much like with a lot of different comedies, I would just want to talk about all the inc incredibly well-written jokes. Um, yeah. How they work. Do this myself? Magna God? Holding out on me. Um... Is it the first thing I think of with Monty Python and the Holy Grail is that fucking bridge with the, the bridge keeper man and all the questions. First time I saw that as a kid, I remember thinking like this is one of the most cleverly written fucking comedy sequences. Just uh, how much they were surprising me and making me laugh at myself. As well as... I can't like the, the holy hand grenade and the fucking crazy buddy that's killing everything. I remember it was just... Stoning scene. That one. <laughs> it's it's unreal how fucking funny that like some yeah. of these because you, you know the same could be said for airplane I think or Naked Gun. There's a lot of these films where just like cause and effect storytelling is kind of out of whack. But I mean it's it's mainly um a way for them to deliver jokes. That's the whole fucking yeah way I'm they use the narrative. Oh fuck yeah! I'm not really I don't care if like the characters actually get to the places they're trying to go or achieve the things they're trying to achieve necessarily. I am in it to be entertained thoroughly, and they usually do the job. Well, yeah, I mean, another example would be like in the bl like the Black Knight <laughs> getting his arms and legs chopped off and still being, <laughs> and not like screaming at the top of his lungs. Like he probably should be screaming and bleeding out and dying, but it's just funny to see him just start kicking him in the head. Um, Your arms off? No, stop. <laughs> it's, it's just a flesh wound, and of course. The joke with the peasants where he's talking about these kind of like complex political subjects. Yeah. And he's sitting in shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we see the violence inherited in the system. We see the violence inherited in the system. Help, help, I'm being repressed. <laughs> what uh, was, oh, I think he said like power should be derived from the masses, not some farcical aquatic ceremony. <laughs> 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 Be quiet. I mean, if I went around saying I was king because some, oh, what was it? I think it was like some moist, no, it wasn't that. It was some, some watery bint or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I need the seed. Watery tart. I remember uh, which. Yeah, I think it was something like that. Um... Uh, where is it? I need it. I need it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, the, the scene that it's got here on YouTube calls them constitutional peasants. Oh, it's also in chat. Funny. Strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. He said, if I went around saying that I was an emperor just because some moist bint tossed his sword at me, <laughs> like, they'd, throw me, they'd put me away. <laughs> Such a good scene. I mean, the whole film's fucking great. <laughs> Twice the balls, double the cliff. <clears throat> uh, Kung Pao Enter the Fist is an underrated gem of a comedy. In fairness. Whenever anyone talks about it, they talk about it positively, from what I can tell. I guess maybe you mean it's underseen in terms of underrated. In which case, that could be. I have fair. not seen it. The good and. Yeah. Uh, would you have ever covered novels like Paradise Lost, Atlas Shrugged, 1984, or Dante's Inferno? I notice you cover suspicious amounts of movies and TV. No, oh, it's not suspicious. We love movies and TV. Mm -hmm. uh, and games. I do just... like books, but I'm not sure what the um, format would be for that, you know? Like, when we need examples, would we have to pull up, like, the books? Like, Take text photos book with, like, the a phone and then... then yeah. I guess, yeah. Um, That's mainly movies, TV shows, video games. I don't yeah, like I just, um, I don't typically have the... Like, if, if Springy was going beyond space and time to recommend a book to me. I might consider reading it, but like, I just typically aren't I'm not reading books these days. Well, it's, it is a time commitment, I mean... I'm barely keeping up like 
with what I want to see on film and TV. Then there's all the stuff I get recommended. Then there's all the stuff I need to see to keep up with, like, you know, pop culture. Mm hmm. I mean, it, I guess it depends on priorities, because, of course, one of the reasons why I read is because, like, I just kind of think it's, like, flat out good for you. At least yeah. it seems to be in that way. Like, it, it's just, there's something about the brain that just, it works a little better when you're reading more often, or at least kind of, it, it helps in a sense. Of course, I'm on a writer, so important to read. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the reality is, like, with books, it's like, you got the fiction and non-fiction. Like, non-fiction is kind of a big part of, like, at least what I've been reading lately, anyway. It's not really, I'm not, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a much bigger time investment to, uh, if we had to do books than it would be to do, uh, movies. Maybe not TV shows and video games, but, you know. Sometimes, um, even then. Because yeah. you know, some books can take a while. And then it, I guess well, it depends on reading speed and playing speed. Is a... um, There's that. It's just that some books, you know, you can read them in like five, six hours, but then some books are 30 hours long, mm -hmm. and that's like just one book in a series. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a time commitment. And also, I think it's just a matter of like, if we're talking about media that is watched and even like played, there's more of a common through line there than there is for books. Like, books are almost in their own little, well, their own biggish camp. Um, how much shall I pay you to watch Kung Pao? Braid, we don't typically go in for pay to make us watch stuff. You can't buy me. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't how it works. But uh, yeah, I'm sure Fring will see at one point in his life. Enter the first yeah, time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Do thoughts? Oh, no, wait, I read that one. <clears throat> I go on for rags specifically, but I will hang on to that one. It's about Kentucky ballistics. No idea. Yeah, that wouldn't be a strong suit. <laughs> In predeterminism, you don't choose what you choose because you had no other choice, but because choosing something else would go against how you are as a being in Loki. It's because a lizard chose for you. Well, so the way that they've described it to us is that everybody... It's almost like there would be free will if not for the fact that they reset you until you make the choice they want you to make. Yeah. Really that seems kind of to be... odd. Because you, the first question you should have is, wait, why would you ever choose anything different? Yeah, like, what does it mean to make a choice that would create a variation on the timeline? Isn't every choice I make the choice that... It's either, wouldn't every choice, any choice that I make, be the choice I was always gonna make, or, alternatively, um... Oh, so, like, every choice that is ever made ever is creating multiverses, I guess? That's when we get into the scary thoughts about, you know, like, the true nature of predeterminism and all that. But, yeah, um... You could argue that the Space Lizards are writing it, because apparently they have access to, like, all of the timelines ever, meaning infinite, every choice that anyone ever made ever, 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 and then they weave it to be exactly the way they want it to be. So if they have yeah. access to, say, for example, Fringy decides to watch a movie, and every single movie that's on offer for him to watch is a, is a p potential timeline, and then they choose what they want him to watch... I guess Fringy never had any free will to begin with. He never even made a choice. Yeah, not in any meaningful sense, because any time I made a choice, I would have been melted, so I don't really have free will. It, you go as far as saying they kind of seems they hate you if you have free will. You fuck everything mm. up for them. Like, it's not even just a matter of they would prefer you don't. It's literally that you're a fucking pest to them if you have free will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what is that weird salad? Not sure which one this super chat's referring to. Might be the predeterminism one. Maybe, yeah. Because it's got a up arrow. There will be blood. Feels like a ten to me. Feels like a ten. We don't deal in that here, sir. We don't deal in feels. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there will be blood. Is fantastic. That would be a film that I wouldn't be surprised if it did reach a ten, but I wouldn't be able to tell you. Because um, that's a film that my passion levels are like. Probably like six, seven, but I recognize the film is really, really good. 
So what defines power? Stealth may give you significant power over your enemy and is a path to power in Elder Scrolls. I... Ah, I remember this. This was in reference to power level. Ah, power fantasies. Where I was oh, saying yeah. I think stealth counts as power fantasy. Um, well, that's the thing. As far as I know, power really... The thing I, I should have brought up when... Uh, in that in that call, I can't really bring it up now because Rags isn't here, but... You know, he was mentioning, like, your power or weakness in terms of your health or ability. It's like, being a glass cannon is still a power fantasy. Yeah, the because the fantasy in that case would be, like, your ability to evade damage. Like, that that feels empowering. Well, I was saying, I was kind of bringing it up simply for the, the idea of glass cannon. So, like, you just have that power, that kind of capacity to deal damage, even if you can be killed instantly. Um, you're still right. in a position of you fire and total destruction in some way, shape, or form is happening. It's like, that is a power fantasy. At least with how I came to understand it, I didn't think it had anything to do with how easy you are to kill, necessarily. I don't think it does have anything to do with how easy you are to kill. I just think that's, like, an incorrect definition. Because, <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, it's pretty broad power fantasy. This, this regards a lot. And uh, video games are very much tap into that significantly, because... Um, it's the interaction element. Like, VR is going to be big into that as well, right? Like, it's just... Yeah, we, definitely. We get to feel as though we're doing all of the things that you see. And it could be as simple as, you know, you play a guy who's got a ray gun and he's blasting a bunch of aliens. You'd be like, that's not that significant. And it's like, it still kind of appeals to the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You... What do y'all think of Empire of the Sun? I loved it. Uh, I haven't played it. Have is that a game it. or is that a movie? Sorry, I don't, <laughs> I, would, I don't know why I assumed it was a, a oh. game. <laughs> I have no idea, so I thought you knew what it was. <laughs> I think I... Yeah, I don't know why I assumed it was a game. I think it's like Empire of Sin is a game or something like that. Maybe that was the connection in my head. Uh, help us out. What are we... What's What are we thinking of? Yeah. Is game or is movie or is TV show? music group? Oh, is it a band? Hmm. It's a movie. <laughs> okay, two people uh, said it's a movie. Right. I think it's a movie. Okay. Well then. Must be, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I haven't seen it. Um, Doom's a power fantasy, not mech's aesthetics. Okay. You would play mm -hmm. a true mech's power fantasy because there'd be nothing to fight. Doom's fantasy comes from improving into super murder bot, not starting out as one without challenge. I don't think that's how power fantasies work. If you were to become no. godlike and you can literally vaporize everything and you can't be killed, I don't think that means it's not a power fantasy. Because you can be like you can't be stopped and it would be boring or something. It's like I, I'm pretty sure this I'm not a psychologism. But I'm pretty sure Power Fantasy, like I said, it regards a shit ton of things. I think it's just, do you feel... Well, sounds stupid, but yeah, do you feel empowered in some way? Like, is there something that you can do that you normally couldn't do? Or, um... Or some level of influence you have over the world that you don't have in real life? Yeah. Like, that's the reason why I think stealth can be a Power Fantasy, because it's like, well, in real life, you're probably not such a great thief that you could get into any place you wanted and discover all of the secrets of the world and then subtly influence things or sneak past people, you know, even if we want to go even simpler than that. It's funny, someone in chat just said, same reason unlocking unlimited ammo after beating a game is so much fun. Simultaneously, what? a lot of people find that to be not very fun at all. Yeah. Because um, after about a minute of trying it out, you're like, actually, I'm bored now. <laughs> It can happen. Um, it's all very complex. I uh, I would try not to rule out feelings of um, power fantasy for any particular reason. Like, if someone said COD can't be a power fantasy because that's just a normal dude in, like, an army or something. That's um, stupid if they said <laughs> that, but yeah. Maybe they would. Um, he's the sister of Candace from the prequels. See, I'm sure when they wrote that, it was at a time that made, made a lot of sense. sense. <laughs> <laughs> that is not that. This is not the time. Out of context, he's the sister of Candace from the prequels. 
I do oh, not boy. know what to make of that. Yeah. I'm lost there. Uh... Yeah. Uh, Fringy, so isn't every game ever included in that definition then? That it, it yeah, genuinely probably. might be to some degree. I'm not sure probably. about something like Tetris though. Tetris is the power fantasy of making blocks fall into slots and then they disappear. I like I would have to check the definition for that one, <laughs> but for the most part, just having a different type of agency that's much more than you typically have. Um, I think uh, yeah, that's the keyword here is fantasy, everyone. Yeah, and in Tetris, it would be making stuff fall into place like blocks. You know, that's that's the fantasy. If only I in the real world had the power to make blocks fall into place on on the ground. Of life but I don't live, not being able to do that. Um, exactly. Yeah, I I don't know if that one counts for sure, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Yeah, me either. Yeah. Efap the jacket from two thousand five. I don't know why they want us to do that. Like I said, all I remember yeah. is it's a bit of a weird movie. Um, it's a man not entitled to his critiques. No, says IMDb, it belongs to the viewers. No, says the man on Rotten Tomatoes. It's for the critics. No, says Hollywood, it's ours. Um, I'm assuming the logic there is that, like reviewed by aggregate, reviewed by having been paid, or... I guess, hmm. it's, I guess IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes are both aggregate, they're just different kinds. They're different types of aggregates for sure, yeah. If communism was never established, it would have been melted. Wait, that sounds pretty That's good. That's right. No. Oh, yeah, I was about to say. It's like, if, yeah, like if, if, if uh, Lenin hadn't, or Karl Marx hadn't written Das Kapital, he would have been melted. <laughs> it always just, He's like, like you know what? I think that, uh, I don't know why I'm making him sound like a German. <laughs> Wait, what was, what was Marx? Fuck. He's, I'm gonna embarrass myself. He probably is Russian, isn't he? Oh, I was just laughing at I, the accent. Why, why do I rush on Wikipedia? I need, I need Karl Marx. <laughs> um. No, he was German. I was right at the beginning. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um. What was my joke? Fuck. Um. Give him nah, some you know what? Like, private capital is is good. That's is good. <laughs> private capital. And then the space lizard comes in and uh, melts him. <laughs> no, if only I knew that. I don't know. The stuff should have been organized from like the bottom. I oh, fucking know. No, you know maybe it's because I'm I'm now getting a little bit tired. Um, why didn't they just melt Loki? Why did they take him in? I, I don't know, he needed a trial. Why? <laughs> so, I don't fucking... I got no fucking clue. It was like, yeah, like, what would... If, if it's like, so he's the guy who calls the variants, okay, reset the timeline, him included, and it all goes back to normal. Why would taking him in do anything? I... I... I, I, I like, don't Let's pretend for a moment that they decide, you know what, he's innocent. I don't even know how you would determine that. Now what are you going to do? You already fucking blew up his timeline. Where are you going to put him? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Wait, what, what? Oh, fuck me. That's it. That's actually, yeah, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Where the fuck does he go? I just don't know how it works. And I picture we might get a few more answers as time goes on, but... I... Or Man. if it's a kangaroo court, <laughs> like, he was just never actually going to be... No, he was never actually getting a fair trial. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever gets any kind like, everyone's always guilty. But at that point, why not just reset him? What's the point? What's the point in indulging him and tricking him into believing that he actually has a chance if you're just gonna kill him anyway? Um... Hi, Mauler. Hello. My first live EFAB. Hi, all Metal Fringy and chat. Oh, hey. <laughs> um, you have brought many hours of enjoyment to my life. I've been watching roughly since the beginning of the UK lockdown of EFAB 78 at the time of this super chat. Hail Wolf and the Dom and High Rags. I'm sure, it I'm sure it would say hi to you. Yeah, and 
Neat. Um, I've always been curious if people say, like, I just started watching or whatever. I, I, if ever you, anyone listening to this has that chance, like, throw in what, um, what managed to get you in. I, I'd be curious if it was a particular coverage of ours on something that you caught randomly, or if it was a different video, or if it was a different creator recommendation. It's always neat to know how people arrive. Yeah. Um, if the lizard people didn't allow General Sherman to burn down Atlanta, he would have burned them too. That's a good point. When I heard Jay was transitioning, I first thought he's transitioning from boy into man. Now I see he was transforming into long man. Well done. Well, Jay's <laughs> made a longer video now than I have. So. Any, yeah, longer single video. Yep. If you combine all the TFA videos, I still beat him out, though. <laughs> so. yeah. I'm not uh, sure that anybody can beat that record. I'm sure someone has already. You know who YouTube is. Oh, yeah, like, uh, well, I know that um, White Light has made, like, a seven-hour-something video on uh, Death Stranding. I beat seven. I think the three TFA videos together are 11 hours right now, I think. Oh. Is that you right? Someone in chat already knows. You, I know, right? You loser. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you spend you any amount of time? Me. You know, it's not like there is actually any cause. But like, it's not like, uh, well, do we want to get really dark about the true nature of human existence? What? Probably <laughs> I not. don't know how we got there so quickly. <laughs> oh, just when people say like, oh, yeah, why would you use your time doing that? It's like, oh, man, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but nothing <laughs> matters. Like, why would you, you spend your time right? doing anything? <laughs> Why do you, yeah, why do you spend your time doing anything? It's all gonna be worthless in the end when the universe is d destroyed by heat death. How dare you. That's what, but Angel taught me a valuable lesson about, about, you know, the, the reality of what you do when nothing matters. Oh yes. Uh, I watched The Punisher Season 1, was fun, but I had a lot of irritating gun -tismery. Overall, I'd say it's actually worth a watch. Not Season 2, though. It's garbage. Wow, I think that Punisher ain't that great anyway. Um, season 2 probably is shit, but I don't think Season 1's that great either. Um, but I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Uh, so if Genghis Khan hadn't killed so many people, the planet would have melted? Well, this, so... This is what... The, like, unironically, is the criticism of the people of the TV, TF, TVA. Um, they have watched a lot of atrocities take place and done nothing about it. In fact, they work to make sure they happen. Now, I think that's the big thing that fucks them over. Yeah, you might be like, well, what do you mean? They have to, otherwise all the timelines fall apart in this kit. And it's like, do we even know what the concern is? And if it turns out that it's actually kind of a good thing, like the multiverse, I mean, and the female Loki is the good guy, which is very fucking likely, for all we know. Um, then it means that no one there ever challenged any of it, which means none of them actually have any fucking free will. They're not people, they're just, like, robots. Which You know what I mean? Like, there's so many... It just... Everything moves around. It's really hard to judge it definitively, but that's one of the things that we all worry about, is did they let all of the horrible, horrible things of history happen? Looks like they did. It seems like the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, are you guys going to respond to Patrick Willem's Trilogies video? Trilogies. No. We love them. I, uh, I don't, I have no idea why we would. I, I, I have no idea what that video is about. I, just, um, I hope it's better than his usual stuff. I don't know. I, like I said, don't know what it's about. Have you seen When Pedos Enter the Studio on YouTube, lol? No. <laughs> like, I have no idea no. what that is. Um, I would say power fantasy is very individual, but an easy way to understand the concept is that power fantasy is more like an ability fallacy, a fantasy. Um, well, at that point, you've not made it any clearer to somebody who defines having power as having a ability or agency, but I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, boop, boop. On how people arrived. I've been here since the beginning. Found you, Rags, and Wolf separately and was delighted when you started streaming together. It was surprising how many people, um, I think, had that happen initially. It were fans like all three well, of the man, channels separately. I mentioned it before, but like, I, one, the reason why I, I knew Wolf was because one, I had stumbled across his channel 
and then I clicked on a link to his Twitter and I saw that he was following me. I was like, huh. And so, yeah, it turned out we mutually, I think it was the same with Rags as well. Um, yeah, this is nuts to think about. Yeah, like I said, I, I met Rags and Wolf. I wish I'd actually kept track of exactly how much time had passed between that, me responding to Rags' message and me challenging Wolf on uh, Thor Ragnarok, because those are the two interactions at the same time that had nothing to do with each other. <laughs> But then at the same time, Rags was coming onto Wolf's podcast for the first time they'd just met. Like, that's pretty insane. That is a pretty nice coincidence. We all meet at exactly the same time for different reasons. It's just like, okay. <laughs> this is, that's yeah. a little too unlikely for me to think that lizards aren't involved, just saying. Um, Who knows? If because you, I hadn't met, done you and I met each other through Rags, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I saw that you were on, um, the, the, he, he was doing a stream on, um, uh, TLJ, and I'm like, I just saw, I'm pretty sure it was the day before, I was like, I just saw the whole, uh, the, the TLJ critique, and I really liked it, so I wanted to hop on. <laughs> See, that, that was the non-contrived meeting, guys, that's the, the, the one that was one well written. Well, was it contrived to, I mean, I watched it the day before, that's pretty... But the you know, reason exactly. we talked to each other would have been... Would, would, would you say it's to do with that? Or would you... Because, like, I thought that the first time we talked was because Rags had you and I both on to a stream. I think... Well, I think I... What happened was I saw that he was doing a TLJ stream and you were on him. Like, well, I wasn't just the watched the fucking... We met on. Because um, we met on... Oh, I was oh. playing Smite at the time. And Rags... It was a different topic. It was you, huh. him, me, and then two other people I didn't know. I think Fatanga was on that one, actually. I, think I so. vaguely remember. I and, think, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I I pursued you after it. I was like Greenman. Yes. Let us discuss movies. Or whatever. And then the rest is history. <laughs> yep. And um, yeah. It's just fun to think about how you met each of these these sort of people because it's uh, it it feels like it's so weird that there was a time when it, all of us knew nothing about each other. <laughs> it does seem weird. It um, rushed, Yeah. Like, I know, it gets brought up every once in a while, but, like, I only met Metal because I was annoyed at how someone treated him. That was it. <laughs> like, it wasn't that I was actually oh, really? interested in speaking to him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've told you this, right? It was, uh... It, it was still a... It feels like a coincidence, in retrospect. It's like, I was just watching random streamers, and there was a guy streaming Operator of Time, I think. Like, yeah. This is when I, I think this is when I was first finding out about Twitch, more significantly as, like... Intending to stream on it rather than just watching yeah. it. And I was like, what do people do? How do they get started and stuff? And I was just looking at smaller streamers, seeing what they're up to. And then um, I talked enough in that stream to the point where the guy was like happy with my, I guess, chatting and made me a mod. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm a mod. My now. God, this, this sounds like the Vosh origin story, but you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was I was just like, this is neat. And then uh, I think, I can't remember if I ever got into calls with that streamer, but um, I severely lost interest in the streamer. He became, it became clear he was not a good person, let's put it that way. Um, oh boy. <laughs> like, but, well, I mean, this would be one of the main examples. Uh, you know, Metal was just one day just happened to notice there was a guy called Metal Commander who was also a, a mod in the, in the stream, and I was just like, it's whatever, I don't talk to most of the other mods, I just chill out there every once in a while. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, you know, just days go by, different things happen, and I was in this very room I'm in right now, that's how long I've been in this house. Uh, I remember waking up, going on my phone, being like, oh, he's streaming, neat, and I think I was just waking up, and I heard him... Getting a little pissed off, and I was like, what's going on? I want to read, and it's because, oh uh... Metal made a huge mistake. That piece of shit. He said... After, like, an hour of moderating, I gotta head off. Because I'm gonna start up my stream, I'll see you guys later. Huge mistake. I, oh my... You're not telling me that this <laughs> fuck, like, actually got mad about that, are you? I could have sworn I dodged this before, but now I'm actually excited that you don't. You probably have. So, uh, you probably <laughs> have. Yeah. The, Jesus yeah, the Christ. idea is that he was like, fuck you for promoting your own shit, and then he banned Metal. Um, what a cunt! I know, that like, Metal had modded for his stream, but I was just like, did that just happen? And I clarified, I was just like, wait, what are you, sorry, what are you doing? He was just like, there is a rule, you cannot fucking self-promote on my stream. And then I was like, oh. Is this dark side Phil? Like, <laughs> what the hell is this? Like, I was gonna wow. say, any, anyone in chat, you could ask Mel about this story. He'll probably tell it pretty much the same. I was, um, <laughs> I was very upset. I was like, 
you don't do that shit to somebody. I don't think I said that to him at the time. I was like, I'm going to go and talk to the metal guy first, because I was kind of surprised that, you know, uh, banning him, the reason he did that was to take away the mod immediately and to purge the message. Like, that, that was oh, the goal. My. I think he, re he unbanned him and then he told him, like, that was your first warning, don't do that again. Oh, it's like, uh, that's going to be the last warning, friend. <laughs> like, well, that's, yeah, on. yeah, right. Um, and the thing that, that infuriated me the most, I, I remember, was that Mel put out a message saying, like, yeah, man, sorry, I completely, like, that, that's, I fucked up. Sorry about that. Right, and of and course, was, the reality like, is, no, you like, didn't. Nah. <laughs> You did a perfectly normal human thing to do, and it's just like this guy fucking bit your head off for no reason. So, uh, he was streaming, and I'm pretty sure this is a time when Metal had one viewer, and that was his, him booting up his own stream. And I was just like, the only guy in chat just be like, so... You think that was fine? Like, what just happened? I remember, he, I'm pretty sure he even had a face cam at that point, he was like, yeah? What was, what's, what's wrong? Uh, I think even mm -hmm. to the point where he was just like, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why are you making things hard for me? <laughs> um, and yeah, and I, and I just talked to him for a bit about how I was like, just re recanting events and be like, do you really think this is okay? It's like, that was really not okay. Um, and I feel it, like maybe, I'm sure you have told me this, it's just, I'm pretty sure I mix up, because you tell me, all the, like, I think you've told me a couple of stories about, like, the, 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 the people you had yeah. met through streaming and just the escapades with them. I've met a lot of fucking pieces of shit in my life. <laughs> well, I was, I was about to say, I'm not sure how much, like, how much you once said from what I remember, just in case. You oh, yeah, um, you it. don't have to be specific. I was just curious if you didn't actually remember this story particularly, because it's just, it's uh, just maybe amusing. I, did. I, I remember there was one where it was, like, a dude who was just basically a psychopath who, like, yeah, specifically was, who, who like, was trying to manipulate situations as much as possible to like get as much influence and money as possible. Yeah, the less said like, about that, the better. There are some people who I know who are fucking hyper assholes that I would rather not talk about publicly because they're still around. But don't worry, yeah, yeah, chat. Then none yeah. of these people you would know. That nobody in my current spheres. Um, but of course, yeah, metal was just a whole cherub. Uh, and um, after convincing him what happened to him was really fucking stupid and that the there was other people I knew at the time that streamed that would encourage and this is by the way what uh, the Phantom Menace do it's really neat they're like these people do this go check them out especially if you fucking enjoyed their time here which is the totally normal human being thing to do yeah not to act like an asshole until and then ban them and be like you're not allowed to promote yourself in my stream got it also, this is your first warning. What if- what the- <laughs> it, To me it just shows like major insecurity, because if you really think you're gonna destroy your chances of having a career by telling people someone in your stream also does a stream, like, do you really think they're even there for you at that point, if they're all gonna leave? <laughs> they're like, oh my mm. god, this guy does a stream, I'm you out. Should, you shouldn't be worried about that if you're actually good at what you do. Well, it's, it's amusing because I would argue that optically, like, that's just the bad choice anyway. If, if we could prove statistically that you are costing yourself something by telling other people that other streams exist, I should be like, yeah, but surely it's good for you optically to do it, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And that um, the more you do it, the more other people might do it for you, and therefore that could benefit you. If, like, like, if that's your motive, you know, to just yeah. strictly advance your interests as opposed to, like, the normal thing where you have friends who you like. I suppose and you want to see them succeed. If you're dealing with a piece of shit, you might be able to convince them that way. Just be like, this is better for you, okay? Right. Well, it's, um... <laughs> just trying to convince I... them to do a perfectly normal, nice thing by telling them it's well, gonna yeah, benefit it's... them. I don't... Yeah, it's... It, there's a lot of benefits to being nice that are beneficial to you financially, but the main one should be that it just... It's, a, it's the right thing to do. And if we want to make it a little bit more selfish, it makes you feel good. Yeah, I don't see why I wouldn't. I, um, as far as I'm concerned, it just makes sense. If, if I'm like, listen, if you listen to this, you know, big Bill the Reviewer in EFAP today and you thought he was pretty insightful, it's just like, he does stuff here, go check him out if you want to. Like, why wouldn't? Mm -hmm. That's just useful information. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't, I don't see the detriment in, in yeah, I don't, I don't see Because what frustrates anybody... me is that, um, it wasn't a random person. Which, by the way, right. still, like, you can still be chill on that, you know, you don't have to fucking blow a gasket because someone in chat says, I do streaming, by the way. <laughs> like, you'll be fine, yeah, I like, think. Oh my god, like, um, sure the fuck out. But, uh, but someone who's helped support your channel actively as a moderator, like, why would you... You know? Like, what's going yeah. on, dude? Like, um, and yeah, so I think we got into a, a voice call about that, specifically. And then the next day, I think I... 
Because I wanted to talk to him about some video game, and then literally I can't remember how, but we became people who talk to each other every single day. Yeah, it just, wow, well, it just happens, naturally. Yeah. Um, but I like so it as an origin story, it amuses me that I could never have met Metal if that guy wasn't a cunt to him. Like, that's all that it required. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise you wouldn't have... Yeah, potentially. Wow, well, probably would have been less likely. You think, consequentially, right, like, if I, if he hadn't said that to Metal, I wonder how different Metal's life might be, because, like, thanks to knowing me, I force him to watch fucking shit tons of movies and TV all the time. And that's, like, a big <laughs> aspect of his life. Yeah, at this point. I think he likes doing EFAB on his own stream, which has probably been encouraged by, uh, being upset, being around people who are obsessed with media. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> It's all interesting to see how it all begins. Yeah. The long finds a way. Uh, Frel, marry, kill, Anya, Cordelia, Amy. Hey, we can um, answer that, because nobody's here that <laughs> like, it would be in any way a spoiler. Wait, what, was the, what were the three, sorry? Well, they said uh, Frel, marry, kill, and Frel, I think, in, in Farscape means fuck. So. Okay. Um, Anya, Cordelia, yeah, but... and Amy. So the problem with Cordelia is it depends on the era. Um, I, man, yeah, it does. It, it does. Um... Season 1 and 2, and even 3, Cordelia for Buffy is not so great. She's kind of an airhead. Um, she's got potential, <laughs> obviously. I feel like I'd want to marry, like, season... 3, um, Cordelia. Season three of Angel. Angel. Yeah. Angel. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah, like top She's pretty that great point. at that point. I would even um, argue where... Angel season five called Dealer is pretty incredible too. I think she's uh... I think Wait, who was the third one? Amy. Yeah, the rat. Oh. Um, she's um possibly the one I'd kill, I think. <laughs> I think I think I'm leaning towards that. She's pretty hot, but like I think I think uh, Anya's is yeah, Anya's I think I think the reason why I wouldn't want to marry Anya is just because I feel like it'd be quite difficult at times. Yeah, I mean, great I love is. Anya as a person, but I'd want her as a friend, not as a marriage thing. Yeah, or alternatively, to fuck. Sure. So, hence, hence my selection there. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. For, for a second, I, when I was like Amy, I'm like Amy Acker, so Fred. <laughs> like that was what I was going on in my head. Well, the thing is. Well, we know this person's gonna send those through now just because they know they can ask Buffy and Angel questions. <laughs> For the oh, moment. Well, I mean, if, 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 like, I had, if, if I could only, if I could have the pick of any of the, the, the wonderful ladies from, uh, Buffyverse? like, Buffy and Angel, it'd probably be Fred would be Mary. Nice and stable, friendly. She's super intelligent, yeah. super kind. So, yeah, she's she's pretty top tier human. Fantastic attitude. Yeah, she's she's pretty top tier. Um, um I feel like Buffy would just be exempt from Mary because I feel like she's got too many issues that she has to deal with. Yeah, I mean she's, um, a, she's a great gal, but like I don't know if she's she the kind of person I'd want to marry. I'd be. She's got her own life to live. <laughs> I just feel yeah. like you you do you boo. Um, so, we are done with 140 catching up, we're done with stream Oh my labs, god, finally! And we're caught up with, uh, today's stream, which takes us back oh, to wow. EFAB 127. <laughs> uh, how many, how many are there in 127 that we still need? Probably more than we'll be able to do today. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we have been gone for what, like, nine hours? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's how it be, I guess. Uh, yeah. In relation to the dum dum in chat, also you too, Adam, that did to question my knowledge on the T-Rex IQ and incur my wrath, I've got this to say to you, and it's dot dot dot. I don't know what was supposed to come after that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Either. Um, I'll give this dude takes balls to go on EFAP. Yeah, we're back to good old uh, super chats about that twin perfect. That was his name, wasn't it? Oh Christ, yeah. Good times. God. I mean, that's... Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put it that way, I've got it uh, Yeah, props to the guy for coming on, and, uh... Hi, Rag, sorry I couldn't donate the past few streams. I had no monies. 
No problemo. I need to apologize for not being able to donate. You do you. Check it out. Just chill with us while we talk about movies and games. It's all good. Um, correction. 3K losers. Enjoy it right now. Oh, yes. You referred to everybody here as the 2K losers. I don't know if chat ever oh, covered from that. Fuck, I can't remember every, every single thing he said. That he, was he said a lot of Ross. stupid shit. You <laughs> <laughs> smug Ross, okay? You smug Ross. It all makes sense. I like how that's meant to be an answer. Like, oh, the smug Ross. It's so that's, weird that I mean, you wouldn't, as a human being, right? Say we did developed language to represent sarcasm in, in EFAP as a whole. Um, and then we wanted, or oh, just not taking things seriously. Then you speak to someone who has no fucking, like, knowledge of that at all, because they're not in your community, and you still use that language? Like, why do you keep saying Smug Ross? What the fuck are you doing? Well, what does that mean to these other people? Like, exactly. Look, well, turn presumably they want you to have seen Friends, but then you also need to know what it means to say that, because you might it might not mean what you think it You know what I mean? Just fucking just say you weren't yeah. serious. Why wouldn't you just say you're not serious? Like a normal instead person. Of it, <laughs> instead of, oh, you know, Smug Ross. Smug like, Ross, dude. You're like, okay. Okay, I don't know what that means, and I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what Smug Ross means. Yeah, a lot of us are still wondering. Um, does take a big step back. I feel like it's... Uh, hmm. You know, sometimes I think, oh, it's unfortunate we don't remember the context, but then there's some where I'm like, I don't think you... this would have worked ever. <laughs> like, I don't know what this is. Uh, insert Oblivion NPC over Twin Perfect for the in inevitable George Lucas edition of EFAB 127. Mm. Oh, take a step back and literally F your own face, but it was split into two super chats. I think you could have done that in one. I uh, but, right. <laughs> yeah, that, god damn, I didn't get, yeah, I totally lost on me. Don't know what kind of Jack Horner bullshit power play you're trying to pull here, but animal facts is my territory. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like was, I understand that reference. Rags was, oh yes, yeah, Tropic Thunder. Uh, Rags was merciless, good, that's how it should be. <laughs> oh yeah, cause Rags was fucking furious. <laughs> Still to this that day, one. do not blame him. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I, it was. It's awkward because it's just like, um, what it, if you're just there saying it's not serious and like you don't want to talk about it? It's like, why were you on the internet talking about how much we suck? Yeah, and I think another thing to it is, um, if for example, you and I, you really want to know my opinion on fucking like, I don't know, Lego Star Wars, and you just ask me basic questions and I'm answering them like just really weirdly, you're like, oh, like, what do you think of the game then? Like, mechanically, is, is, is it right? I just go, um, you know, there's a lot you can do in it. Yeah, it's like, oh, I, um... Yeah, and you, you ask me, like, five ask different again. times, yeah. and like, you keep giving answers like that. Eventually, you're just gonna be like, what are we, what are we doing? Like, do you, are we having a conversation? What's happening? Like, what? Well, I think that's the... That, I mean, that was an interesting conversation to me, because I don't know that I've ever seen somebody who, like, talks about movies, like, so... Who has enough of a passion about movies to, like, make videos and put work into talking about them. Who is so unwilling to engage in a yeah. discussion about media. It was really bizarre. Um, because I, I totally understand if you're like a normie, but not if you make... Like, if you make videos on any topic, I would expect you to be interested enough that we can talk about it. Well, so this is a little bit of debate bro shit, but, um... This is something I've seen nondescript, vague debaters deal with online, right? But... A test, and I think it's a relatively fair test of good or bad faith, is when you can get a little clammed up in, in when people are doing like hypotheticals, analogies, or questions. And so, if you don't trust where they're going with something, and someone says, for example, to you, like, we can all agree that the OT are, uh, are be is, be is better than the sequels, right? But you've been asked that question in the context of a subject that you believe you are right on, but is unpopular. You'll start. Your brain might trick you into thinking like, "Wait, they're trying to trap you. They're trying to trap you. Don't say yes." It's like, which is why I was happening with him for sure. Yeah, he, he was avoiding commit. committing to fucking anything because he was worried that we were going to flip anything around. Now, technically speaking, yes, I was. Like that was the goal of the conversation, but not like, because I want to trick him, because I want him to fucking realize that all he's saying is nonsense. 
Well, I guess, uh, but if you don't want to get tricked, then fuck off. Like, don't have a <laughs> conversation. Don't shit on people on the internet, and then, like, they actually invite you on to talk, and you're like, I don't want to get trapped. It's like, so what? Because ultimately, when you say you don't want to get trapped, a lot of the time it means my position is actually, like, not good. Well, and if it gets exposed in this way, I'm screwed. I would prefer to maintain my cognitive dissonance, please. Yeah. Well, and yeah, just be honest, right? But, um... The problem yeah. is that the last thing you fucking want at that point, like, if you've said to yourself, I won't agree to anything because I can't be caught out in anything, that's all well and good for you if you believe that's the thing you want to do, but as soon as your opponents find out, they have no reason to fucking be here. Yeah. Like, which we like, found out pretty quickly. He's not committing to anything. It's just like, so yeah, I think we're done. <laughs> There's no point. Which mm -hmm. is obviously rag but, skip hey. to that ending pretty quick. I tried well, it's... for a lot longer. I think you did as well. Yeah, yeah, I, uh... I mean, <laughs> it can be tough, but like, yeah, you just try and engage in as good faith a manner as possible. Especially when, um, he couldn't really do that because his video had already made claims. And so now he had to either well, disavow the video yeah. or actually stand by claims. For example, things, people should get facts right about the films they're talking about. Like, <laughs> right, thank you, by the way, for committing to such a controversial position. But, um, you know... He was trying to avoid even that, but yeah, his video said that, so puts you in a bit of an awkward position. Yes, Rags was merciless, and I think there was plenty of reason to feel that he should have been. Um, uh, mm -hmm. It's complicated. I think we've been over this before, but like, because I don't perform one way in every single debate that's ever happened across EVAP, so it's always based on just who I'm dealing with, what the subject is. And possibly how patient I am as well. Just like I think it's subconscious, really. though. Like if you, if it, depending on who you're talking to, you'll give them more or less allowance. And I don't know that that's something you can control. Because someone would be like, well, "Well, you probably give your friends more allowance." It's like to a certain extent, yeah, but also kind of no. I think the explanation for that um, mostly is how good faith you think the person's being. For the most yeah, part. Yeah. Like. If I'm talking to people I know and like, I default to good faith, but if I don't know who you are, it's like 50-50, and depending on, you know, how how deep we get into the conversation, it, uh, you know, becomes more and more clear what's happening. Yeah, because in one case, uh, someone says something like, like, two, these two people, you both, you know, but both of them think the OT is uh, better than the sequels or whatever, but like, on one hand, you could be like, um, what the fuck is wrong with you? You can't admit the OT's better than the sequels, really. But on the other hand, you could be like, oh, maybe you th you're getting a little bit caught up on, like, Return of the Jedi and how... Do you think maybe, like, the yeah. biggest flaw in the OT is kind of comparable to some of the biggest flaws of the sequel trilogy? Because I think that could be fair. You know, depending on who you're talking to, you might have those reactions. Um, yeah, naturally. Yeah, and I was just going to say, sort of to go with what you were just saying, I think, which is... If a friend tells you something compared to a random, you might give the friend more... Uh, more, more patient because of the fact that you know that they should be engaging properly, but similarly, if a friend says something you know they know is stupid, then it might frustrate you much quicker than a stranger. Yeah, you like, might just jump on him straight away, like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I know you, you don't, don't think that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I found EFAP through Mola's TLJ critique. That movie annoyed me deeply. Uh, the Mola's many critiques gave me catharsis. Then EFAP happened. Thank you. No problem. It's been fun for us all. Um, hi, I saw a stream and stopped in to throw some money at you. Thanks for being awesome. Oh, thank you. Buddy. Just happened to see a stream happening. You, you toss a coin. Kind. Toss a shackle, or, you know, in the Whatever Rick and Morty universe. May be 25 using. schmeckles. <laughs> you know, the new season's coming out real soon. Oh gosh, we have we have so much to watch, Rainy. So much. Yeah, but like, I'm actually gonna prioritize Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I'm assuming we'll watch it together, right? That'll be. I'll yeah, yeah, that. definitely. Uh, ew, there goes Smug Ross. I assume that's when he left. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Guys, I would from imagine. The future, you should mentally prepare before you let this guy on. No, I'm too late. <laughs> Guys, I'm from the... <laughs> Imagine a super chat knob from the future, for real. Seriously, you need to... Don't let... You know, you gotta prepare, otherwise things won't go so well. 
Well, it, the problem is we would never believe they're from the future, so... <laughs> well, yeah, that's... Okay. It's, it, I mean, it is It is the South Park episode. Oh, wow! Like, really? It's reference to you stop doing drugs and you become the CEO of a company? It's like, now I really work hard to be successful. That's the spirit, buddy. Like, who do you think you're fooling, you like, asshole? <laughs> From now on, I'm gonna eat what I want and do drugs whenever I want. <laughs> Whatever, I do what I want. No, wait! And he just He's, immediately yeah. turns into a fat guy. <laughs> oh, there were so many funny jokes in that episode when, like, when uh, when Stan figured out it was fake, and he's like, I don't believe that he's from the future. And it's like, I'm gonna chop off my hand. If he's my future self, he'll, uh, you know, his hand would disappear. It's like, um, no, you don't want to go through life without an arm. It's like, well, maybe it's the arm I did drugs with. Here I go. I'm gonna do it. Ready's like, wait, yeah, uh, nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> and then he chops off his head and stare, and then he's like, oh my god, look! And then he chops off the dude's arm. And he's screaming because like his head did disappear. He is you from the future. While he's just screaming, yeah. like, oh Jesus Christ, help me! <laughs> Oh, then what was it? They yeah, because Cartman had a um, his business was um, smearing poo on uh, on the <laughs> on the parents' walls, and then when Stan was like, "No, I like that's stupid. That's the same thing that Brothers guys like." Oh, okay. Um, oh, right, this one's nice. Uh, what we'll do is we'll lure your parents out of the house, and then we'll kill them. We'll chop them up into little pieces and feed them to the dogs. It's like, how's that? How's that? like? Should we do that on Monday? One time you say it's too much, and one time it's, you know, it's not enough. It's like, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, Cartman. I'm out of here. I'm a professional, sir! Anyway, <laughs> just fucking... The fact that there were, like, different poop swatches for, like, nut and corn crunch. <laughs> and the baby green. I think that's what I find funny, is, like, whenever Cartman, like, is actually working hard... Like, Cartman... That's why he's such a great character. He's so fucking lazy, but, like... He works really hard when um when he puts his mind to it. Yeah. He's super smart when he puts his mind to it. Carmen's fucking awesome. Really impressive. Um when he's evil. He, he well, I mean obviously there was Scott Tenement as like the the peak yeah. example of that. That was like the episode that I feel like even though it's not my favorite episode, I feel like that's a uh if you were to say what is the best episode of South Park, that is a fair choice. I always want to default to something that I just remember from, like, almost in premise and concept, but, like, Imagination Land. I remember when I first saw that shit, it was just, like, fucking phenomenal. That was really for me. I, I, because I often say Season Wars 8. Well. Cartoon Wars was really good. I, I'm just trying to, because Season 8, uh, I mean, we talked about it earlier, but The Passion of the Jew, that was, like, a, that was a pretty good episode. In terms of, like, social commentary. Remember the, um, um the toilet no paper victims. parody of Silas Soul Labs? <laughs> yeah, and then Bob Brady was talking to this kid who was like trying to study him. Oh, and then and then Cartman takes Kyle out in the lake. He's like, "Come on, let's go for a swim." It's like, "Hey, can you help put these cinder blocks in the boat?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. So how are things going, Kyle? And then he starts hitting him with the wiffle bat. It's like it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Doing nothing. Stop like... tapping him on the head. Um. Oh, let me let me look up season eight because like I just want to read off the list of um of 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 episodes. I always think quintessential like South Park, and it's probably one of their most controversial seasons. They had several of the yeah good times with weapons that was really funny. Up at the down steroid, the one where Jimmy takes steroids and Cartman pretends he's mentally handicapped. <laughs> Oh, what was he? He's like, hey, there, I'm gonna be in the Special Olympics. <laughs> Fucking... And then he loses because he's fat. <laughs> he didn't think about that. It would... that there was that. And then, yeah, Passion of the Jew, that was a really good episode in terms of. I just found it interesting the dual perspective, how, like, Kyle is struggling with his identity. Um, and sort of, like, the message that he pulled from that movie just being, like, really, um, harmful to him. Um, mm -hmm. and of course, Carmen relishing it. Meanwhile, all, all, all Stan and Kenny care about is that they thought the movie sucked and they wanted their $20 yeah. back. <laughs> oh, no, it was $18, and they went to, when they went to Mel Gibson's house, He's like, oh crap, he's only got a 20. Like, you got $2, Kenny? 
they, they want to get the exact amount of chains. They don't want to steal two dollars from them. Yeah. Oh, and then the next one, you got F in the A, the one where we find out that Bud has accidentally killed like ten people in a tap dancing contest. <laughs> oh my god, Awesomeo! Yeah, that was season eight too. That was Awesomeo was like that. That episode is so funny. <laughs> like, I think I died the first time I watched it when um. Carmen and Butters got off. I'm remembering the um the episode where Carmen thinks he's dead and he convinces Butters he's a ghost. I'm pretty sure that was I'm pretty sure that is uh season eight at, oh no it's not season eight as well. Is but, he, like, um, he's yeah, a pissed at Butters for going along yeah. with it. <laughs> you told still... me I was a ghost. It's like I thought you were one. <laughs> um And then oh the Jeffersons, there was that episode in season eight, and then Goobacks, which I really like. Um the fact that they 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 just decide that making the world a better place is gay is gay. gay. <laughs> like it's gay and then being literally gay, so they decide to go back to the gay pile. <laughs> oh then do then of course the classic douche and turd. You're a turd sandwich. No no, I think you'll find that you are the turd sandwich. You're a turd sandwich. Sir, you are the turd sandwich. You're a turd sandwich. It's like uh, Turd Sandwich, can you let him finish the question? It's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, oh, wait, I, I, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> what a douche! And then I think it was like, uh, oh, now Turd Sandwich, like, what, what do you think we need to do to address the, um, like, I don't know, like, the budgetary issues in the, or, like, the food issues in the school cafeteria? And he's like, uh, you know, um, my, my opponent, that's a good question, and my opponent wouldn't even answer it. He just <laughs> talked long-winded for like, you know, 10 minutes or something. And it's like, all right, your time is up. It's funny, that's an example of like a Bojack joke, but done well. Because <laughs> they I don't mean, do it all the fucking time. Yeah, I would, I would downright say it's unfair to compare the shows because the fuck is phenomenal. <laughs> and then um, the, the next episode after that, Walmart. Fucking amazing episode. That, and it's funny because that's that's. Uh, I feel like that episode stuck in my mind in terms of and it's um, microtransit. Oh, I was gonna say it's not the Black Friday one, is it? No, the the, the Walmart one is where a Walmart store comes to, like the whole episode treats Walmart as this crazy like supernatural um, yeah, monster yeah. that comes to towns like. And everyone gets a job know, there, the, right? Yeah, well, because yeah, it's like, like Randy is so obsessed with Walmart that he quits his job. So that he can, um, so that he can work at Walmart and get shit for a discount. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember the, the main, like, there was a part where Randy wakes up in the middle of the night and presses up his naked nipples against the window while he's staring at Walmart. Um, and then the next one, Preschool, which is the one that I think has come up a couple of times when talking about- Oh, wait, no, that's, that's, uh, that's epic meme. Um, no, that's the episode where, um... They they frame a kid when he was th like three. They accidentally set a teacher on fire, and that kid went to jail. He comes out, and he's coming to get him. Um, that was a funny one. Quest for ratings, which apparently that episode was just the writers had run out of ideas, and so they they just did an episode that was about running out of ideas. <laughs> um, the stupid spoiled whore video playset where that Butter's parents want to sell him to Paris Hilton. Um. I feel like that's peak episode for how shitty parents they are. Um, and then number 13, Cartman's Incredible Gift, where Cartman believes he's a psychic. And he becomes a psychic detective. And he frames the other psychic detectives for, uh, for all of the murders that are being committed. And then, of course, he gets abducted by the Do You See Man. Do you see? <laughs> Do you... Do you see? Ah, yes, yes, I see! And then... The finale, Woodland Critter Christmas, classic. That's why I like it so much. It's got like a broad range of like just really funny, good, simple like stories. And then like a few of the episodes are just like clear examples of what South Park is like about at its best in terms of social commentary. Yeah. I, I love this show. It's uh, I adore South Park. Specifically, like, this particular era, seasons 5 through 10, it's, like, peak. That was, uh, that was, like, 15 minutes of me just quoting South Park memes, I'm sorry. That was, <laughs> that was sure a lot of... I'm sure plenty of people who know their South Park who are very happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um. 
Uh, oh, well, something I didn't know about this season that was interesting was um, this was the season that they wrote either as they were making Team America or after they'd finished it. And apparently this is like a season where they just didn't have ideas. But like, I can't see that in these episodes. Like, I can't believe that they just made a feature film. Um, like in this year, and then they wrote several of the best episodes of South Park, like in, in the one season. Um, that's pretty nuts. Yeah. Uh, I found EFAB after I found Molar, Wolf, and Rags all independently in the same week in reference to media videos. So when I found EFAB, it blew my mind. I think it would at that point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goddamn. Um, Springy was nice, Southpaw did better as well. Yeah, I think everybody oh. saw it as everybody was the good cop, Rags was the bad cop, I think. Just relatively. <laughs> um, I, I remember getting mad at a couple of points, but um... Yeah. That that is that's that's tough for me, like to get really upset <laughs> like when I'm talking to somebody about something. The only time that happens when it feels like we're really not getting anywhere at all. We're just wasting time. Yeah. Especially if you feel like you're almost catching them out in it, like that they're fucking yeah. with you. They're not actually here to talk. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Uh, so whatever you're thinking, you better think again. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to head down there and rain an ungodly firestorm upon you. Oh, this is still referencing Tropic Thunder. Uh, personally, <laughs> Twin Perfect strikes me as the guy who that's only promoting think tank indoctrination to grasp an audience of sort for that sweet revenue. I think it's it's much more simple than that. He I really likes the Snyder movies, and he thinks that the standard criticisms he's found from people are really inaccurate. And so he got a big old boner to dismantle them. Unfortunately, a lot of his responses were really shit. Like, yeah, pretty Lois astounding didn't get shit. affected by the pull because she hasn't been to the Phantom Zone or something, right? That was the logic. Even though I'm pretty sure... Oh, yeah, I think that was the logic and I, I just don't get it. Well, um, even though my memory's fading of that fucking movie at this point, uh, as we pointed out, everything in the area is being affected by it. Yeah, cars and shit that weren't even getting taken to the Phantom Zone. Well, then the logic is like, well, they were in the blast zone of this machine, and it's just like, well, so is she. It's just like, just, yeah. like, what are we doing? We are making excuses for the film, what we're doing. Because if she was affected by the Phantom Zone sucky thing, then she would have just died. Um, but there's a lot of that just filled. Well, you missed a thing. Yeah. What did I miss? Um, boo, 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 boo. Oh, hi. I saw a stream and stopped in to throw... No, wait. I, d I did catch that one. Which one did I miss? Lies and slander. Unless you're talking about the video game, in which case, yeah, I probably missed something. I'm just trying to make sure I get all of the, um, the mini kits, though. I think we're doing all right. Um, you're going to have to call the fucking... Paleontological Society and get a fucking res research permit to keep me from fucking destroying you. You really are quoting all of Tropic Thunder the big speech. I don't blame <laughs> you, it's a good one. Donald Trump will return in Avengers Endgame. Well then, where was he, huh? Where was he? That's right. Ridiculous. Now, there's a door you didn't open to finish building the ATST. I don't know that it matters though, because I don't I don't I think we've got all the mini kits in this area. I was gonna care about the ATST, but I don't I don't think we have to. I think we'll be fine, guys. Um Sucker Punch for EFAP movies? Oh. Fuck please no. <laughs> Maybe I don't if watch for it. some reason there's like a reignition of love for that film because of Snyderoid stuff. Snyder bots oh, I don't Christ. Know. Um, I can't bear that. I'm sure it's not as bad as um you know his other stuff. Dude, I'm pretty sure that film was like just complete nonsense. Well, yeah, but. No. Probably won't be as bad as one of the dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a fair point, yeah. Hi, Rags. Hi, Moolah. Seeing as the DC live actions be shit, have either of you seen the animated movies and if so, thoughts? Also, do you think animation gets away with problems in writing more so than other media? That's just a yes. There's not even a question. Yes, unfortunately. I don't even know anyone who disagree with that. Animation. 
as a medium is able to get away with a lot of stuff by the nature of like you watch it and you're just like well there's some stuff here that i'm just gonna have to believe is happening a particular way rather than what is literally being put on screen um real life stuff tends to not have that problem because it's literally real life stuff when you like fantasy and sci-fi where they'll have made up stuff and so it has to comport but um uh animation though at the same time can often be undervalued in terms of how great the writing is because it's animated. A lot of Simpsons, like, for instance. Yeah, they'd be like, "Why? Well, it's just a fucking shitty little cartoon." Like, what do you mean? And you're like, "Oh, well, it's still written." Um, as for if I've seen any of the animated DC movies, as I've said before, I've seen Flashpoint Paradox. Is that what it was called? I think so. No um, idea. And I saw. I forget the names of the ones I've seen now, but I liked um, I liked a lot of them. I really like Flashpoint Paradox, but I can no longer confirm if it's any good. It's been so long. Yeah. Man of Steel is just an angry god. TP cannot offend or else. Oh, well, this is the other thing. Uh, EFAP's not built on a particular IP. A lot of people thought it was. Like, we could never say anything bad about the OT, and we always have to say bad things about anything Disney Star Wars. Like, that's... They're our gods. We have to follow that shit. Um, obviously, we still shit on the OT if we think it's poorly written in places, and um, we actually were praiseworthy of Mandalorian's ep first episode that came out. Um, yeah, um, be weird I'm if not sure if we are now. Be that. No, we're not now. We're strictly not now. Rags <laughs> has dismantled yeah. the fuck out of that episode. Um, point being, we don't have a god. Uh, there's no, no no IP is safe sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Nor is anything safe permanently. Like, we could judge something to be good or bad and then be like, oh fuck, there was something we didn't realize at all about this thing. Um, Whoop. Lord human perception, you know? It, it is. It be a thing. However... Quinn Perfect's channel, like I think his biggest videos were all based on, um, or a lot of his fan base were based around Man of Steel and BVS being good. Um, and that is a passionate fucking fan base. When you get those guys in, you're gonna not want to criticize that film ever again. Which is not a good place to put yourself in as a, uh, no. as a creator, but you know, you made you bad. Yeah, and so in a way it kind of makes sense that we never got through to him at all, I guess. Um, but that's why I, wow. saw, um, yeah. I saw it being a victory when he was like, you, you see, Superman didn't boop him in space because he tried that once and it didn't work. That was his logic. So you know it's not going to take long for us to dismantle that and then have him admit it's a flaw. Because he's accepted by using that defense that it would be a flaw if it were true. Mm -hmm. Can't get away with saying, no, no, I wouldn't. It's not a flaw at all anyway, because that doesn't matter. It's, the po it's not the point. Remember he started saying that? It's not the point of the scene. I don't remember that part. It was like, you got to pay attention to like what, what the point of the scene is. What are they trying to tell oh, you, not he's... what literally happens. That's right. He is 100% against reader response. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> fuck. Death of the author. I swear, the first time it was sarcastic earlier in this stream. That was on purpose. But I keep, I keep getting it wrong and it's infuriating. Well, uh, yeah, he was 100% against it, which is... Bizarre, Absurd. and I don't know that I'm ever going to meet anybody who is 100% against it again, because that is so uncommon. And the sad part is, like, there's a reason that's uncommon, it's because it's untenable. <laughs> Nobody well, thinks BRB. that. BRB. Yep. No sacred cows. Indeed. Oh, this feels so cruel, but I am Vader, so it's fine. Um... I love the scene where they cut away from Doomsday Fight to show Lois running and then tripping up in a puddle. Good stuff. Hell yeah, man. Get him at some top-notch action. Why would you want anything else? Frictional Games was more as God, and look how that turned out. Yup. Um, Theo, you and the other weebs need to do an anime EFAB. I'm giving you shackles to make this possible. <laughs> you know, maybe. Hold out hope. Could happen. So why is Lex Luthor like the Joker? Um, well, the the rationale <clears throat> from what we saw in the um, sort of behind the scenes stuff, if you can call it that, was uh, like, oh, you know, we, we, we want to have a, a billionaire, but of the modern age. And if you look at Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos, they're these younger men who are much more tech savvy 
um, like Elon Musk as well, and so they wanted to match him to that, as if the fucking like more classic billionaire guy doesn't exist anymore. <clears throat> so ignoring that and going with the whole Mark Zuckerberg thing, you still made him a crazy nonsense man, who to this day is fucking disgust as to what the fuck his motivation was. I still feel like that's one of the most telling examples of just, like, how much you failed when no one can agree. Like, of the people who liked the movie, they can't agree what the fuck even happened. Let alone the people who don't. So the short version of that is, I don't know why they made him like the Joker. The bungled version of what they were hoping to make in some other way. No false idols, only the long. Zuckerberg is an insane android. I reckon he's just a regular android. Trying to make his way in this world. He became self aware, you know? Uh, if you can't shove things in people's mouths, how would Maeve have defeated Black Noir? You know what? You're right. You cracked the code. Also, we need three more mini kits. I hope we find them. Because these levels are much longer than the first games, I think, the original trilogy ones, which is cool. Um, sometimes you're like, oh god, I really hope we don't miss one. Also, the money in this game is the uh, levels significantly, I think. Oh, this guy just killed Darth Vader. I wonder how he feels about that. <clears throat> uh, Goodell Commission. I can't see how people don't get this, then say something stupid. Reference to the Jolly Rancher scene. Oh, that's, uh, I don't know if that made it into the notes at the time, but it might have. I like you boys, but I disagree with your anime takes, though I can understand why. Except Theo, he's a good boy. Hey, Theo is hypercritical of a lot of anime, okay? And, um, you know, talking about the tropes of anime and, like, and the typical ones, there's a lot of those for, like, movies as well. Um, and then more specifically, like, if you're talking about Western-centric movies or foreign films, they all have their tropes. Just, um, jumping to anime's tropes is an easy way to explain why anime can often be unappealing. I would imagine. Still going solo, nice. Yeah, well, I'm sure Fring will be back any moment, but I'm not sure how much longer I can last. Um, I will check in a moment how much of 127s is left. If there's a chance that we can finish them, I think I might just go for it. Doomsday, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Zod Snap Neck. What? <laughs> I don't know I don't believe about that. But... Uh, Lex Luthor Rock in the Book look. Oh, yes. Rags, I think, definitely pointed that out. Or oh, somebody did. Hi, Rags, would you rather let... Oh, well, uh, I'll keep that for when Mr. Rags is... Uh, well, we're on a different catch-up, I suppose. Uh, Lex already created a Kryptonian deformity bizarro. Kryptonian deformity, if that didn't come through. And yeah, um, I think we had a different Super Chat asking before, like, why didn't they do bizarro instead of Doomsday when it... M lines up better, I, I think is what people argue, but um, the video argued that there are forms of Doomsday that do line up with uh, Snyder's vision, and this is the problem for us over at EFAP. I guess we're not arguing whether or not it was a good idea adaptationally, but uh, for the people who claim one way or the other, we are then just at your uh, mercy in terms of, like, oh, is that accurate? Is it not? I don't know. Uh, don't Doomsday back spikes prevent grappling? Well, the thing is, we, he's he does it, Superman, in, in, in the story. So, it's uh, definitely got a, a way of grappling him in, in something. And I think if you look at him, uh, there's a way. If you remember, the fucking Amazonians managed to find a way to grapple Steppenwolf, despite his edgy armor, so... You know, so you put, the right, put, the, put your fingers in the right place, and you can get yourself a nice grip. Uh, which is better, Star Wars or Star Trek, and why is it Star Trek? I think typically because Star Trek overall has more good than bad... Well, I guess the ratio should be is better than Star Wars is. Star Wars' ratio is really fucking bad, guys. Really bad. A lot of Star Wars' legacy rests on the OT, and that shit stopped a long time ago. Galaxy far, far away, so... Uh, Star Trek, though... Had a lot of good stuff coming out in lots of different places and across different eras. So I imagine that's probably why Star Trek, Star Wars had more good stuff. We'd probably be okay. But as for which is better, just both at their peak. 
Um, I really do think that comes down to taste, but I think a lot of people like to think Star Trek wins out because it's more of a thinking man's art than uh, Star Wars is, I think. But um, do you value that strictly over something that's as valuable as escapist material that inspires you like Star Wars does? It's, uh, it can be complicated. I don't know which people definitely choose. Um, to add to the sea of cool, spooky things, the Magnus Archives is an anthology of scary events that eventually all tie together. It was fun to listen to and solve the meaning behind the recordings themselves. Check it out, maybe. That sounds very uh, different than the average sort of way that I engage with media, but I'm not against it. But uh, as with all recommendations, this channel is just like a, yeah, maybe, at some point, perhaps. Star Wars ratio is a low bar. Would say so. Um, but then again, you know, I, I don't know definitively if I was to calculate all of it, if Star Trek's is better or worse, because there might be more bad Star Trek than there is more bad Star Wars. The thing is, there's so little good Star Wars that it's like hard to definitively tell. Um, a combo of Lex and Zod's DNA should create a combo of Lex and Zod, a skinny red-headed Zod that yells, I will fight him. I don't think that would have been as engaging for viewers, though. What do you reckon? I think we would have gotten complaints from a lot of people. Oh, that's just an invisible wall. Okay. Fine game. I didn't even want to go over there. Southpaw, I know that the Death Spike Doc Ock has a, is a problem in Spider-Man 2 Electric Boogaloo, but would you admit that the Sun thing he makes in the film is a bigger problem? That sounds familiar to me as a question. I don't know if I've read these before. But, <clears throat> um, I think the sun thing, depending on what your criticism is of it, uh, could be a more significant problem. Of course, Spider-Man being speared at every moment in that film is a significant issue, but if, with how we understand the sun machine to work, uh, should be destroying the entire world or something, it's like, yeah, you could say that's a bigger problem. I don't know. <laughs> have to be reminded of what the problems are with that, to be honest. You guys hear about Warner Brothers potentially- I am ah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hear about Warner Brothers potentially developing a Superman reboot with J.J. Abrams? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's clearly an old one. Yep. Uh, yes, that is happening, and um, yeah, I'm sure we'll check it out when it comes out. Who knows what we'll get. There's a video that you guys need to cover on EFAB. It's called Godzilla vs. Realism. It is the biggest whataboutism video on the Monsterverse. Uh, it's perfect for an episode. Um, I'll see about trying to get a look-see at it. People's... All right, that's back. another subject where people's brains go dead when you try and talk about, like, the writing in Godzilla, for example. They're like... It's Godzilla! It's just meant to be stupid. <laughs> I just want that alternate universe where there's a really well-written Godzilla and everyone fucking loves it because they can- You know what it is, right? When we go for, um... I love me some Godzilla. I love watching him battle down different monsters. I love watching him destroy buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what if you could say, I love watching all of that. Also, the film is fucking inc incredible and it means a lot and it has incredible characters and Godzilla is actually kind of a character in the film and what he does doesn't just match the events and what he desires, but it also means a lot if you think about it in a particular way. Like, do you guys yeah. really hate that universe or something? Well, <laughs> is this a worse... Yeah, exactly. You don't... What What is lost by having a well-written Godzilla movie? That's my question. Like, I just don't think we've ever actually had a situation where someone goes, Fuck! That's not supposed to be well-written. What are you doing? <laughs> well, like, yeah, oh. it's, it's a fantasy world. Well-written? Ugh! I wanted it to be it. shitty. <laughs> um, Jesse Eisenberg's character should have been an unhinged Riddler instead of Lex Luthor Jr. in a much better movie that's well written. A lot of people, because I had one just now that said, like, why was he Joker? And it's like, yeah, he was a crazy person, is what we're seeing the common thread here is. Um... Because the thing about Riddler and Joker is as much as they're kind of unhinged crazy people, they usually execute plans that are impressive. Yeah, Luther generally. was just a fucking idiot. Like, he was insane and stupid. And so I don't know that you want to say that that's like he was a Joker or he was a Riddler. I suppose you could say, like, you could picture him playing those characters in a well-written movie. I wouldn't want him as the Riddler, though, to be honest. I don't want him as Riddler. 
I mean, I wouldn't choose uh, him. Maybe, maybe but, it'd be different. Uh, but you know, it's, maybe it's not the right direction. I guess it's, right it's not script, Eisenberg's fault. Yeah. I think that's the main thing. It's not his fault. It's really bad material. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how much I want to blame him for that. Um, maybe he could have done a really great job. We'll never know, though. Yeah. I wasn't going to drink tonight because I'm replacing my backyard fence tomorrow. I'm now five beers and three shots deep thanks to this donut. Oh, I think they're talking about <laughs> Twin Perfect, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a ride. It really was. Uh, Wanna have to defend BVS? Cosmo has a video on it. We ended up covering that. Right? Well, no, uh, we covered we? someone's response so. to it. That's what we did. Oh, yeah. It was it was a fascinating instance where, like, both people managed to get it wrong. Like, someone makes a bad point, and then someone responds to it in a really fucking dumb way. And so you have to, like, deconstruct both of them. Mm. Um, Could be I can't nicer. remember who out of the two of them won out in that. I could have sworn it was Cosmonaut, actually. Um, um it probably was, because, like, Cosmonaut was saying it was bad. So, you know. And some of his criticisms were actually true. Like, yep, yeah, you nailed that one. Good job. I guess it's just disappointing that only some of them were true when it should have been a, a sizable portion of them, but, you know, you... you, you well, I mean, you I honestly think that. we may have helped the discourse in terms of, like, approaching criticisms of Man of Steel, because I'm not sure how many times I even heard people talking about the fact that he erased the future of Krypton, Kryptonia, oh, as he said. well, I think it's a problem of Man of Steel came out and we people just didn't really pay attention because... There wasn't really a DC universe yet for people to be invested in. It was kind of just, it was it was just kind of um. It's like oh, it's just a superhero movie, just all on its own, lonesome. I think that helped that movie a lot. Yeah, and then it started getting like reloved. Like it was just this weird reignition of appreciation for it. And I think that was, I like, think, it was happening I think similar that time was... to us uh, rechecking it out. I think it was, yeah, because it was it was around the Snyder Cut time. People didn't really, I think that's the interesting thing to think about. People didn't really defend, like, Snyder movies when they came out. No. That is, like, a, a recent thing after Justice League. Like, people just accepted that they were crap. And we were in this weird era where, like, we're now saying that he's a better storyteller than Joss Whedon. I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't. Pretty it's insane. hard not to bring it back uh, to that, but yeah. This is the thing. Annoying. I think the most agreeable thing I could say to most people is that Avengers is an example of Joss Whedon being a great storyteller. I'd be like, do you really think anything Snyder has done is better than Avengers? And at that point, if they say yes, it'd be like, well, we probably have to break down some stuff, I guess. I think the problem is that, um, well, it's complicated because it's mainly just people who I feel have something to prove in terms of their intelligence. Who will say that the Snyder movie is good? Like, I'm not sure that you're gonna see anybody who is like watching French art films who's gonna sit there and say that there is something actually deeply valuable about Snyder's work. I, I, I don't think that's the case. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these get analyzed in French coffee shops where they're talking about like <laughs> these obscure French movies and Snyder's work. I'm sure there's people who genuinely just like them. It's for taking them on like a surface level, they just enjoy watching Cavill's Superman and Batfleck and they just think that it works as a standard sort of my heroes are saving people and I understand them, blah blah blah. But uh, there are a lot of people who are like, no, you don't understand, like, they are deep films with a lot of themes that are very difficult for a lot of normal people to put together and that you can watch these videos that explain it and then you do and it's the most embarrassing shit you've ever seen. There was a painting that kind of looks like this painting from this book. You see? <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> Which I think that's what the meme was with Mel that people will see us react to tomorrow, I guess. Uh, the, the idea being that like you just show a bunch of bullshit and you're like, you see Zack Snyder's smart, right? You understand? Yes? And you're like, D sure. And I don't know that I've ever seen anyone defended that way where it's not about um, how the story connects to these references and what you can draw out of it because of that. Rather, it is, it's a reference. That's, that's just, that's good. But it's a reference. I hope you enjoy that sort of thing. Um, uh, my brain is melting. Is hadn't, is hadn't a, that's a word. It's the, the short version of had not, right? Yeah, I'm just, it's it's a valid contraction though, right? As far as I know, but I am also... It just looks weird to me as I'm tired, staring so. at it. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'm just doing the, uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm working on the comic. So mm -hmm. there's a spoiler for page six. Hadn't is a word that is used. Damn it, Fringy, why'd you tell him that? God, and, and get, by the way, for the comic where the text is different sizes because I didn't fucking figure out ahead of time <laughs> what size I needed to make everything. The text boxes and everything. God damn. You fool. I'm an idiot. Um. Do, 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 do. Theo, will you please shut up and let others talk? I know, Theo's a fucking asshole when he comes on these streams. He just constantly talks over everyone. Kind of insane. And whenever he speaks, it's always on something completely irrelevant. I have to ban him from EFAP, I think. That'll learn him. Mm -hmm. In Superman, the animated series, there's a hitman that tries to kill Clark by a car bomb, which he obviously survives. At the end of the episode, the hitman is about to be executed by a gas chamber and says something to the effect. Damn. Oh boy. That sounds like it would be, like, especially if you base it in a time where they were definitely still doing those sorts of executions. That would be a pretty interesting sort of plotline to, if you want your investigator to try and be looking for who this real Superman is, and that's a piece of information. Someone apparently tried to kill Clark Kent, and he survived the bombing. And he does kind of look like Superman. That would be a, probably a good place to start in terms of their uh, betrayal mm -hmm. him. Interrupting Super Chat. Wow. Um, I don't know how he survived. There's no way he could have, unless he's Superman. The actual argument to make is someone has to do sports and Clark isn't important enough to get his own investigative story. People are stupid. Um, this is in regards to Clark wanting to cover the Batman story, right? So, I think so, the problem isn't that Clark wants to do his own story and thus Perry wants him to cover sports. I think that's fine, that he's like, no, 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 you do sports, I'm not letting you do whatever you want. However, the problem is, covering the Batman, branding criminals in the streets of Gotham, it's more that's it, that's your biggest story sport. right there. Yeah. Especially since he was known as a hero there for 20 years, Are you fucking kidding me? This is huge. And the idea that you don't want Clark to cover it in this dead club of the sports is one thing, but having no one cover it at all, that's just stupid. And then you have Perry be like, nobody's interested in that. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you say so. Yeah, if you say so, Perry. The thing, man, I think we said this, but if it happened IRL, that would be a huge story that everyone would be talking about. There's a man dressed as a bat, branding criminals as a vigilante in some city in some part of the world. I, I don't even know how you could find that story uninteresting. Like, how? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, he made him half a man, but couldn't be stuffed to finish the job and make the other half, so now he's just sitting there with half a man like, what the hell, man? I have no idea what that's referencing. Me either. Stops watching four hours ago, sees it still on. Must be doing super chats now, still covering videos. Huh? Yeah, I know. Some of them EFAPs go for a long time. Uh, Fringy, how do you feel about Australian super funds? Uh, what? Oh, oh, fuck me. I remember this reference. This is, um, when I get to arguments with chat about my chat about, um, about superannuation. Ah. Uh -huh. I don't want to get into it again. <laughs> it's, it's too much to bear. Oh my god, I'm in a theater. A bonus room. Uh, what are your thoughts on Watchmen? Um, I have thoughts on Watchmen. I haven't read Watchmen yet. I still, I still have it, but um, yeah, I haven't read it yet. Um, as for me, I I'm, I pretty much line up with Critical Drinker's video on it, if you wanted to know. Like, the problem is I haven't seen it in so long that 
I'm not sure that I line up with that, but I, I guess I think I do. Uh, I just, like, I remember liking the film. It's probably the only film of Zack Snyder's left that I still like, because I don't, I didn't really like 300 upon rewatching it. I thought it was kind of meh. Um, I remembered it being a lot more fun action than there actually was. And the stuff in between is kind of silly. And a lot of the battle tactics are not things I understand at all. So it starts to sort of diminish what you were enjoying that whole time, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I, I took for, like, I, I remember liking Watchmen. I don't know if I st still would, though. Uh, see Henry Cavill movies without Jay Longbone? For shame, oh lord. Well, that's the thing, we can't have her or uh, that Star Wars guild. They'll thirst too much. We can't have that. It'll distract us from our objective endeavors. Ruining the entire process. Also, holy shit, the amount of money you get in free play mode. I suppose it makes some sense. We'll be able to afford that times two in no time, folks. And then we'll be making shit tons of money. And I think the times two actually adds to the true Jedi, which almost seems like just pure cheating, but that's how they expect you to do it, I guess. And we only need one more mini kit. Uh, somehow, Epstein killed himself. Oh, damn right. Probably cut from the film, but I'm sure he would have said that. Hmm. Okay, uh, wow, you guys are still live. Well, I guess the two long men will endure. Mauler, I really enjoyed Bioshock. Fringy, your comics are great. Say hi to Rags. Oh, wow, thanks. I'd, uh, I appreciate it. Um, that's, that's very kind of you to say. As for, uh, Bioshock? Yeah, I, I really do love Bioshock. It's a really cool game. I think there would be plenty to criticize if one was to go about it, like, pretty easily in a lot of ways, but, man, like, I would argue it's just I, I'm pretty biased in favor of it just because of Rapture. I really love Rapture. Rapture is an amazing setting. The Not kind just of the setting. I, mean, that I I want to like I want it back. Or re I wouldn't even yeah. be against like Bioshock being completely remade for like the modern era with a lot of the same stuff, but tweaking it to be better. I already know that's never going to happen in terms of. Like, it, it won't happen, it'll only be worse, right? Like, they're remaking Resident Evil 4, and I'm very worried about that. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, it would be so cool, because, like, a peak would be, you know, Rapture in its prime, it falls apart, and then a game like what runs with, with Bioshock 1, and all in VR, but, like, with top-level, like, technology. Getting immersed, and maybe even an RPG. Just, like, peak experience of uh, escapism. Being a guy in the 50s yeah. who decides to go to Rapture because you want you like the idea of the city or something, and you get to choose between a whole set of characters that have different like perks and stuff. I'm talking just the kind of game that's just not going to exist, but it would be really cool if it did. Also, I have all the mini kits. Which means I think I'm just gonna, gonna leave if all I all of them in the game or just this level. Oh, this level, I mean. It means that we're safe to go now if I can figure out. Where I'm supposed to go. So, uh, you know, I I do like the way that we spell things in uh in in both Australia and Albion. You know, having honor with a U and OU, but um, meter confuses me. The fact that it's because I've written down square kilometer and it's square kilometer. If we were yeah. to read it like, I get caught up on that, that one a whole bunch. I, I don't, forget. but I find it weird. Um, oh, I, I just, I literally often, my brain, like, mixes it up, but I'm pretty sure that's partially to do with the fact that I'm almost certain I have dyslexia at this point. Do you think <laughs> so? Yeah. Maybe that's I, um, why you don't like reading. That, oh, well, I read constantly. Like, I've been reading oh, throughout this true, whole stream, right. in a sense. <laughs> right, um, yeah. But one of the reasons I've, I've definitely noticed is, like, I consistently spell two as in T-O wrong on uh, Discord. I spell it O2 all the fucking time, and I see that it's wrong, and then I redo it, and it's just like, how do I keep doing that wrong? Like, it's, it's just, mm. like, it doesn't make sense, but then there's a lot of words where um, I literally can't remember which letter comes first out of two being flipped, and then I realize... No, like, I, I, that made money. I don't think that's dyslexia. Oh, well, there's other stuff. Um, this is yeah. why I said I'm not sure. But, uh... Yeah. Interesting, nonetheless, when you sort of, like, see things that can imply it, and you're like, oh my god, this pattern, it matches. 
I was just well, retarded the whole time. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought that sometimes with like it feels weird because I'm like lazy as fuck, but I sometimes wonder if I might have ADHD for other reasons. Not because I run around a lot, but just for but then I'm like, it doesn't really help to be diagnosed. I'm pretty I don't know. Maybe it does, it but probably like, does, I'd imagine. I don't know. I guess it's it's the idea of it wouldn't change anything other than I guess a recognition. But like I know the issue exists already. I know what my problems are for the most part. It's it's just a matter of maybe it would just be a matter of if you know what it is, then um you can you can adjust your strategies with that in mind. You can do what other people well, yeah, like that you know is successful. There's potential medications to offset it, right? And not necessarily that you True. would definitely take it, but I mean if you tried it and it ended up helping a lot, you might be like, oh shit. I guess, man, I, I have a complex uh idea on like um any drugs that affect my mind um i don't know why it's kind of stupid because like i recognize that it's all just chemicals but um i think that's fair that you like you don't want them modifying your mental state whatsoever because it means a lot to you that it is as it is i think it yeah as as messed up as my mind is i don't think i would want my mind to be any different Mm -hmm. Um, well, maybe, maybe I say that, like, on some deep, you know, in the same way that you kind of don't wish to be a different person, even though you can look at other people and be like, well, you have traits that I like that I would prefer to have. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm not sure. It's, um, yeah, like someone's saying it's in chat, it's stupid, but also not. Like, I think it is kind of stupid to, to have a, at least from my perspective, it's, kind of stupid almost to have an adversity to um to like any drugs that affect your mind because ultimately your mind is already affected by a variety of different stimuli yeah but i'd rather not like if there is a way for me to fix a problem with my mind by just doing something else then i'd prefer to do that like you, for instance because you'd rather think plenty. your way into the solution rather than yeah, yeah. I, um and i guess it's the idea that for for a lot of time in human history people have just had to do that. They've had to find ways to fix their brain without, um, without using drugs. But, but again, this would, this would not be any advice that I would ever give anybody if they have like a mental illness or depression or anything like that. It is entirely up to you to figure out, you know, what is the best way to be, best, best <laughs> way to, uh, to, to fix that. And of course, consulting doctors and stuff, psychologists. Yeah. It's complicated. Mental, the mind, it'd be, uh, it, 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 it bucks real hard. Um, that's a, fuck. My mind is just references to cartoons. <laughs> that's all I got. I, I didn't get the power brick. Are you fucking kidding me? We have to do that level again. At least we can rush through it if I find out where the power brick is. It's not a big deal, folks. It's okay. Not all is lost. I find that, um, philosophy is super helpful in terms of just reconciling issues like these. Yeah. I wonder if, like, philosophy probably ought to be a required class, but the problem is you can't trust. I don't know if you can trust teachers uh, all the time. You say that, with but, that. like, we trust them with history. Isn't that enough already, like, in terms of to be worried about? Um, yeah, that's, well, because people get taught differing history. It seems like in, even in the U.S., depending on which state you live in, like, you're taught different things about the Civil War or, like, and the I wonder Revolution. if it's worthwhile that they are... They experience it in any way so that they might then pursue it in general um i guess the problem is there would have to be some philosophy that would be exempt like um there because because like fascism is a is is on some level of philosophy or like um eugenics these these have like philosophical elements but like i don't I guess the thing is, is that in my ideal world, everybody would be exposed to all of these philosophies, but in a very objective way. And the hope being that people would naturally be inclined towards more, um, uh, well, there's no other way than the philosophies that I like, or at least the <laughs> basic ones that I think will be the most flexible in your life. Presumably they can be taught at a particular age where they need to be exposed, like, because I'm assuming you're on board with the idea, like I am, that I think people should be aware about, like, racist ideas so that they can understand why they, they're bad. I think, sort of I think so. I think, um, because there was the book Sapiens where it talked about, like, so what, you know, the, the ideology that the Nazis had was, like, an, uh, they had an ideology, it's, like, a bad one, 
but they you need to understand it to understand like why it's bad but also to know what you need to look out for to stop it that's that's like the value of, i mean it's the, the like, those who don't learn history is doomed to repeat it it's like how can you hope to effectively combat um like nazism if you don't know what it is about like you, you can know that it's oh it's evil. It's like, but you need to you need to be able to know more about that to be able to thwart it. Otherwise, people might just naturally slip into those um those uh those uh, ideologies. I don't know. I guess in my ideal world, I'd like to trust that people are sound enough that they can thoroughly explore you know like existentialism or stoicism or I guess even like Christianity and Buddhism and stuff. These are all like in some way they're kind of philosophies. To interpret them and then kind of pull the bits out of them that are useful for them in their lives that would be ideal um but you know it's yeah I, I i do think it probably should be like required um required as a as a class to like just do philosophy because i feel like that's going to be more useful for you in life than most other things that you learn um like i don't I did arithmetic, and I don't fucking, like, that's worthless in my life. Maybe if I was going to become an engineer, it would have been useful, but it, d it doesn't help me, ever. But, like, goddamn, there's, like, reading, like, old Greek and, like, Roman philosophy. Is that is useful to me. Or at least I find it to be useful. Um, yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, it, yeah I think... Um, Ideally, there would be like a, a class that's like, this is philosophy 101. We're, we're going to do like the basics, the Socratic method. Um, you know, like, I think, therefore I am. We're going to talk about that. Um, I guess the basics of the world that we live in, like democracy, the, the idea behind it. Um, and then like oligarchy and authoritarianism, just to get a gist of those things. Yeah, that that would be that would be cool. I can't remember how we got onto this initially. What was what was the question? <laughs> I don't I'm, think this was sure a question necessarily. You were just talking about like I I can't remember why you said it, but just the value of having a philosophical class in in a, in a school is like they do have um, them in colleges, I guess, but not typically in. Uh, is that what you were going for, like earlier education for philosophy? Um. Oh, I think it was because we were talking about um addiction. Uh, not addiction. We we're talking about mental health and like oh, yeah, using yeah. and you know drugs versus and then it's like philosophy can be a helpful tool to uh to explore. Um. Yeah, we're talking about ADHD. That's right. Um. I just yeah. I think philosophy is neat. I think it's a important thing to to study. Um. All right. No one would say that sh a show is worse off because it's well written. I would if it was about Batwoman. It's so bad it's funny. Please stay bad. <laughs> so, as much as I would like to agree with that, I honestly think realistically, if they gave us a new character for one, like let's just say they had a one-off episode where they were like, we want to explore the people of of Gotham. Like, somehow they brought on a guest writer who and they gave them that. It was like a throwaway episode to fit a quota. They happen to be- the reason I'm doing this is to explain why this happened, okay? Um, they're a person who's, like, really good at writing, they really care, they, they have this one character, they go on a really emotional journey, and, um, you know, right at the end, when they've given up all hope sort of thing, um, in terms of, like, heroes in this world, it's, uh, it's Batwoman that saves them. And, you know, the, the point of the episode is that she's there, she's given this blah 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 for, for, uh, for Gotham. And we're sitting there, like, it's almost annoying that she saved him, because... <laughs> because like he's a really interesting character or you've given a really strong story i don't think that we would be like man i hope they never do this again because i want my stupid goofy batwoman story i didn't want this really meaningful story where i really cared about this guy and his struggles and everything he went through in gotham and what batman meant to him and how much he lost when he was good you know what i mean you just sit there like wait mm -hmm. actually i mean i'm not a, i'm not against you doing more of this actually like <laughs> if if this was what if batwoman season well, three I mean became good i don't think that we would all complain we would talk about how i kind of missed the stupid goofy stuff but i mean this show's pretty good now i think i'd be yeah i think i'd as, as difficult as it is to believe i don't see because again there's nothing intrinsically wrong with the idea of batwoman it's the execution that's, that's a big thing um on a meta level maybe you recognize it's like kind of cringy but yeah, I think I think if we could have like a almost a 
you know, imagine if, because it would line up if season three suddenly, be, like, we had two or three really good episodes of uh, Batwoman. It could, it could pull out of that nosedive and uh, ascend to be like Buffy. I mean, yeah, I, I always felt like Batwoman can be saved. You know, like, Loki can't really be saved. It's Loki, just like, it's no. done. Batwoman but, um, could be saved, like, if you made, if you, you just, we, we just need maybe a new Batwoman or a lot of effort to fix uh, Ryan and, and, and Kate. Um, like, maybe, maybe Kate comes back with a realization. She's like, I've been fucking up big time by letting Alice be there. And so maybe her uh, season three has punished Kate, where it's like she's going really hard to make sure that bad guys just don't get to get away well, with it. She gets really brutal, starts beating the crap out of them. If we're allowed freedom fully, um, I would have loads of fun in just literally fucking trading the POV entirely, having a new guy, or girl, it really doesn't matter, entering Gotham, hearing about the exploits of Batwoman, the Crows, everything else, but learning about all of the things that she did over those two seasons, and concluding, much like the audience did, like, Jesus Christ, what a horrific monster. And like, she's been keeping track of her, and her whole goal is to take down uh, Batwoman, or he. Like I said, I don't really care about the fucking gender of this character. I love the idea of an investigative, like, journalist, maybe? And then, you know, the, the big payoff of the first season will be they take down Batwoman, Mary, Luke, uh, Jacob, the Crows. They almost, like, get them all in this huge sort of thing. But then they have a choice of, like, will Gotham have no hero? And, uh, you know, they have to sort of grapple with that. And then maybe if we rescue Luke, we have him become the new hero, and this person acts as their Luke, if you will. And they're, they're like, sort of their core for morality. This journalist that you know, saved Gotham from Batwoman. The problem is, like, that almost seems so absurd, doesn't it? And, uh, it like, does. that, it, yeah. it, like, people would never, the, the fans of the show prior would fucking all leave, but that's not a problem. <laughs> like, that's I don't fine. care what they think. Um, and at the same time, I think I would just gun to have people say, like, so Batwoman was a monster, and then our character would be like, that wasn't Batwoman. Like, neither of those fucking women were Batwoman. They, they, like, they, they use the mantle for their own good, and that's something we need to, You know, you make a whole lesson out of it. You're like, just because someone calls themselves a superhero doesn't make it so. Yeah, exactly. That'll be pretty good. Um, also, d does anyone know where the, the, the red power brick is exactly? Because, like, I, I was thinking I might rush through this level to go look for it, but I realized it won't actually show up on any tag, will it? So I kind of might be just wasting my time. Um, I could Google it, but, you know, I wasn't looking to. Uh, anyway, quick shots and sliding are your best friends in RE6. Fair enough. Uh, that's not dyslexia molar, that's the big gay we made along the way. Aww. <laughs> I do it. Uh, love EFAB, gets me through the work day every day. Or oh, gets me through work every day, thank you. Hell yeah. Add some uh, entertainment out. Page six done. Fantastic. I wonder if there's a power brick detector. We could go and try and see if we can get that first. Um, I don't think anyone in chat actually knows where it is, which is fine. Do -do. Metroid guy here. Just finished Super Metroid. So great. On to Fusion. Good thing they never made any games between Super and Fusion, right? Oh. <laughs> well, well, well. Are you truly playing through the series if you don't play through the series? You gotta do it. I own it. Then again, I would probably skip DS2 if I was replaying the Soulborn series. No way I ever played DS2 for my own amusement ever again. It's gonna have to be for a stream. It's gonna have to be for a day. Something. Um, yeah, I will. I will look into it. I don't know. Use the force on the trash cans up ahead. A good man, there are so many trash cans. Also, um, can I just destroy them or do they have to be destroyed that way? Because it sounds awfully specific, you know. These are resistant trash cans. I have ADHD and OCD. Fun mixture. My goodness. Some ADD and ADHD are very common, right? Um, I believe that they are quite common, and particularly among 
men more so than women. I think uh, OCD is more... Man, I could be talking out my ass here. I'm not sure <laughs> that that's true at all. Um, let me, let me, let me Google is your best friend. ADHD common. 8.4% of children, 2.5% of adults. And it is more common among boys than girls. What about OCD common? OCD is 2% of the population. But it doesn't say about boys or girls, so I don't know. Got nothing there. Thank you, chat. Got it. Power brick. I'm not even sure Fantastic. specifically which one it is, but I got it. Um, Mola, Australia has the best floomp name for a place. You ready? Whoop Whoop is a real place. Yeah, oh. wait, Whoop Whoop. I think it, well, we say it out there in Whoop, well, I don't say it, but people here say in Whoop Whoop is in like far away, the middle of nowhere. Oh, basically. is it an actual place or is it only used in that way? I, I didn't know it was an actual place if it is one. Um, I didn't, I, I didn't, I thought it was just uh, an expression, that's all. Um, so, wait, can you actually miss that power brick if you destroy those in, quote-unquote, a normal way? Because, damn. That sucks if, if so. Uh, at Fringy, the answer to asking sure your kid knows this stuff is homeschooling slash community homeschooling. Also, good night, Rags. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm okay with that, like, homeschooling. I'm not sure that I, I, I think I, I think I, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I don't know that I have an issue with, like, just schools as an institution at all. I think that they're totally fine. You can get people with specialized knowledge. That's cool with me. And, of course, people who are just better equipped to handle, like, you know, kids and teenagers in terms of, like, temperament. Like, I don't know if I'd be a good teacher. I, I don't know if I have the patience. And school can be... Terrible and stuff in certain circumstances, but like, holy shit, the social aspect, the kids definitely gonna yeah. need that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also, yeah, uh, that is it for uh, the 127 EFAP. So, for the first time in history, I have managed to catch up, or rather, we have managed to catch up with everything that was in the title. The Streamlabs from check any not wow. including today's uh, streamlabs, uh, EFAP 140 and EFAP 127. Those those are I'm proud done. of us. Yeah, we still got. Let me have a look here. So EFAP 117, which was the Happy New Year stream. The <laughs> uh, New Year was a little little while ago, a little bit. Holy shit, it was a lot for that. And then 118 was also a New Year stream. Oh my god. And then 133, the extra credits EFAP. 134, the Justice League uh, Snyder Cut 1. 135, the Falcon and Winter Soldier 1. And then we would be fully caught up, so there's still quite a few to go. That's because all those episodes hey, were really chunky. Yeah. Get somewhere. Um, obviously. And how long did that take us? Ten hours <laughs> to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, the time was taken. Um, but that's probably a good place to stop a Rooney for today. I would say. Mm. I will um get Django to the end of this mission to make sure that power brick is gotten, and then you know, the next time we'll uh we'll continue with this leg Lego scapades. Um. As for, yeah, so these two minis that exist now, they'll be chopped into two just because of the way that that worked. Uh, they'll just come out along with the rest of stuff that eventually comes out. And you got, tomorrow will be the meme fap. Next week, tomorrow, will be uh, the premiering of the Dalmatian video, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, but there won't be an episode, and I think that'll uh, work pretty well because uh, Mr. Ragu will be unavailable as well. But the week following that, then, we should get back to just uh, responding to some, some floompy videos or something. I don't know. You know, the, the, the nature of what happens next on EFAP? Who knows? Dalmatian video. I'm referring to, we watched 101 Dalmatians from 61, 96, and Cruella all in a row. It's going to be a fun one. That movies. 
Um, obviously, in between, different things might pop out as well. Uh, but that was the video I was actually working on for the past, like, three weeks. Um, so I'll go back to working on something else. Who knows what that may be. Anything you wanna you wanna mention before we head out, Mr. Fringy? Um well I just finished the page of the comic, so we, we got we got pages coming out for the comic on my Twitters and on Patreon as well. Um and otherwise it's the end game video as well as figuring out how to do the shorter little like you know, hyper short f focus on one topic like little discussion polemics videos but uh yeah that's about that's all i got for you at the moment all right uh i guess you know thanks to rags and metal as well uh it's been fun i was a long boy and we shall see you the next time we see you little pip yeah see you go. fellas hope you guys all enjoy loki on wednesday it's gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> oh boy